anticipated robot combat event ever. 72 yeah. robots will battle through a tournament filled with the top bots in the 2021 Norwalk Havoc Finals. Streamed live on NHRL.io. Who will come out on top? Good evening, and uh, coming in live uh, at Norwalk, Connecticut, uh, at uh, at Norwalk Havoc Finals. This is prime time. Uh, my name is Luke Stangle. I am uh, one of the announcers here today, joined in the broadcasting booth by Chris DeSico and Kyle Kroos. Our pit reporter uh, today is Kate Osborne, and back uh, in the production uh, studio, taking a look at all of your social media, uh, is Lindsay Bear. Uh, this is prime time for the finals. Um, let me set a little bit of context here uh, if you are just joining us. Uh, Norwalk Havoc, this is the seventh competition held here this year. Yep. The first six were qualifiers. Now, at a qualifying event, uh, you get 70, 80, 90 robots that show up, and we pick the top four from each weight class, and we invite them to December for the finals. What you are seeing here are the very best combat robots in North America. We have builders who have flown in from across the continent to compete today. The prize that they seek is the Golden Brett. This is a brand new uh, uh, award here for this event, and it is a miniature golden uh, <laughs> Brett that lights up. Um, Brett is one of our house bots here, and uh, this is the most gorgeous award I think I've ever seen in my entire life. It's going to have the winner's names inscribed on it when it gets sent to them. And there is a lighting control knob on the back, so you can light it up in several different modes uh, once it's fully functional. And uh, it's beautiful. I absolutely love it. And uh, the winner of the three-pound division does get the uh, small billy hat with it. So, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, if you're joining us here for the first time, let's uh, do a quick rundown of our basics here uh, around the tournament. Today we are fighting three weight classes. We are fighting the three pounders, the 12 pounders, and the 30 pounders. This is essentially three separate competitions. You fight uh, in your bracket uh, all the way to the end. And what you need to do here is stay alive. You, you, if you lo lose two matches in a row, you go home. So uh, you start off in the winner's bracket. If you get kicked down into the loser's bracket, if you lose one more match, that's it. Uh, what we are... Um, we, uh, th these matches go for three minutes each, and the only way that they, they end is by knockout, by uh, tap out, or by judge's decision. Now, uh, we have swapped out one of our judges here for prime time, and uh, we're gonna meet him here just uh, in a little bit. And uh, we bid farewell to Jack Tweedy, good friend here of Norwalk Havoc, uh, who is dialing in from the UK, where it is past midnight, and uh, he's gonna be able to go to sleep, which is great. Um, yeah, so uh, one of the big things that happened here in primetime is that we just heard over the radio, every single robot here in the pits come to the green room because you will be fighting back to back. We're yeah. going to see explosive action right out of the box. Some of these builders have been working on their robots now for over an hour yeah. and they are ready to go. All right, uh, let's introduce you to our judges for the next couple of hours. We've got uh, <laughs> Matt Spurk. Matt, see, you're wearing a Kraken hat. Tell us uh, who you are and uh, where we've seen you on television before. Is it Cops? Hi, I everyone. My name is Matt Spurk. Yeah. <laughs> Florida yeah, man. I'm the, uh, I'm the, I'm the uh, cop, uh, yeah. cops, maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 was it uh, PD Live? Yeah, that's, that's another possibility. <laughs> right. Also, uh, BattleBot. I'm yeah. the team captain of Kraken BattleBot, if you couldn't read the uh, from the hat. I love it. So, uh, thank you so much for being here. I had to upgrade the hat for prime time. I said, that's prime time. <laughs> we got to pull out all the stops here so that we can't hold anything back here. Now, this was so. a Kraken hat that they were giving out in the pits at BattleBots this year. And nice. uh, I was able to snag a, uh, a hat, so I like to wear it around my house, too. So, we are, we're hat buddies, Matt. <laughs> that's all awesome. Right. Uh, on over to Peter. Peter, tell us a little bit more about yourself. How do you pronounce that last name? Hey. I love it. Is it French? Uh, last name is pronounced Garnache. It is actually French. Nice. Oh, uh, I'm a man of I culture. Build, I'm the captain of Repeat Robotics, and we build insect weight combat robots, and we fight all across the nation. One day, I'll make my debut at Norwalk Havoc myself. But 
Uh, I just am a huge fan of the sport and I love seeing new people join the sport. So one of the things that I did was when I graduated college, I was taking a lot of experience away from the team. And so I tried to write that down. So I wrote like a 30 page booklet on what I thought was the introductory guide to Beetleweight Robot Combat. And you can find that on the Norwalk Havoc Wiki. Awesome. awesome. That's awesome. And uh, Andrew, it looks like you are dialing in from inside of the battle box, and I see Deep Six behind you, which doesn't seem very safe. No. Uh, Andrew, can you tell us a little Never bit more? Never turn your back on Deep Six, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's uh, replacing Jack Tweedy. Andrew, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Where have we seen you on television? Yeah, you saw me holding a camera uh, that Deep Six flew at. Um, so you can't turn your back to Deep Six. You can't face it. It will always come at you. Uh, I've been with Deep Six for two years now, and I've been uh, part of the sport for the last almost 20 years. So uh, you've seen me in a bunch of different capacities, and I've been a big fan. It's my first time here at Norwalk Live. It's been a blast today. Yeah, That's Andrew great. flew out from California. Awesome. And it's literally like a 24-hour trip. He landed at 2 a.m., and uh, he is going to be flying out tomorrow at 6 a.m. Wow. And he, he arrived here at 7.30 this morning. Yeah. Yeah. He's a machine. He is a machine. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's go over to, Kate, uh, to Lindsay. Oh, my gosh. Lindsay, we're wearing matching shirts. I love it. Amazing. I love it. What are the chances of that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, these shirts were given to us in the last part of today uh, by Anthony D'Ambrosio. Uh, so thank you. Uh, RobotsRuinMyLife.com if you want to get something similar. Uh, unpaid sponsorship plug right there. Yeah. But um, I will be uh, working with the chat. So if you're watching on YouTube, get in the chat. Start chatting in with us talking there's a whole community there that you can get connected to and share predictions and talk about the match and you know just uh have some fun so i encourage everyone to go and uh you know if you have a question or if you have something you want to say i can put it on air so that's always fun um but yeah i'm, I'm really looking forward to the prime time section because this if all of today was the best of the best, then this is like that on steroids. This is everyone who has survived, um, you know, several matches today and, and they're going on to fight. So who knows what's going to happen, uh, but put your predictions in the chat. And uh, from here, I'm going to introduce you to Kate Osborne, our wonderful pit reporter. Thanks, Lindsay. I love the look you guys have going with those holiday shirts. Uh, keeping it up to date with you with the pits, and I'm telling you, the action has been so great here all day. Not only in here, but the green room, getting ready to line up right here. We can see Christian Cooper, who potentially has had the busiest day out of almost anybody here. The team has brought six robots. They brought 10 people. Right now, he's working on Esther, and uh, he basically said that the wiring took so long to put back together. Uh, it basically was the only thing that was left of a, of a big fire that happened to Esther. So it's been a little bit of a thrashing afternoon for Christian and the team, but I asked him, hey, are you the busiest guy here? He said, no, my team, in fact, they are busier than me because they're having to put up with all of my demands and requests as these robots are being put back together. Guys? So speaking of thrashing afternoon, this is your first time diving <laughs> into the sport of combat robotics. Tell me how your day has been. It's been a bit of a thrash as well. In fact, I'm getting all of my steps in all day long. I'll and bet. actually in our break, I told y'all I got to put my feet up just to make sure my shoes fit later because my feet are going to be so swollen <laughs> from making so many rounds around here. But no, it's been a blast. Um, I'm so grateful to be a part of the team. You guys are awesome. The builders and the insights that they have, they've been so welcoming. So thanks to the community and everybody else for letting me join the fun this time around. All right, Katie, you, you're a, a sports reporter. You know, you've seen a lot of sports. Sports. You've done a lot of sports reporting. How do you rank combat robots, you know, like out of all of the sports that you are, uh, you're involved in? Now that, my friend, is putting me on the spot a little bit, but um, it is so much fun. I think, how do I rank it? Ah, I love motorsport. I love it. I do love the fact that this combines a little bit of uh, battle brackets. It does combine a little bit of high intensity. Um, I really enjoy the fact that it's short and manageable and bite size, and then you move on to the next one. So across the board, it ranks extremely high. Plus, there's strategy involved, yeah. and there's thrashing involved, and it's just there's a lot of adrenaline, um, and it's it's really a, a treat to be involved with it. 
My goal is to uh, to turn Katie into a true combat robotics believer by the end of the year. Yeah, we're going to change right. her entire YouTube algorithm by yeah. the end of the year. I think yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, all she'll be watching is, is combat robot videos on YouTube, for sure. Sign me up, as long as that means I get to try and build one of the th these things yeah. at some point and go out and try and give it a whirl. Yeah, there you I love go. It. Okay. There'll be an Osborne bot by July. <laughs> Osbot, it's fine. Osbot, yes. Osbot, it's fine. She's already got the name. I love it. True combat robotics fashion. And name the bot before you even come up with a design. Yeah. That's exactly the way to do it. Yeah, that's the way to do it. All right. Uh, we're going to go over to the big box. We're going to start off here with uh, just a huge match. This is uh, literally huge versus who are they facing? Uh, let me check here. Huge is facing Grudge Frog. Oh, my gosh. Are you serious? I am serious. So what we've done, by the way, so you can't replace the floor in this big box as easily. So they've covered the floor in Bondo and then uh, gave us a new paint job. Yeah, I love it. I love it, too. Fight. Robots fight. The pit crew here has got to have some fun. And uh, this is a prime example of them expressing themselves for this match. So slow start to this match, but now Grudge Frog coming fully at the wheels of huge. Whoa. Big hits. This is loser's bracket round four. The loser will be going home. They've made it into prime time, but they're going to be packing up their car and driving out of here. Uh, Huge has had an absolutely dominant uh, day here, taking apart its opponents. Grudge Frog, uh, Drug, Grudge Frog is no slouch. This is from uh, the team behind Malice on BattleBox. And uh, Huge, of course, is run by the uh, most of the team uh, from Huge on BattleBots. So these are two BattleBots builders uh, facing off here against one another. We're seeing some pretty deep uh, gouges on the top plate armor of Grudge Frog. Uh, I don't know how, how bad that, that armor might have already been stripped away coming into the match, but, uh, you know. No, that's Huge mostly is, new damage. That's, yeah. that's gross. Yeah, Huge is right on top. This is like this is a dream fight for 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 a bot like Huge, which is designed to kind of capitalize on other bots that are lower with horizontal spinners or or drums. It's just a very uh, difficult bot to kind of get your weapon on. Uh, Chris, do you, do you see that huge gash on the top of Grudge Frog? Yeah, I love it. It's it's graphic. It's gross. Uh, that that top plate's being peeled away on Grudge Frog. That, that top plate is protecting the, uh, the, the belts that are running inside of this, this robot. And uh, yeah, Huge is just intent on taking apart its opponent. 75 seconds left in this match. Just uh, a quick clarification, Grudge Frog actually runs no belts for the weapon system. As soon as oh. I said it, I realized I had made a mistake, Kyle. So that is a hub motor that is, uh, it's actually, uh, nope. it's a gear drive. It's a gear drive. And it's all, really? It is all printed plastic gears. Oh my god, the head has come off of you! Yeah, that's gross too. Oh my what? gosh. How did that even happen? And the weapon seems to be jammed up on huge. There's no movement coming out of that right now. Wow. Uh, that plate is right in that weapon. I wonder if that is binding it up somehow. It seems like it should be able to move right past that. Grudge Frog's weapon is still running, but its drive is impaired. Yeah, that's not a happy drive system. Yeah, Grudge Frog's uh, gears are actually printed plastic. They've got some flexibility to them. So if those gears slip out of their teeth, they're able to slip right back in and keep going. Uh, it's a design that they were hoping to transfer over into Malice, their larger bot, and a lot of that design has worked its way into that design. Here we are, we got last 15 seconds of this match. Both bots having a tough time, but Huge... Huge is cannibalizing its own top player. Yeah, armor. their weapon just started working again. Six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the end of this fight. Please Ooh. power down your weapons and make your way to the door. This one goes to the judges. Wow. Wow, we just uh, met the judges and we're gonna immediately put them to work. Huge versus Grudge Frog. All right, now uh, here's what's gonna happen here with the judges. They are, uh, they're going to put in their scores ahead of time. Now they don't know what the uh, their, their fellow judges are going to put in. And then we're going to display the scores because we live in the year 2021 and we should be able to see Judges, scorers uh, in real time. Plus, we want to give the internet much more fodder to get angry at these judges. 
<laughs> so actual numbers help with that. Yeah, yeah. I guess if you're upset about a match, you can uh, kind of watch the, the video tomorrow, come back to the judging and see, uh, you know, which, uh, which judge you're most upset with. <laughs> No pressure, Matt, Peter, no, no and Andrew. No pressure, no pressure. All right, let's see. Who's the winner here? I'm feeling the pressure. Oh, my. So unanimous. unanimous decision. Huge winner of that match, taking away pretty much all the damage points. Um, so welcome to the team, Andrew. Andrew, what did you think of that fight? Yeah, it was a little bit of a hard one, harder one to judge in some areas. Um, there was some damage to the top of Grudge Frog, but their weapon was still working. Um, huge lost their top as well but their weapon was still working but it really was losing that drive for grudge frog they were kind of crab walking for a bit and uh huge was able to capitalize on that you know when their top was loose you know grudge frog couldn't capitalize so all in all that was leaning more toward huge for me yeah for huge sure. yeah huge huge win for huge uh very destructive match i mean you could see that that top like getting peeled away and that's really exactly what you want to see with a big wheel design like that. Yeah, absolutely. Now I see that we've loaded into cage one and uh, looks like the box is locked. Are we ready to go to cage one? I sure hope Winner's so. Winner's bracket round four. We've got Calvin Eba and Lynx versus Brian Boxel and Eruption. This is uh, where the rubber hits the road, if you will, in the winner's bracket of the three pound division. The next fight after this, or the winner of this fight will have to face the winner between Silent Spring and Poliwog. <laughs> we really are down to some of the very best robots that we have seen in this competition so far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whoever advances here will advance to the semifinals uh, for the three pound bracket. And uh, yeah, these these Eight, two seven, robots are among six, the best Beetleweights on the four, continent, and we're about three, to see one of them get two, uh, kicked down into one. the losers bracket. Fight, robot! Oh, 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 oh my oh. goodness! That weapon on eruption spins up so fast. I have never seen a box rush wow. by Link stop so hard. Lynx is so fast, so fast. I will tell you that uh, the fresh floor is helping out Calvin Eba. Uh, his his sh ground shaving forks are, cannot get caught anywhere inside of this uh, this box because this is an absolutely pristine floor. At the end of this match, when we see what the uh, the floor looks like, that is all Calvin. Yeah, Calvin's got titanium cleat wheels to help him grip onto this wooden floor. And it really helps to have an even surface for those wheels because he gets equal purchase with all four of them as he drives forward. Calvin is uh, driving one of the fastest bots in the competition today. Lynx is just absolutely brutal. And Calvin drives it so expertly. Oh my Look at those God. Hits. That was two in a row, three in a row. I don't know if Eruption even knows where it is right now, Kyle. No, Eruption has one of the fastest spin-up times for its weapon, but I gotta say, that doesn't really matter when you just can't even get upright. Incredible winner's bracket round four. We're gonna see if Eruption is gonna be able to regain composure after a, a punishing 90 seconds of the match. Sometimes it's so hard to get back on your feet, reoriented and back into the fight. Now it looks like the weapon on Eruption is down. Lynx, of course, fully operational. Wow, huge hit from Lynx on Eruption. Without a weapon, uh, Eruption really is uh, fully at the mercy of Calvin Eba and his incredibly aggressive driving style. The last time that these two robots fought, uh, Calvin earned a knockout. And I'm sure he's intent on doing it again here. And Eruption is such a dense little bot. It is so hard to knock this bot out. Is that a tap out? Oh, you got to hit the button. Calvin's going to keep smashing you in the face until you do. Oh, man. 30 seconds left. There is very few things in this world scarier than Lynx on a brand new floor. Look at that thing. Oh, huge hit. This has been an incredibly one-sided match. You can see Brian there 
Doesn't even know what to do here. 10 seconds left. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the end of this fight. Wow. This one's surprisingly going to the judges. Look at the smile on Calvin's face. He is a happy, happy guy. Both wow. of these competitors super pumped. All right. Wow. Uh, so we're, we're going to go to the judges. We're going to see what they have to say about that match. That, uh, whew. Is it possible for Calvin Eba to earn every point? <laughs> Is it possible to be a 0-5 uh, across the entire uh, ticket here? That was a primetime three-pound match. That really Peter, was. this was a judge's decision that may as well have been a knockout. Look at that. I don't think I've ever seen that before. So uh, there was something wrong with the video because it lasted three minutes, but it was in fast-forward the whole time. So <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly, Matt. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm watching. I just want to say I love these types of fights. Give them to me. Bring more so that I don't have to do work. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, okay. So as Lynx advances to winner's bracket round five, is this the robot to watch? You know, I would, I would always say Lynx is the robot to watch. I mean, they're just so good. All right, we're going to uh, bring it over to Katie, who is cage side with Calvin Eba, who has just won a 5-0 decision across the, uh, the board, the most decisive judges win so far today. Here's the thing, he could actually hear you guys saying those nice things and you should have uh, seen the, face, the smile on his face. How much of an advantage was it to have a new floor? Uh, it helped out a lot. Uh, I think it, well, it helped us both equally. Uh, we have some pretty sharp ground scraping uh, forks and wedgelets, so it was really anyone's uh, guess of who would get underneath the other opponent. You know, at, throughout that, that little bit of a battle, you were very solemn at first, then you cracked a smile, we were, I was watching your facial reaction, and then at one point you looked over at Brian, and you were like that motion. What, is, what, were, what were you motioning to him? Uh, I was just making sure he wanted to keep going, and uh, oh. you know, continue to, keep, to take a beating, because he has more fights to come. Uh, I expect to see him in the finals, he's doing great. Yeah. And the real question, as the gentlemen were saying, are you the bot to beat? What do you think? I sure hope so. Uh, there's some nasty bots to come. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to get ready for that. All right. Well, we'll let him go get ready. Gentlemen, he, his dad, the smile that both of them have right now, you can tell this is a great way to kick off the finals. Yeah. yeah, Calvin is an absolutely dominant driver. You saw that uh, he went all the way uh, to the end in November. And uh, yeah, went absolutely undefeated in, in November. And the question is, will he go undefeated here at the finals? It's a good question. It's yeah. a very good question. And uh, he's, he's made it very far in this competition before. We love it when he comes all the way out from California and uh, shows his stuff here in Norwalk. It's just such a powerful bot. It's such a, a great design. It's a quantum bot. It could be in two places at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Defies the laws of physics, Chris. Now, uh, Lynx uh, will face next the winner of Silent Spring versus Polywog. And uh, I can see Silent Spring and Polywog loading in right now. We're going to go to that fight shortly. But first, we're going to go to cage two. I can see Judge's Dream over there. Oh, oh. we're going to go into cage three. The big box first. Okay. All right. Uh, loading in, I see Bobby. Bobby Whoa. and Pramhida are loading into this box right now. You can see Bobby with their crispy outer edges of their wheels, which gives them a little bit more purchase. And what is going on with Bobby's face? Arr! Winner's bracket round four. It is Pirate Bobby. Zombie Pirate Bobby, if you ask me. There's no uh, black dot in that eye. It's straight up just glassy-eyed. <laughs> Pirate Zombie Bobby. Can we take a moment here and just uh, appreciate this uh, this artwork, this graffiti on uh, on the floor? Yeah, I love it. I I love that the uh, the the house crew here has has expressed themselves. A Hashtag little bit. free Britney. No, free Fluffy. Oh, free I fluffy. see. Eight, <laughs> I'm kidding. Seven, yeah. All six, right. Bobby versus Pramhita. Four. Winners three, bracket round four. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right, a slightly slow start, but you can hear Pramhita spinning up.
Bobby really looks like uh, it's trying to get its bearings here inside of the box for going straight weapon on weapon. Tossing Pramheda across the uh, the box. Pramheda is now on its head. Saw the and graphic that... there. Last time these two bots faced each other was back in July. Bobby won by a knockout. Are we going to see the same thing here today? Wow. Is Fluffy awake? Somebody free Fluffy. Fluffy? Are you there? Fluffy is... I don't think the power is on Fluffy. Wow. Oh, the lights are on. Oh, this is heartbreaking. He's right next to Fluffy. Fluffy can do something, but uh, is is not. Oh, oh. my gosh. Oh. It's a battery. That's not good. That is the battery from Maddie, the mini bot from Promhita. Bobby is shoving uh, Promhita into the corner. Fl Fluffy. Fluffy. Or the battery. Fluffy moved slightly out of the corner. We've got slow <laughs> moving from Fluffy, and uh, I I'm very concerned that there is no uh, show motion happening at this yes, moment. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, there you see the hat of Bobby on Fluffy from an earlier match. Knockout. And there and we go. The that knockout. is the knockout. So Bobby, two knockout vi victories over Pramhita this year. Uh, they will move on in the winner's bracket. Pramhita will move down to the loser's bracket. Am I the only one concerned about the speed of Fluffy right now? <laughs> yeah, Fluffy's having some issues. Fluffy, the opposite of Lynx. Fluffy looks tired. Somebody's got to wake ah, Fluffy up. Ah, it's been a long day. <laughs> All right, uh, let's check in with Lindsay. Lindsay, how are things going over there? Uh, it's great. The chat has been loving what's going on, but we do have a question from the chat, and this is from uh, ironically named Fluffy Robotics. Oh, wow. <laughs> which I don't think has any relation to Fluffy, but you never know. Uh, and they want to know, what is your favorite multi-bot that Ooh. fought today? I have my personal favorite, but I want to know what you have to say first. Lindsay, let's start with you. Who Who is your favorite multi-bot today? Uh, I'm going to have to say Rip and Tear oh. from Casey and Casey Jermiason. I mean, it, that's the most out-of-the-box bot, you know, you can almost think of. It's just pure foam, and it uh, really held its own. It's so fun to watch. During the break, I was uh, walking back to get some water, and there were two kids who stopped me. And they said their favorite robot here today, Rip and Tear. Like, it is a crowd favorite. Yeah. How about you, Kyle? Your favorite multi-bot today? ACRC. Nice. They're just oh. so fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love it. They're yeah. just so fun. Like, swinging what's, wrenches. What's not to like about that? Yeah, swinging wrenches, swinging random pieces of metal, two kids, like, having a great time. There's What's not to love about that? I love yeah. that they made it to the finals. I love that they, they got their matches in today. They had a great time. Yeah, I love that bot. Yeah. How about you, Chris? saw really great teamwork with with polyester earlier today and you know also just a great you know set of bots for the season um great great mechanics great driving it's it's a all-around uh, dynamite team am i the only one who's going to choose the most competitive multi-bot here stop hitting yourself all right <laughs> um okay we're gonna go over to uh katie and i believe that she's here with jonathan clark bobby uh, builder jonathan clark that, that's right, I am. And actually, we're just laughing at the fact he has a bunch of f first names as all of his objects. First name, last name, and it's two robots as well. Anyways, um, that was a, a great battle. Of course, the electronics died in Pramita. What was the takeaway for you as you continue on throughout the day? Um, I don't know. I was not super certain about this fight. He said he'd never been flipped before, and even from other verts, I think. And I actually flipped him over, so he was pretty impressed with that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I need to see what's wrong to really know the takeaway. Earlier, we were looking at uh, Bobby here, and what's the condition of the robot now? Still kind of a pirate. Yeah, um, I gave him an eye patch once he lost both his eyes last match. Um, right now, it looks like I might just change the wheel and then check everything else out. I can't, can't tell for sure. <laughs> all right, we'll let you get back to it. Thank you, Thank you guys. I love how Jonathan Clark is all merched out. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he's, he's got the well hats. branded. Yeah. He's got the hoodie. I know that they're selling amazing uh, t shirts and stickers out there. And um, yeah, listen. Uh, it's. 
as as this robot is so popular, he is going to sell a ton of merch, you know, next year. Um, and it's really, really cool to see him come out and, uh, yeah, offer the complete line. I appreciate it as well. He's such a fun competitor. He comes out there with these silly robots, but uh, it's all business once he gets in that box. And the damage that his bots deal out is just so impressive. All right. Uh, we are going to go uh, back into the Beetleweights. We've got Vespula versus Judge's Dream. This is in Cage 2. Judge's Dream uh, run by Hunter Yankaskis versus Vespula. It is a Team WPI, Team Ribot robot. This is loser's bracket round four. This is a do or die moment for uh, these two builders. Eight, seven, six, Brand new floor. Five, four, and we're three, going to see uh, two, how effective one, their uh, repairs fight. were in the pits Robots during the break. Fight. Oh, and you can hear that spin up from Vespula. Wow. We can clearly see that one of these weapons is dragging on the floor. Oh my goodness, Judge's oh. Dream just punted Vespula behind Bert. Some nasty hits from Vespula into Judge's Dream, just bashing them into the corner. Vespula is going full send. Judge's Dream in Hunter's uh, driving style is so controlled. But you can see that Hunter's weapon is dragging on the floor, making these deep gouges. Vespula really is channeling that kind of chaotic energy that you really want to see in a uh, drum bot. But it looks like Vespula has been uh, kicked up onto the side of the rail here. He gets me one assist from Bert. That's the only one you get, Vespula. If Hunter can do it again, he might be dying on the rail. But it looks like the weapon on Judge's Dream is down. Vespula backing up, resetting itself, coming back in for, uh, for another hit. Now, if you look at the damage to the floor, you can see it's the, the two lines. Yeah. Which I believe are those two uh, bolts that come out of the, the teeth, I guess you could say, that come right. out of the spinner. The weapon on Judge's Dream is back. Something got shaken loose there. Oh, but he's dragging it along the floor. I see. Oh, yeah. that bunny ear isn't quite, uh, quite long enough. Yeah, I feel like the bolts on that weapon just are, uh, are a little bit looser than they should be. They should be driven in just a little bit more. With 60 seconds left, really Hunter's best bet is to get popped back onto his feet. Here we go, can the weapon come back? It's not coming back, Kyle, 40 seconds left. No way. It looks like the weapon on Judge's Dream is down. And uh, their right side drive is uh, not very happy either. It's like more of a pivot point right now. This box looks like modern art. Look at this. 20 Vespula. seconds left here in this fight. Oh, no! Oh, oh it's, my goodness. It's doing the thing. Bert's coming over to help it out. They get one assist what? each from Bert. Vespula has already had their one assist. This is the assist oh, for... Oh, no! Seven, six, five, four, three, two... One, that there is wow. the end of this fight. Wow, loser's bracket round four. Vespula is uh, clearly happy with its performance there. Yeah. So this one goes to the judges, but I do feel like this is gonna be a uh, relatively pretty, uh, easy one for them. Pretty, pretty easy match to call, I would say. I sure hope so. All right, uh, as the judges are entering their scores, uh, your thoughts on this fight, uh, Kyle? Well, I got to say I'm pretty disappointed uh, for Hunter that uh, his weapon was scraping on the floor there. That really caused yeah. a lot more issues than he needed to. They were pretty evenly matched at the beginning of the fight. There was a lot of great back and forth, and Hunter was really winning a lot of those weapon-to-weapon -weapon engagements. Uh, it just didn't go his way for that second half of the fight at all. Yeah. And uh, those uh, Hunter Yen uh will be going home early as Vespula advances here in the loser's bracket. 
Um, now, Hunter Yankaskis and his sister Annika have both been eliminated from the Beetleweight bracket. The Yankaskis family remains alive in uh, the 12 pound and the 30 pound division. That's right. We do, uh, we, we've heard that Katie is now with the winner of that match, uh, Nick from Team WPI. Katie, uh, honor up to you. Oh, she's with Hunter as well. Yeah, we're, I got both of them actually. I had to double dip the chip here. First, Nick, well done. Congratulations at that. Now, there was something about a two wheel drive. You were kind of saying to David as uh, over here, you go back to two wheel drive and see how it feels to drive it. How challenging was it actually? It's, it's, a, it's a challenge because it's constantly trying to find grip. Um, one of the wheels won't touch the ground and then you'll skid to one direction randomly. So four wheel drive is generally a lot more controllable, but I mean, I'm driving kind of chaotic and it's uh, all over the place. How can you reel that in for later on? Uh, I, I could not push the stick as hard. There you go. This is all about le lessons as we continue on throughout the night. And Hunter, unfortunately for you, going home a little bit earlier than expected. But hey, that was a good, uh, good run. And honestly, you battled some different issues throughout the day. So how, how would you rate today overall? I don't know. Best event so far. Yeah. yeah. The, the problems, though, eh. But still, it's a good event. I, got, I made it this far, and I try my best. That's all that matters. Is there any relief after this, or does is it full back to building shortly thereafter? Probably back to building. <laughs> it's in the blood, guys. Congratulations, Hunter, on a great season. Nick, we'll see you a little later on that, this evening. Round of applause for Hunter Yenkaskis, who put on some amazing fights today and really amazing did. fights this season. This is a fight we've been looking forward to in the 30 pound division. We're going to be seeing Litterbox. They'll be facing off against Other Disco. Now, Litterbox, did it already face Other Disco? Yeah. Is this a rematch? I believe so. Did they reset this? So like, they're gonna do this again? Oh no, this is a playback. No, no, not, yeah, no, Eight. right oh, now. Yeah, right now, Seven. yeah. yeah. Resetting. Okay. Six. Rematch. Five, this is a rematch. Four, yeah, we're going to rematch this. That's what two, they decided to do. One. Fight. Robots fight. Oh. oh, 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 oh. Huge hit right out of the box from Other Disco on Litter Box. Wow. Tap out. Wow. Whoa. Fast tap Woo. out from Litter Box. Okay. Other tap Disco out. advances. That was pretty decisive. Incredible. As far as what resources you have uh, left for the rest of the night, maybe it's a smart tap out, you know? Could All be. right. Yeah. Uh, on over to Cage 1, we've got loaded into the box Silent Spring versus Polywog. This is a very high stakes match. The winner of this match advances to the semifinals and will be facing Lynx. Now, uh, Jameson Go uh, here with Silent Spring, Polywog driven by Ribot wow. Captain David Jin. Yeah. Both of these bots, former champions in this tournament, uh, this is highly anticipated match in and of itself. All right, Jameson Go is ready Eight, to go. Seven, six, five, four, three. You see, Silent Spring two, is running that undercutter. One, we had previously robots seen it running a disc fight. earlier today. This is a modular robot. It is a walking robot. It is a absolutely gorgeous feat of engineering against the shirtless barbarian of Polywog. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's, these are two titans of the weight class. This is like we're seeing some of the best of the best of the best right now. Yeah, two guys who really respect each other's uh, abilities, really respect each other's driving abilities as well as their building abilities. And uh, they, they've put on some great matches for us in the past, and so far they are not disappointing today. The big thing to look for here is whether Silent Spring can stay planted to the floor and start kicking Polywog in the air. And you can see Jameson Go successfully getting under Polywog time and time again. David Jin, though, is uh, not afraid to go weapon on weapon, staying very close to his opponent. This is an absolutely huge match for these two drivers. I can see little bits of green being peeled away, and I think that Jameson Go is getting under Polywog and eating away at those wheels. And you can see Polywog just bouncing across the arena as it tries to drive forward, showing those pieces of wheels missing. 
Jameson Go just circling his opponent, staying right on top of him, shoving Polywog up against Brett. Is that a tap out? Tap out. It's a tap out. Wow. wow. Yeah. Let's go, oh, Jamo. Right. That means we get Lynx versus Silent Spring. Both of these bots at the peak of their powers. Both of these bots fully ready to go. That is something people have been looking oh, forward man. to for a long time. Wow. Last time, when uh, when Lynx first came to this competition, that's something people were talking about. We want to see Silent Spring versus Lynx. These are, you know, the best bot on the East Coast versus the best bot on the West Coast. Yeah. And we really got a lackluster version of that fight in that competition just because it was attrition. They both had, had been through a lot of fights. And, uh, and I, I am so excited, like in my bones, excited to see them at the peak of their powers facing each other. Be, uh, between Silent Spring and Polywog, there's only one of those robots that's in the Combat Robot Hall of Fame. And that would be Silent Spring for yeah. good reason. All right, uh, let's take a look at the uh, three pound bracket to kind of see where we're at. All right. Uh, up next here in the semifinals, the winner's semifinals, Jameson Go and Silent Spring will be facing off against Calvin Eba and Lynx. Calvin Eba drives Mad Catter on BattleBots. Down into, uh, and then in the loser's bracket, we still have to get through a couple matches, but Vespula, Eruption, and Poliwog remain alive in the bracket. Now, uh, Silent Spring versus Lynx. Now, this is an interesting match because there's a very good chance that whatever happens, we're going to see that match again yeah. uh, in the uh, the winner's finals. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, uh, you know, for two undefeated bots, you know, they can't stay undefeated forever. No. We're going to have to see if Jameson Go can come up with a, a good strategy against just the unbridled chaos of Lynx. All right, we're going to go over to Cage 2 for another Beta White fight. This is Silent X versus Blackbird. Losers bracket round four. Eight, One seven, of these robots will six, be going home. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. So these are two other top competitors here. Silent X, the experimental platform for Silent Spring. And he's facing off against Blackbird of Team Shredded. Anthony D'Ambrosio told me uh, at the start of this, uh, this competition that he plans to totally redesign Blackbird in 2022, so he's going to leave nothing on the table here. He's going to go all out. He will wreck every single part of his robot if he has to, if it's going to earn him a golden Brett today. And we see really the, uh, the, the drive uh, style here of Blackbird really staying very close to his opponent and not afraid at all to go weapon on weapon with this undercutter configuration in Silent X. A ton of wood chips being sprayed around inside of the, uh, the box. And between these two robots, they are trying to be the first one to break their opponent's uh, weapon. Hearing a little bit of grinding coming from underneath Blackbird. Yeah, that's a good ear, Chris. I think that uh, the egg beater drum on Blackbird could be bumping along the floor, making contact with the floor. Yeah, yeah you can see it. It just did that huge gash right there. What is that from? Is that from the weapon itself? Yeah, I think oh, you can see. Oh, no! You can see the right side of the drive on Blackbird is starting to get lower and lower as that wheel gets chipped away from the undercutter on Silent X, which is uh, making that weapon drag on the floor a little bit. This is the exact same strategy that Jameson Go ran with Silent Spring and Polywog. Eat away at the wheels. And we can see Anthony's uh, robot gets so short that its weapon is just dragging along the floor. Which I just saw something incredible happen. Anthony sent his daughter to go hit the tap out button, but all of a sudden Blackbird sprung back to life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if Arya could, could reach the tap out button, Anthony. I bet that girl's got good up. She could jump up there and get it. Thirty-five seconds left in the match. This has been absolutely brutal so far. 
Impressive that Blackbird is still going, still going strong in this fight. They have had a rough second half of this match. You can see Silent X just uh, hanging back, waiting to see if the referee will call out Blackbird. Looks like that's not Eight, going to happen. Seven, it's going to go the full six, three minutes. Five, four, three, two, one. That there's the end of this fight. We are going to go to the judges. Please wow. turn off your weapons and drive towards the door. Let's give a Woo. big round of applause to Anthony D'Ambrosio, yeah. one of our absolute favorite robot builders here today. And uh, outer all around, general good human being, all right? Yeah, I feel yeah. like uh, I have really good hangs with Anthony, you know? We yeah. text one another back and forth. He obviously made us these amazing shirts. Gotta love it. Gonna wear this all Christmas. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're gonna go to the judges. I think this was a pretty one-sided match, though. What'd you say, Kyle? I agree, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't start that way, definitely ended that way. All right, as the judges deliberate, putting in their scores... I like Matt's deliberation face right now. You can really see the gears. <laughs> and grinding and turning in that guy's head. <laughs> we did get a question here from the chat. Very quickly, I want to address it. Uh, what's going on with the drive on Silent X? Uh, if you haven't been following the matches so far today, these are walking uh, legs on Silent X. Yeah, shuffling. Shuffling legs. Shuffling legs. It looks like we had a unanimous judge's decision. Yeah, unanimous judge's decision yeah. for Silent X. Um, so, yeah, they will be moving on in the loser's bracket. And uh, Anthony D'Ambrosio is going home. Well, he'll probably be staying to support the rest of his team. But, All right. Uh, uh, on over to Katie, uh, who is here with Bunny. I actually was here with Bunny, and she is on her way. She described the day as amazing, but as she's making her round uh, rounds that she's going up against shred it bro and she said there's a little bit of redemption that is one and out of that i'm ready to fight him he <laughs> took me out last time i'm gonna take him out this time right Evan? oh i don't know where he went but he if he would agree with me <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the mentality <laughs> heading into this battle guys yeah, yeah. that's exactly wow what that a is. little <laughs> bit of like uh <laughs> battle bots bunny like uh energy yeah a little aggressive right i yeah. love it yeah absolutely a little, um, uh, little Kurt Durgin energy there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> what is it that Bunny said on BattleBots? What was it? Like, in your face? No, what was it? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, I can't That's, say that on yeah, YouTube, can't Bunny. can't say that on Come YouTube, on, Bunny. Say it on YouTube. <laughs> you can't say that on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, oh, right. I'm blushing now because I just remembered. Yeah, wow. Well done. Okay, well good. Done. Good. Nice. Uh, is there anything else inappropriate <laughs> you'd like to bring up, Luke? <laughs> no, I don't, Chris. <laughs> My ears are so hot right now. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Okay. Um, all right. It looks like we're loaded into the big box. I think that's maybe where we're going to go next. And by the way, action. before we start this fight, the internet, I'm asking you, please meme Luke's face when he was super embarrassed after that. I want to see those memes. <laughs> all the Luke memes, please. All right. Uh, honor up to winner's bracket round four, 30-pound action, emulsifier from Teams Bots FC. Uh, builders of Shatter on BattleBots Eight, versus seven, Yahoo. This is Pete Covert, six, uh, who five, runs uh, four, on the three, Copperhead team two, on BattleBots. One. Winners bracket round four. These are both fight. undefeated for the day. One of these bots is going to get kicked down into the losers bracket. Oh, and so, in these early exchanges, Yahoo is successfully getting under Emulsifier. Now it's got to around to the side of Emulsifier, showing control. This one is really going to go down to the uh, to the low game, to the ground game. And uh, it looks like the wheels on Emulsifier aren't looking great. Whoa! Wow! Huge hit up against the side of the box. Emulsifier came out here today. Oh, Whoa, no! Look at that. Stickbot falling apart there. Emulsifier came out here today with two mini bots uh, that it's running to help it out. But they have played almost no factor in this fight. But now, now it looks like it, Yahoo is on its head, and Emulsifier was able to get underneath and make a couple of hits on the top plate. That, uh, that wedge lit on the side of, of Yahoo is bent up. The other wedge lit is gone. Both of these weapons are still running. Those wedgelets responsible, I think, for, for uh, Yahoo winning a lot of those early exchanges just because they were able to get out of that or get underneath that big plow on Emulsifier. Look at Emulsi that. Oh. Emulsifier captain Matt Boris is really uh, finding the low ground here. 
and uh, scoring up damage and control points here on the back half Ooh. of this match. 90 seconds left in this fight. Oh, and what there was that? There goes that, that wedgelet. Ah, oh, that was the other wedgelet. Oh, no. Look at the front of that plow on Emulsifier, completely bent and chunked up there. That is some hard steel. Very difficult to do that kind of damage. <laughs> oh, no, and Fluffy just lost one of its two hats. And Fluffy's head is starting to come off, Chris. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, we've got a tapping on the... Uh, no, no, you got to hit the out. button. There we go. Tap there we go. Out. Emulsifier, your winner of that fight. That was a brutal match for both of these competitors. Wow. I bet the Bots FC team is super glad that there was a tap out. They did not want to take any more of those hits. Winner's bracket round four. Pete Covert and Yahoo will be kicked down into the loser's bracket. We're going to see uh, Pete and Yahoo in uh, loser's bracket round five. Whew. And uh, yeah, that was a very destructive match. Yeah. That's really kind of peak emulsifier. That's really what you expect. You want to see these huge concussive hits. You want to see your opponent getting thrown across this 16 by 16 big box. And uh, really, I mean, throwing a huge amount of weight. I mean, that's a 30-pound robot. Yeah, and let's not uh, discredit Yahoo at all. They threw out some massive hits, especially early on in that fight. There was a great back and forth between those two. I want to see that match again. I would absolutely love to see those two bots go at it again. That was great. Awesome. All right, uh, looks like we've, we're loading into cage one. We've got loser's bracket round four. Project Liftoff versus Caldera. Uh, now, before we go to that match, uh, Lindsay, let's check in with you. Hey, all right. So we have a question from Matt, uh, YouTuber Matt Lantry, who wants to know what robot or builder would you want to see come to NHRL? Personally, Matt wants to see Lolo Man from Robert Cowan. Ooh, wow. That would be a good one. Okay. That would be a good one. Chris, I know that uh, you have a favorite builder who uh, continues to threaten to come here to Norwalk Havoc. Uh, you know, do you have somebody in mind, somebody who you'd like to see compete who hasn't competed here yet? There's this, uh, there's a West Coast builder. His name's Paul Vigliamonte. Oh, Vig yeah. Vigli, yeah. Venti, Venti Frappuccino? Venti Frappuccino, sorry. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. I was way off. You were way off. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's humiliating. Bit, Bitface? Is it Bitface? Yes, it's a, it's, I think it's a, I, maybe. <laughs> Bite Farce, is it? Bite Farce. <laughs> Bite Farce. All right, Paul Ventimiglia from uh, Bite Force. It is okay. Listen, do you think Paul would actually come here? Yeah, yeah, sure. I do. Of course. Okay. All right. I love it. Uh, okay. Good. Um, all right. It looks like Cage One is open, though. Project and, and Lift Paul, Off. And uh, Paul, WPI uh, graduated himself, and the oh, college that's is out true. here. Why not? Yeah, I guess he could be uh, visiting. You know, his, uh, you know, going out for an alumni event or something. Just sure. swing by and pick up a golden dumpster. Why not? Yeah, you why, know? not? why not? Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, looks like uh, Cage 1, the uh, robots, they're still being worked on, so we're going to go over to Cage 2. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. yeah oh, whenever you see somebody crawling into the box, one. that's not a good sign. Yeah, it looks like they're going to have to fix a camera in Cage 1, so it looks like we're going to go over to Cage 2. This where? is Shred It Bro, Evan Arias uh, versus Bunny Sariel and Mauser. You know, it's really, it's too bad that, that uh, Bunny Eight, lost her seven, enthusiasm this late six, today. Five, <laughs> you know, her energy four, levels are just so much three, lower. Yeah. Two, She's one, amped to be here. Five, and I love robots it. Fight. I'm here Whoa. for that energy. Oh, oh my Big God. Big box rush right out of the box for Shredded Bro, taking it straight to Mauser. Will we see aggressive tapping? I would say that's guaranteed, ah. Chris. This is loser's bracket round four action. Uh, the loser of this match will be going home early. Now, the thing I really like about Mauser is that uh, she is not afraid to go uh, absolutely face first. She wants to break Evan's egg beater spinner on these very sharp forks that, uh, that Bunny is running. And those forks have taken some damage today, but they're just hanging in there. Yeah. A real testament to the craftsmanship of Sen Cut Sen. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, oh no! Oh, oh, no! Mauser has lost its tail, and it's high centered itself on its tail. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you oh, can see those no! wheels. Oh no! 
So here's the assist. Here comes the assist from Bert. But does the nub work? I don't think uh, that we have an active weapon anymore on Mauser, Chris. No, and with half of their drive down, it's going to be very hard for them to get any control points going forward in this match. Oh, but upside down, they actually have a little bit more mobility. Yeah, that's interesting. I would say in terms of drive drivability, I mean, Shredded Bro is not looking great here. Oh, no, definitely not. They're having if to Evan gyro had, around. had both of his wheels fully operational, he would absolutely come around to uh, the back of Mauser. A little pop there to the back of Mauser. 70 seconds left in this fight. Evan Arya spinning up Shredded Bro. You can hear it in the box. And with 60 seconds left, this has become a very one-sided match. The big thing to do here is not to get stuck if you're Evan Arias, not to high center yourself on a uh, plastic mouse tail, and uh, really just to stay alive. If this goes to the judges, I don't know. It seems, uh, it seems like this has been pretty one-sided. Yeah. Ooh, big hits there on Mauser. But Bunny refuses to tap out. I can appreciate the pluck. Never give up. Keep fighting, Bunny. It will. I mean, it's round four of the loser's bracket of the entire 2021 season. And now uh, Bunny is frantically <laughs> moving her uh, transmitter sticks back and forth, but uh, she up is down, stuck up, up down, against left, the right, rail. Left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, start. <laughs> Three, two, one. That, All there's right. the end of this match. Let's give a huge round of applause to Bunny Sariel, one of the most popular builders in this sport. Yeah. With good reason. We are going to go to the judges, but it uh, seems like a pretty conclusive win, I think, for Evan Arias and Shredded Bro. What yeah. do you think? I think so as well. I think so as well. Back in the day, as in uh, last month, we would have just done a show of hands, Kyle. Yeah, we would have. Yeah. But you can't do that anymore because now they've got to throw in their uh, their scores. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a 5-0 like across the board. I mean, Bunny Sariel showed great control yeah. and great aggression in this match. Yep. And really, it's when she lost that tail that things started to go south for her. All right, we're going to go over to the judges. I think that this one should be pretty quick. As they deliberate and they put in their scores. Oh, yep, here they come. 1-4, one 1-4. Four, one four. Here we go. All right. That is a unanimous judge's decision for Shreddit, bro. Yep. All right. Now, Bunny will be yeah, going I'll home. I'll definitely say this. I oh, thought yeah. uh, Mouser was the more aggressive one there. Was Even after she lost her tail, was upside down, she was going after Shreddit, bro. And, and I think Shreddit, bro, early in the match when he had both side drives working, was super aggressive. But once he lost one of those wheels, he was really forced to crab a little bit. And, and yeah. Bunny was really trying to bring it to him there. She was really bringing the fight. Yeah. I mean, Bunny is... I mean, if has, you looked at when... Oh, sorry. Go if ahead, If you look Peter. at when they hit people, when they collided together, Bunny was the one driving into Shreddit, bro. So that really cements the aggression for her. But just at the end, neither of them were doing that much. And uh, Evan won on damage. Bunny wasn't moving at the end. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's check in with Katie. And I uh, hear that she uh, she's... Pulled aside Bunny Sariel, uh, fresh off of this match. Yeah, that's right. And I think aggressive is something that she would also say that you were out there. Oh, I was ready. I was taking him down. I was ready. I was going for it until the end. What could you have done differently? Not ended up on the wall. Yeah. I had you, though. I had you. Oh, we see aggressive gonna, tapping. <laughs> aggressive <laughs> tapping. A family-friendly environment. Family, no way. Uh, thank you for your positivity throughout the day, though. It was a lot of fun even watching you go into that. Now, you did come out on top. What would you say was the how, – how did that happen from your point of view? Luck. Straight up luck that I barely got that. Great. So at least, at least you can admit that. But you know that, and that's part of what this game is all about. Yeah, absolutely. You just got to, like, stay head on as much as you can and pray for the best, really. All right. From that angle, how, how is the, how's the bot? Oh, it's spicy. Feel it. I, I actually don't want to feel that. <laughs> Smart. 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 She's, she picks up fast. A little, a little spicy. Anyways, great battle between the two of you. Thank you guys for that. We're going to be seeing Evan here a little later on. 
I love it. President Evan, you know, right there. That's exactly on the, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Diplomatic. On the vest. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good sportsmanship there. Good humility. I love it. Yeah. Now, I, 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 love, I love seeing every single one of Bunny's matches because she's been in the sport for so long. She really knows what she's doing. Yeah. You know, uh, Mauser, that is, a, that is a really, really cool bot. Can't wait to see it next year. All right, we're going to go over to uh, the big box, I think. Is that right? Yeah, we're getting back into 12s. Ooh, okay. It looks like Mojave versus Demi Gorgon. We see Corey Nason there with uh, Mojave and Brandon Bennett Young with Demi Gorgon. Eight, seven, losers bracket six, round four. Five, four. One of these robots three, is going to be eliminated two, in three minutes or one. less. Ooh. Fight, robots, fight. Oh, we're seeing good mobility from Mojave. Yeah, some of the best mobility we've seen all day. Yeah, Mojave had been plagued by some drive issues earlier in the day. This is an homage to Copperhead on BattleBots. This is loser's bracket Ooh. round four. Uh, wow. The winner of this match will advance to loser's bracket round five to face Huge. Which, uh, I don't know. Who knows here? I mean, Huge is pretty tall, and these robots are pretty short, Kyle. Yeah. Oh. Neither of them are very well matched for Huge. Demi Gorgon taking out the uh, Smeedleweight kit there. And it looks like the drum on Mojave is down. Now, Mojave is an interesting design because it's a hub motor, uh, so the motor lives inside of that drum. Some of the, uh, the big advantages of that is you get direct power transfer from the motor to the weapon. Some of the disadvantages of that is your motor is literally sitting inside of the thing you're trying to hit your opponent with. Oh! Oh my goodness! What that is happening? was the weapon on Demi Gorgon. It is now completely oh, removed from the bot. No. Wow! That's... Without a weapon, it comes down to pushing. Can Corey Nason stay alive? That is damage. Yeah, that's big damage right there. Wow. At this point, Demi Gorgon is lucky they took out the Smeedle weight kit early in this fight, or Kyle. that would play a big factor right now. Mojave's drive is looking very sluggish right very now. Very sluggish. Wow. Ooh. 75 seconds left here in this fight. Never give up. You really never know what is going to happen in these fights. It could completely change in your favor in the last yeah. 20 seconds. Yeah. I mean, that's just crazy. Wow, Mojave did not tap out, and it really, uh, really paid off there, that decision. You've got to wonder what happened with Demi Gorgon to uh, cause it to lose its weapon like that. I think that they went weapon to weapon. Now they hit, a, you know, essentially a dead drum on, on Mojave. And, yeah. You know, are the judges going to see that as the result of aggression from Demi Gorgon, or are they going to see that as damage from Mojave? Interesting. Interesting. That's a good point. I mean, I, I would say, like, if it was BattleBots rules, you know, like, uh, you put your robot in danger by continuing to engage with a clearly dying robot. So that, uh, you know, I would say that counts for aggression, wouldn't you? Yeah. How does, how does the damage play out, though? Well, I mean, damage is damage, all right? If you lose your weapon, that's damage. All right, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the match. Turn off your weapons. Got a little celebratory dance from Demi Gorgon and Brandon Bennett Young. Corey Nason also all smiles here. Uh, let us go over to the judges while they deliberate. Chris, your thoughts on this fight? Oh, for one of the bots, it was a, it was a great end to a you know a great season. Um, I think it's I think it's really going to come down to seeing how that one transaction played out. Yeah. You know, losing the weapon that's 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 key. But I mean, Mojave they already had their weapon go down. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's going to be Mojave's weapon didn't go flying out of the robot though, Chris. That's very true. All right, uh, as the judges are entering their scores. Ooh. Oh, it's close, Chris. It's close. What? Wow. I'm trying to do math. Oh, oh. it is Demi Gorgon. Brandon Bennett Young stays alive in the loser's bracket. Mojave is going home. Uh, Brandon Bennett Young now advances to loser's round five and will face huge. Let's wow. hope that uh, he can get his weapon back onto the robot in time. 
That was devastating. That was. That absolutely was. Yeah, Brandon Bennett Young barely staying alive in this competition. I got to say that was uh, that was really close. Not as close as the, the judges thought, but uh, I thought it was really close. All right. Uh, it looks like cage one is all locked and ready to go. We've got Andrew Kazmer and Project Liftoff versus Caldera. 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 I don't know where that started. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, Glenn Boxel. You know, we've got a Melty Brain in Project Liftoff. It went absolutely undefeated in August. Is that right? September. September. Yeah. September. And uh, Caldera. It is a big old horizontal here in the Beetleweights. Loser's bracket round four. One of these robots will be going home here shortly. Let's take a look here at the 12-pound bracket. We can kind of see uh, what we have left. Demi Gorgon advances to loser's round eight. Interesting. Yeah. OK. Uh, versus Huge. And uh, the winner of that match will go on to face Prom Hida. All right, honor of two, box one. Andrew versus Glenn. Three pound robot action. These Project builders have been ready to go. Project Liftoff is just devastating when it gets fully up to speed. Caldera gets up to Eight, speed very quickly. Seven, yeah. Six, five, four. You think Caldera is going to go for a two, box run? One. Fight. It's robots got to. It's really fight. got really no other option. It's the only way to defeat Project Liftoff. You've got to stop that uh, spinning body. Oh, interesting. It looks like Project Liftoff has put on like a little bit longer of a tooth. Probably a good idea with the amount of reach Caldera has over oh, it. Oh, wow. Caldera is now on its back. Oh. oh, that's not good. If there was a camera there, he would have taken it out. Holy smokes. Glenn Boxel knows that he needs to be absolutely aggressive in this match. He's got to stop Project Liftoff. But oh, that the mini wedge bot, bot is doing great. Nice. Wedge bots are, so the mini bots uh, serve a bunch of different purposes in these fights. In this particular case, the wedge bot is there to high center the opponent and pin the opponent. They're allowed to do so for 10 seconds. One of the smartest things that Project Liftoff oh. ever did was to introduce a mini bot into the, uh, the box giving itself time to spin up completely. It is also introducing another foreign object into the box that it could potentially launch itself off of. Oh, yeah. Like a water ski, Chris. Ooh, right, yeah. they're like a font. I like that. Wow. Project Liftoff is pursuing, is really intent on trying to break Project Liftoff. Already We've seen in September that that is an incredibly tough robot in Project Liftoff. It is difficult to kill. That squealing sound that you hear is from Project Liftoff. It is those very sharp metal wheels that are digging into the floor and uh, giving it the traction that it needs to spin up as quickly as it does. You can also see the damage that those wheels do to the floor as it moves along. Yes. It cuts wow. the path as it moves around the box. Dude, it's like a spirograph. It's oh, like oh, nice reference. Yes. Yeah. I was gonna say it's like the uh, an anti uh, Zamboni. <laughs> yeah, you always know which arena Project Liftoff has been fighting in. Oh, oh look like at this. The teeth on Project Liftoff have been peeled up. Wow. Wow. It's turning itself into a crowd, Chris. Not safe to wear. Do not wear this crown. Do not wear this crown. <laughs> Don't yeah. you tell me what to do, Kyle. I'm just saying I like your noggin the way it is. Don't do it. 20 Whoa! seconds left. More Ouch. big hits. These two robots refuse to die. This is why we're in the finals, Kyle. Project Liftoff. Best example of a melty brain spin we have at this competition. <laughs> oh. Five, four, three, two, one. That's the match. Turn off your weapon, Project Liftoff. Make your way to the door if you can. You see Glenn Boxel giving a little virtual high five to Andrew. This one will go to the judges. Do you think we can get a, a shot of Project Liftoff? I'm really interested in seeing how those teeth look yeah, I uh, now that after well. that match. All, All right, right looks like the they're, uh, they're opening up the, the uh, Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh my god. 
Look at that. I would like to point out that this bot was running the entire three right. minutes, and look at it now. Wow, that is amazing. I mean, the MVP of, of that was the, was the mini bot. Yeah, yeah. for sure. That what are those wheels made out of? That is amazing. Wow, good job, Kazmers. Look at this. Jim Kazmer driving the minibot. Excellent, excellent work. Uh, the minibot, absolutely crucial to the uh, to the success of Project Liftoff. Yeah. Uh, really like allowing uh, Andrew to spin up completely. I think that the minibot going forward into 2022, key, key. All right, we're gonna go over to the judges as they deliberate. Ooh, oh my gosh, split, split, split. What? <gasps> Oh. <laughs> ha! I see. Ah! What? Oh! Uh, that was that wow. was close. Yeah. That was one of the closer matches we've seen today. I, I, I could have gone either way. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, great for both robots to keep going for all three minutes, but at least in my mind, uh, whenever they collided, it was usually Caldera that was moving. Uh, is that giving is giving them the aggression they ran into them but project liftoff really executed their strategy with a mini bot high centering caldera and then getting to up to speed so that definitely counts towards their control all right yeah, thank you same very thing. much I gave judges. Them control points for that those pins where they held him up and the main bot got up to speed that's pretty cool to see yeah yeah all right thank you very much judges that was an excellent excellent match Kyle, looks like uh, we've got a sponsor ad read here. Yeah, let's go ahead and thank one of our sponsors, Argyle Materials. Argyle Materials has been supplying e uh, equivalent materials from EEPROM chips for uh, strays as 3D printers, including Uprint, Dimension, and Fortis machines. Uh, visit ArgyleMaterials.com for more information. Thank you so much, Argyle Materials, for supporting this hour of Norwalk Havoc Robot League. Really appreciate you. All right, so we are going deep into this competition now. We have been here literally all day. It looks like we're loading into the big box next, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, this is 12 pound action. This is Cannibal Mini versus what is, oh, that is Whittle by Whittle. Yeah. Wow, loser's bracket round four. Cannibal Mini driven by Luke Falkham from Florida. Flew up here with uh, this uh, design that he'd love to get onto BattleBots. Eight, uh, versus Bryce seven, and Kaskis six, and Whittle by Whittle, five, the captain of four, Slapbox on three, BattleBots. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Oh, we've got good spin up on that angled horizontal spinner from Cannibal Mini. Whittle by Whittle is uh, sporting a spatula. Is Whittle by Whittle upside down or is that, uh, is that plow like at an angle? I think they angled the plow upwards to uh, capture more like space from that downward horizontal spinner. Oh, technically, oh, yeah, you can deflect that Here we go. spinner to the floor. Exactly. Wow. Bryce Yankaskis successfully getting to the bottom of Cannibal Mini while it was inverted. Cannibal Mini is now back on its uh, feet and very dangerous. Wow, seeing this kind of negative uh, you know, plow, it's interesting. It's a smart idea. It's interesting to see how it's working out for them, but they have gotten Cannibal Mini on their head several times in this fight already, so. Oh, here we go! Yes! Yes! Wow. Yes! yes! Oh, That's the biggest yeah. shower front we've seen so far today. Bryce Yankaskis is bringing it to us, cutting into the bottom plate here on Cannibal Mini. Oh, no! Wow. All right, so it looks like Cannibal Mini still able to drive after that exchange. They are back on their wheels. But is that weapon working? Cannibal Mini's weapon is down. And Whittle by Whittle, looks like uh, maybe he's turned off his, uh, his spinner. What, what, do you, what do you say? I don't yeah. know. We've been seeing some bulletproof reliability uh, in this match from Whittle by Whittle. Yeah, he's just waiting Here for the right opportunity. Here we go! Oh. <laughs> going, oh! Going after the weapon bar, that's aggressive. Wow. Yeah, I don't think the weapon on uh, Cannibal Mini is coming back. Bryce and Cascus. Oh, he's going super deep here. Nice. 60 he seconds that weapon left. at full speed into Cannibal Mini. 
Usually a dangerous move, but with the weapon down on Cannibal Mini, that's actually a very good strategy for Bryce to be using. I gotta say, of the Yankaskis family, Bryce's driving is so impressive. He's, he's just so aggressive and so thoughtful. Intentional. I yeah. think he's just getting uh, you know, a little bit of self-riding practice in here. You're right. You're absolutely right. 25 seconds left in and this there match. there he goes, coming back down. Oh, nice dodge there by Cannibal Mini, but uh, still able to get a little bit of a hit in there by Whittle by Whittle. 10 seconds left in the match. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the end of this fight. Please turn off your weapons and make your way to the door. This one will go to the judges. As I look into the audience, I see sparks and stuff out there. Listen, I'll tell you, we saw sparks here. That was great. <laughs> Did that was a get, great match. Did you get what you needed? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, as we go to the judges here, this went the full three minutes. It looks like Cannibal lost its weapon pretty early. And uh, Bryce Yankaskis running that negative uh, angle on the plow seemed to, uh, you know, work out in his favor. Yeah. Pretty interesting uh, strategy there. Yeah, I really haven't seen that before. That was very smart on his part. I, I'm very impressed how that strategy worked out. Yeah. I think maybe the closest thing that I've seen on BattleBots would be Tracer. You know, Tracer oh, isn't yeah. like a fully flat front, but like slightly negative. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I certainly haven't seen, you know, a negative angle at, the, you know, that extreme before. I think, uh, well... Maybe it's it's already split, but uppercut runs, uh, you know, a front wedge that ramps up and ramps down. Hmm. Eats in the center. Mm, yeah. Good point. Luke uh, is taking a look at the bottom of his robot, and uh, this is losers bracket round four. He might be uh, flying back to Florida early. Let's go see. All right, we're gonna go into a quick instant replay. Uh, this was a pretty pretty one-sided match, I would say. So we are going to watch this just for fun, Kyle. Wow. One of the big things that uh, that you're looking for with Cannibal Mini is, uh, you know, the angle on that uh, that that weapon kind of creates um, some interesting physics. Yeah. Like typically, you don't want a horizontal to be at an angle because uh, as you spin it up, your physics change. You know, based upon the speed of uh, of that weapon. You know, every time that you see a horizontal and it's it moves off of its plane, you know, um, start to see kind of some weird, weird driving happen. That is something that uh, that I will say Luke takes advantage of at smaller weight classes with this design. He'll actually float the back of his bot around to help him gyro and get uh, better angles and positions on the opponent. Oh, oh here here's we our go. Sparks. This is, oh, that's where sparks it oh it's beautiful. Screenshot that internet. Look at that. Oh, that is amazing. And look, another one. Here we go. <laughs> Kyle, I love sparkles. sparkles. Look go. at the sparkles, Kyle. Just oh, so it's lovely. beautiful. It's just so lovely. It's like the it's like 4th of July in December. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Kyle, that brings me so much joy. That oh, was. I love it. I love it. Took full advantage of that pin, got as much damage out of that as he possibly could. That's just what you want to see with a Sawbot. That was so nicely done. Uh, congratulations to him. We're going to go to the judges to get the yep. official ruling. Ooh, look at this. Four, one, three, two. And it's Whittle wow. by Whittle. Unanimous decision. Wow. Pretty easy one to call. We almost had one mind for that thing. We almost scored it identically yeah, all the way like across. It. That would have been impressive. We just won, one. We gotta work on our control. We gotta sync up a little bit. <laughs> we'll talk. Our about judges' that. mind meld is almost complete. <laughs> <laughs> all right, unanimous judges' decision for Bryce Yankaskis and Whittle by Whittle, which advances to losers bracket round five. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean that bot is looking really good. It really is. I I'm a little worried that uh, Whittle by Whittle is now very quickly getting toward these super high kinetic energy robots. Yes, it Let's is. Let's take a look at the bracket here in 12 pounds. Whittle by Whittle uh, will be facing the winner of Kitten Mittens versus Drunken Peasant. Mm. 
two Ooh. very high energy weapons. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about this one. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. I mean, Kitten Mittens, arguably the highest energy weapon in the 12-pound division. That yeah. thing hits so hard. Yeah. Uh, Drunken Peasant, no slouch in that department either. And uh, they did end up splitting apart uh, your favorite bot in this particular competition. Everyone's so. favorite bot. Everyone's Rip and favorite tear. bot. Let's go to our friend Lindsay. Hello. 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 Uh, so actually 85% of the chat also agreed it was whittle by whittle. So a lot of consensus going on there. Um, but we do have a super chat. And this is again from Ian, who's over in the UK. And he wants to just imagine this world. Can you imagine a Norwalk where Paul Ventimiglia comes in with an entry? All the competitors would run out of the building screaming in terror. <laughs> that, that seems true to me. <laughs> wow. You know what? I am really interested to see what Paul Ventimiglia would bring to uh, to this competition. Same. You know the the type of design that he would he would build. One of the interesting things about Norwalk Havoc is that you can build what you want to build. Yeah. Right. Like one of the challenges with BattleBots or with other shows is that you get locked into a design. You know, like this is the the design that you're known for. You can't bring something radically different every single season. Paul Ventimiglia would he bring a small bite force? I don't know. I don't Maybe know. he would bring a food truck. <laughs> it's possible. I Just start right slinging that. venti frappuccinos. Is that uh, right? Oh, yeah. So speaking of the 12-pound division, we're going to go see our friends Kitten Mittens and Drunken Peasant Whoa. fighting in the loser's bracket. This is going to be high kinetic energy. The winner of this match will go on to face Whittle by Whittle. So uh, there are uh, pretty high uh, pretty high stakes here for Bryce and Cascus. Got to say, I love Soul's uh, Christmas sweater here. I feel like we are all rocking... Uh, you know, Christmas, uh, Christmas yeah, themed clothing. Cheer. Love it. Facing off against Kitten Mittens, this is Luke Quintal, one of the team members from Copperhead on BattleBots. Eight, seven, Drunken Peasant, six, um, five, four, visiting here all three, the way from Mexico. Two, Had to cross one, uh, international fight, borders style to, uh, to get here. Drunken Present would be, uh, I guess you could call it a traditional egg beater style spinner, two wheeled egg beater style spinner. Uh, not exactly that common in the 12 pound division. Oh no, Soul is stuck up division. on the uh, the rail but was able to gyro itself down. Nice. Kid wow. Mittens is a gyroscopic walker, a gyro walker. It uses the full momentum of its weapon to gyro its legs up and down and walk across the arena. The weapon is the drive, the drive is the weapon. It's a really cool robot and it hits so hard because they're able to put kind of all of the drive power as well as the weapon power into one thing, and it is that massive disc. Now, Sol has managed to kick Drunken, Drunken Peasant back into its starting square, and it doesn't look like the uh, the arm on, on Kitten Mittens can move. Oh, no, it's stuck in one spot. Yeah, that arm moving oh. is so crucial to their success. They need to be able to pivot back and forth. Oh! Oh! oh my god! What uh, happened? I, I just had a heart attack. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. That was like a jump scare from a Friday the 13th movie. So Fluffy, normally very gentle when they dislodge robots from the wall. Uh, no gentle motions there. Was that Connor? Where's Connor? Oh my goodness. And whoa, Drunken Peasant what? is smoking. Oh, what a turn of events for Drunken Peasant. Kitten Mittens what? is What is happening? Flopping. Okay, Kitten Mittens isn't showing movement. What is happening? Are we referee, get, are come we on. Are going to show motion here, referee? Because it looks like we should. What was in this Billy Chino? <laughs> <laughs> All right, look. Show motion. Kitten Mittens. Obviously not It is moving. stuck. Drunken Peasant trying to stay alive, not catch fire. Yeah, trying to survive here for just a couple motion. more seconds. That does appear to be a little lipo fire coming out of Drunken yeah, Peasant. Yeah, I see some <laughs> fire, and that's a knockout. Knockout. Wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Kyle, that match took a month off of my life. That was All so right. scary. Oh. So most of these bots do run lithium polymer batteries, and uh, when they are when the internals of those batteries are exposed to air, they do tend to catch on fire. 
uh, which is what we're seeing the beginnings of right now, that will burn for quite a long time and erupt into a much larger flame if it's not stopped soon. Uh, so our safety team is going to put that bot out, uh, put the safety mechanism on it, and hopefully get it into a bucket and get it outside before it... Uh, yeah, and uh, put it out of its misery before it uh, erupts into any more flames. Wow. Looks like they, uh, they did just pop in there and disconnect that battery. Yeah, smart move there. XT60 was kind of dangling out of the side of the bot. Ooh, look wow. at you with the terminology. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. Wow. It's good to have a builder on the team, you know what I mean? That was a weird match. All right, let's, let's name all match. the things that were weird, okay? So Kitten Mittens. Kitten Mittens. Does a great uh, job defending itself at first, but man, the mobility on Drunken Peasant obviously showing right there at the beginning. This minibot putting in a lot of work, throwing Kitten Mittens yeah. off. Yeah, it really it changed the, the first 10, 15 seconds of the match. Yeah, it gave uh, Drunken Peasant this opportunity to knock them onto their head, and they never really recovered from this. It's It was just kind of them trying to recover and get back onto their feet this entire first part of the match. This was 20 seconds in. Kitten Mittens got stuck here, unable to move, and uh, the countout didn't begin and for two minutes. Wild. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, let's go over to Kate. Kate, uh, you know, are, are you checking in with the builder? Well, first, I want to just clear the air with Kitten Mittens. Uh, he said that's not the first time that he's gotten smashed by Fluffy, but he said it's all good. It's all part of the fun. Anyways, here with Sol. Congratulations uh, for that, but what's going on with the bot? Uh, I don't know. Um, the, that was a uh, speed controller, so that was on fire. I don't know why. Oh, oh wow. That was okay. like a ton of power. Uh, but I have like three, three different systems, uh, weapons, uh, oh, drive, and control, goodness. so weapons get on fire. But it doesn't affect, uh, as you see, it can drive with all the bot on fire. Okay, so we don't know what the uh, the cleanup with that fire is going to look like, do you? Uh, I think it's going to be messy, and I need to, to repair my bot <laughs> again. But here's what's great. Yeah. He's still smiling. Yeah, it's, it's very fun. <laughs> I do it for the last. <laughs> That is just wonderful. Anyways, thank you for that. We're going to go let you figure out what's going on. Thank you, <laughs> guys. It's a lot of fun with him, at least. Yeah, he's a really good guy. And we just watched, uh, what, three times in a row, Fluffy smashing kitten mittens over and over and over again while Who you were doing that interview. Who was driving Fluffy, Like Kyle. a shitty bus out of nowhere. Yeah, it really was. Uh, just, I mean, from our perspective, when we watched it live, it, the camera was tight on kitten mittens. Yeah. And you just see this yes. block of steel yeah. fly in and smash them. It was so scary. Uh, <laughs> wow. My goodness. <laughs> Look at that little hat. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, don't vacuum up that hat. I, I want that hat, all right? <laughs> you would. Here we go. Yeah, let's get that hat. <laughs> what do you say, guys? Yeah, you want the hat, right? Of course. Yeah, wow. This uh, this cleanup Oh, no, crew don't step on the hat. Is putting in a lot oh, of work. No, oh, no, don't step on the hat. What no. is going on? Uh, oh, hey. yeah. There's just so much trauma from that match, guys. I don't know if I can handle it. Oh, that was wild. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I got to check my heart rate on, like, my Apple Watch. <laughs> oh, this was something else. Oh, that was great. That was absolutely great. All right. Cool. Uh, it looks like Cage 2 is all loaded up. Uh, let's go over to Beetleweight action here. We've got Vespula versus Silent X. Vespula run by Team WPI, Team Ribot, and uh, Silent X built by Sablaze, Captain Jameson Go. Ooh, we've got like a little sign cage side. Is that Ginger Smith Schmidt over there? <laughs> oh my gosh, it is Ginger. Hello. Oh, I, I love how she's just got all of the, uh, yeah, Megatron, Silent, Silent Spring. Just make one, okay? And then you can just uh, keep uh, switching it in and out. I love... <laughs> yes, yes. Eight, Suffer. seven, six, All right, losers five, bracket round four, five. This is a do or die three, moment for these two, two very one. elite robots. Fight. Robots fight. X. One of these robots will be going home. The other one moves on to face Eruption in the next round. 
And this is looking pretty familiar right now to a fight we saw not too terribly long ago. Yeah, it's like the Bizarro version of it, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. Silent Spring and Poliwog fought earlier in the day. Vespula is an older version of Poliwog in a lot of ways. Yeah, very similar design-wise. Interesting. One of the big things uh, that I really love about Silent X and Silent Spring today are these shuffling, uh, you know, legs here. Silent Spring is not running wheels. It is running a walking mechanism. That and walking mechanism affords him a full extra pound of weight, which in the three-pound division is a massive amount. It's a lot. It's it a lot. really helps them keep the bot on the ground while they're delivering these massive hits. Normally, what we used to see in the silent line of bots is they would make a hit, and they would fly just as far as their opponent after they made contact. That's, that problem has really been solved by this shuffler mechanism, and it's worked so efficiently, it's really hard to distinguish it from the wheeled robots in this competition. Now with this undercutter, you want to get under Vespula and start eating away at those wheels. Basically the exact same thing that Silent Spring did with Poliwog. You can see Silent X hanging back and the drive very clearly impaired on Vespula. Vespula now up against the rail. Silent X is there just chewing away, taking its, uh, taking its shots. You can see little bits of uh, green tire being sprayed around inside of the box. Silent X, one of those bots that was almost designed to uh, to fight against one of these, uh, you know, two wheel uh, vertical uh, bar or egg beaters, uh, and you're, we see why. We see why there were so many different design decisions built into Silent X. Vespula now stuck up against the rail. It's going to get its free unstick from Bert with 35 seconds left. Oh, there we go. Silent X just going straight face first. Ooh, missed the mark miss on there. that one, yeah. Can't hit them all. But the, uh, the drivability and the uh, reliability of Silent X is really showing through here in this match. 15 seconds left. This is a loser's bracket round five match to remember. And it looks like uh, we are going to be bidding an early farewell to Vespula here. Two, one, that's the match. Turn off your weapons and drive to the door if you can. I guess walk to the door if you're Silent X. Yeah, do a little, do a little shuffle dance. Oof. So what do you say, Ginger? Did uh, Vespula suffer enough for you? <laughs> uh. Thumbs up for suffering? No? Oh, no. Can they hear me? Uh, they might be a little bit too busy right now. Yeah. All right. I'm going to say thumbs up for suffering, Kyle. Uh, there was plenty <laughs> of it in that match, for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, we're going to go to the judges. Uh, they're going to deliberate. Whew. I don't know. Maybe it's not a 5-0, but uh, it's pretty darn close. Yeah, pretty close. Oh, it is 5-0. It's 5-0, Chris. Look at those. Wow. wow. Yeah. Unanimous judge's decision for Silent X, which advances. Vespula is going home early. Yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, let's uh, kick it over to Katie. She is cage side with Silent X. You, yeah, I, I was actually. And then these robots really keep these guys busy here. Uh, from your perspective, how well did that, uh, did that battle go? I think it did really well. I had my, my good friends Jameson and Ginger helping me keep my head straight during the entire match. And yeah, I think I, think, um, I did pretty all right. I was <laughs> say, keeping your head straight. <laughs> How do you keep this so cool, calm, and collected minus them in your own head? How do you do that when a battle really fires up? I don't. <laughs> I end up being a little too aggressive with charging and end up really beaten on the walls <laughs> instead of the opponent. And so, yeah, um, helps to have good friends. Absolutely. For good friends in good places. And that's really what this place is all about. Right, guys? Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Silent X advances. It stays alive. And it sets up kind of an interesting uh, question. What if Silent X survives through the loser's bracket and faces Silent Spring? What happens? 
Uh, I mean, that is why Jameson has uh, gotten another driver for today. So just in case that does happen, <laughs> uh, he also has given himself the opportunity to work on his own bot while his other bot is fighting. It was a really good move on his part. I know he's been debating doing this for a, a long time, but um, you know, now, now that that's really a strategy that's going to be working out for him. Uh, Silent X is going to be facing Eruption in its next fight. That is Kyle. not going to be easy. Uh, Kyle, oh. I feel like like we're talking at the UN. What's going to happen if Silent Spring faces Silent X? Oh, Silent Spring wins. Yeah, okay. All right, let's go over to Lindsay. <laughs> hey there. Well, that was a trip seeing me on the uh, TVs behind you. <laughs> um, yes. So, yeah, I mean, the chat went crazy when Fluffy just rammed right into Kitten Mittens <laughs> earlier. So uh, the house bots have been a big topic of conversation. Uh, so YouTube user LumaKid100 wants to know, will, will there be Brett the Brick kits oh. for those who want to make their own at home? And then also, I'm going to add a side note to that. Uh, how much do these bots weigh? Oh, good question, Luma Kid. Luma runs Luma's Weed Whacker here. That's right. And uh, really looking forward to seeing Luma's Weed Whacker eventually uh, qualify for the December finals. Let's see. Will there be a kit? I've been saying for a very long time that I want to see a little uh, house bot toy kit that yeah. uh, kids can buy. It's perfect for kids. They can put it together themselves, and there's not you know big spinners so they can chop their fingers off. Right. right? Yeah, I do feel like if you had a full size Brett or Bert, you would do structural damage to your home with it, and that could <laughs> right. be problematic. Right. Fluffy could plow my driveway. Oh, yeah. definitely. Now yeah. let's see how heavy are the house bots. Now I don't know for sure, but I've heard through the grapevine that f that Bert and Brett. They weigh like 400 pounds each. Uh, I don't think. And Fluffy think weighs 2,000 pounds. Pretty sure that's not the case, but yeah. we'll, we'll stick with that as that's the lore That's what Connor told me. I don't think that is the case. We're moving over to the 30-pound division. We're going to be facing, we're going to have other Disco facing off against Megatron. Jameson go busy guy today. Running back and forth between all these different robots. He's got qualified for the finals. There's that traditional Jameson Go ready pose. He is just dialed Eight, in. Seven. Winner's six, bracket round four. Five, Both of these robots four, have not lost three, a match yet. Wow. Two. One. Fight. Robots fight. Now, Jameson Go is more of a control bot in this particular case with Megatron. Uh, but he oh. is very used to. Oh, and that's very not where you want to be. At that's not where you want to be. Oh, my God. High kinetic oh energy God. weapons. He knows exactly how to use those forks to get them at a disadvantage and drop that hammer saw where he wants it. Look at these pieces flying off of Other Disco. Other Disco trying to get back in the game here. Kyle, that top plate is not looking right. Jameson Go shattered that top plate. Now you can see these extra armor pieces that Other Disco has added to the front, assuming that uh, Megatron was going to come at it from the front, but it's not the plan right now. It seems like Megatron's waiting to get to the back of the bot so we can get into, into those batteries that we can see exposed right there. And those are two very exposed motors, nice yeah. and juicy motors. Oh, no. Here we go. Tap, oh, no. tap out. Oh. Tap out. Smart. So tap, I heard tap out. Say, no, no, tap no. out. Tap out, tap out. Yeah, that's exactly wow. what Megatron and Jameson Go wanted to do. Get them up against the wall wow. and fire that hammer saw right down into that weapon motor, into those two drive motors, and into those batteries all exposed in the back. Obviously, that top plate could not handle it. Winner's bracket round four. Don Dorfler will survive into the loser's bracket, but he wants to bring those motors down there I, intact. I got it. I have to just say, Jameson Go is like the master of suspense yeah. when he gets under that other bot he, and he p gets that pin. And you see he's got the perfect lineup to drop that hammer down, but then he waits just like two seconds <laughs> to draw you in. Uh, yeah. And yeah. then, whoop -ah! Yeah. Yeah, that is. I feel like that is a level of uh, of skill in this sport we don't talk about enough. Where they get to the point where they know how to make their fights entertaining. Yeah, show you know? the chip. All, All right, right, so we're going to go to Katie next. Katie, who you got with us? We got Brandon here, and Brandon's actually had quite a busy day as well. Every time I go visit him in the pits, he's actually working on both of the bots you have. What's the status right now for, for you on both levels? Let's see. So Phenomenon's about to fight polyester, and uh, they scare me quite a lot. And then Demogorgon actually just came off a fight with Mojave. And it was very interesting because the weapon sort of flew off the bottom. 
and that's because the bearings I had weren't really constrained yeah. the weapon very well. So I switched out the bearings and used a different hub. So now the robot should keep together and all the guts are still fully functional. So right now it's just a test of how long will uh, the batteries last and if any big damage is taken in this fight. All right, and then coming up to the battle ahead, you've been watching all day what these guys have. <laughs> what, do, what do they have on you at this point? Uh, numbers, there's two of them. The key here is that they can get at the multiple angles and that is always a terrifying fact when you're a single robot. So really the main thing you have to do is either isolate one, say, okay, I'm gonna kill you first and kill another, make essentially a one-on-one -on -one fight, or have to be able to avoid the second uh, while you're attacking the first and go back and forth. But in both cases, you have to treat it or minimize it to become a one-on-one -on -one fight. Because if you try to fight two and one, they have double number on you, easy damage points. Yeah. Okay, all right, so at least you know that going into it. Is there anything you can do to avoid it? So I have a bit of experience fighting multibots. I fought Stop Hitting Yourself back in March with Phenomenon, which is one of the best fights ever, by the way. <laughs> um, they did a really good job of getting underneath their weapon uh, and just hitting the front lip of it. So I changed the forks, so that way a bit more contact points. And then the uh, front of the robot also has the sort of, more of a tri-blade front, so it's less air to get caught on. And then finally, just from the experience of fighting Stop Hitting Yourself, there's a uh, what worked really well for that fight is I killed one of them and I was able to get to the second, but I was already damaged by that point. So if I can kill one and then go to the second one, that's going to be the big deal. Ah, okay. One thing that I thought has been really cool about Brandon today is every time we've had a conversation, or almost every time, there has been a conversation about a battle back when and the first one of and how special the first time battles against some of these components, uh, these uh, competitors are. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the key here is that... Uh, I've been fighting for about 11 years, so it's about half my lifetime now. So what that means is when I see all these robots come through, a lot of them I've fought before and a lot of them I remember from even way back when. Yeah. So as BattleBots has come in and the NHRL and all that's grown, I still sort of remember when it was still very small. So it's kind of cool being able to think, oh, I remember fighting you years and years ago with the very small bot. Now I've sort of elevated to the bigger bots with the bigger scene and sort of seen that progression. So it's cool to really reflect on that. Yeah, it's yeah. very reflective. Speaking of reflective, gentlemen in the booth, remember the first time that you were introduced to robots? Because I'm very familiar with that first time today. Yeah. But what's some of those stories for you? Yeah, I, I, will, I will tell you a fun story. Brandon Bennett Young was the first robot builder I ever had a real conversation with. Yeah. This was way back in the day. I think we were in Philadelphia. Marama? Uh, Mm, no, no, like at the Philadelphia museum. like museum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. Franklin yeah. Institute. Franklin Institute. Yeah. 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 And yeah, battle uh, on the Parkway. Franklin Institute. Yeah. Yeah. And Brandon was like so welcoming, and I had literally the world's dumbest questions. Mm -hmm. uh, like I'm, you know, I, the first time you come to an event, you really have no idea what's happening. You yeah. Know? And Brandon like literally sat me down, even though he's competing, and he showed me everything inside of his robot, introduced me to his brother and his dad. It was awesome. So, yeah, Brandon uh, has a special place in my heart, and I'm really glad that I get to see him every other month here at Norwalk Havoc. He truly is such a great ambassador for this sport. Huge. Such a good guy. Huge. Yeah, he started a combat robotics uh, team at his college, University of Maryland. And, yeah, like he said, he's been competing ever since he was a little kid. And, uh, yeah, fantastic driver. All right, we're going right. to go over to our friend Lindsay next. She's got some information for us from the chat. Lindsay, what's going on? It's actually, we're just going to add to the praise for Brandon. This is from Bob Bellinson. It's a super chat. Go, Brandon. Yeah. yeah all right, Amen Brandon. To that. We, all, we all love him in Bone Dead Robotics. So. Yeah, absolutely. I saw a good question in the chat around how do you get started in the sport, which I feel like, I don't know, it's kind of like in the vein. Yeah. Kyle, do you have thoughts on that? Uh, there's a lot of ways to get started. There's a lot of books that you could read. There's a lot of materials that you can go into. I think what most folks would really recommend is you, uh, you know, get yourself a kit in one of these smaller weight classes. That's the easiest way to really learn how these things are built, uh, learn how to operate them. And once you get that kit and kind of put it together, you're going to know. You're going to know yeah. all the components that you need uh, to put together a real bot that is something that you design and that you want to put together yourself. Um, and you can use a lot of those parts that you got from your kit to transfer over into your new bot. And once you kind of master that weight class, go ahead and move up. See how you feel in the 12-pound, 30-pound division. Maybe you'll even build a heavyweight one day. Who knows? But uh, it's pretty accessible to get into these lower weight classes. All right. Uh, we're going to go over to Katie. She is uh, there with Hunter Yenkaskis in the pits. 
Whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> Arts and crafts, actually. That's nice. what we're doing over here. Good. In fact, uh, so Hunter just pulled over this bag of eyeballs, and uh, he said, <laughs> he said that. What'd you say? Uh, we're, I'm setting up a three-pound rumble. Whoa. And, uh, and you gotta do eyeballs because, well, eyeballs. <laughs> you gotta be able to see the fight. You gotta be able to see the fight, and that is something that all day long, after seeing uh, Billy and Bobby, I'm wondering why all these robots don't have eyeballs. But I'm glad to I'm glad to announce to you guys that Judge's Dream in this Rumble is going to be set with eyeballs. Nice, good job. Absolutely, it's going to be the finals Rumble. Whoever wins gets an eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, get a, they get a piece of my robot, a souvenir. <laughs> well, hey, everybody would want a piece of Hunter's robot there. Thank you. Good luck. Arts and crafts is a little bit hard. These little sticky things, you got to have some nails for it. And well. <laughs> All right. Now, Hunter Yankaskis, he's a, kind of a veteran of this sport. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's take a look at how you get started here. These are the uh, Norwalk Havoc Tournament Basics. So uh, yeah, we're fighting in three weight classes today. In the small boxes, we've got three pounders. In the big boxes, we've got 12 pounders and 30 pounders. Now, these are essentially three different tournaments. And like at a the end of combat robotics. <laughs> yes, exactly. The three pounds inside of the 12 pounds inside of the 30 pounds. Now, at the end of the night, we are going to give away $50,000 in cash across these three tournaments. Uh, so it's $10,000 for beetle weights, $12,000 for 12 pounders, and $15,000 for the 30 pounders. Second place, not bad, $4,000, $4,000, and $5,000. Add it up. It's $50,000 uh, $50, collectively. Now, uh, here's how you win these fights. You win by knocking out your opponent or forcing them to tap out. Fights run for three minutes unless uh, we call for a 30-second encore, which can happen. Very rare in the finals. Rare. Um, if the clock expires, a panel of three judges will decide the winner. And then uh, the, the we also have the house spots. The house spots are responsible for unsticking their opponents. They will unstick you once if you get stuck only one time. Uh, they also kind of keep the piece in the box and kind of help keep things safe. And also they give us a nice camera angle from inside the box. Yeah, totally. All right, uh, this hour of Norwalk Havoc action is brought to you by Argyle Materials. Keep 3D printing green and lower your shipping costs. Refill and reuse your OEM 3D printing cassettes and canisters with Argyle 3D printing materials. Visit argylematerials.com for more information. Thank you so much, Argyle Materials, for sponsoring Norwalk Havoc. All right, uh, I see that we are loading into the big box. Oh, speaking of Brandon Bennett Young, mm. I see him loading in with polyester, uh, you know, facing polyester. And uh, I also see uh, Evan Arias over here loading into uh, cage two. Shred it, bro, uh, Evan Arias against Caldera. Caldera run by Glenn Boxel. This is uh, loser's bracket, round five. Five? five? Yeah, oh, the winner of this wow. match will have to go on to face Polywog. We've seen some great matches between Caldera and Polywog and Shredded Bro and Polywog in the past. Uh, Eight, I'm really excited to seven, see how this match ends up. Six, five, the repairs that these four, people had to do to their bot three, between this fight is two, what's going to decide the one. winner. Fight, robots, fight. Whoa! Oh, wow. Big pop from Shredded Bro. Shred Up Bro is well known in this competition for just being very aggressively driven by Evan Arias. They get massive hits. They always go in for that fast box rush. Oh boy. Now, is Caldera's weapon working? Uh, it it does not, not look Chris. like it right now, no. Oh no. We just saw in that graphic the last fight that these two had, Shred Up Bro won by knockout. I gotta say, most of the time Shred Up Bro wins the fight, it feels like it is by knockout, just because it is such an aggressive bot. Oh, and there we go. Yeah, we're seeing it spin up now. The weapon on Caldera is back. Oh, but it's down. Everything's down, Chris. Yeah, everything's down. That Nothing robot is, is dead. That robot is oh, very broken. No. Oh, and the Tab back out. of the robot oh, was wow. peeled away there. Loser's bracket round five. Shredded Bro stays alive. Evan Arias stays alive in this bracket. Glenn Boxel will be packing up Caldera. This is his last match of the season with this robot. Huge, huge damage here on this uh, this spot. Ooh, this is just a classic Shredder Pro fight right here. Shredder Pro is going to be going on to face Polywog in the next round. I think everybody's really looking forward to that one. All right, uh, we're going to go over to the big box next. I can see Phenomenon from Brandon Bennett Young versus Polly Esther from Team WPI. This is a little bit uh, University of Maryland versus uh, WPI. Two college teams here. Loser's bracket round four. 
high stakes match for uh, for Brandon here. He was saying earlier before this match that uh, it's hard to go up against Eight, a multi bot seven, because uh, six, they are constantly five, racking up damage four, and control points. Three. Dude. Yeah, and especially a multi-bot as well-driven as Polyester. Fight. These two are really good at coordinating their attacks <laughs> and not <laughs> subjecting themselves to friendly fire, which is something that's so hard when you're driving bots like that, especially bots with high kinetic energy weapons. Phenomenon is now tipped up on its side, up against the rail. Wow, that was fast. 15 seconds into the match, and here comes Fluffy. What kind of Fluffy are we going to see here? A gentle Fluffy. Oh, a nice and gentle Fluffy. A nice gentle Fluffy. He's great until he loses one of those two hats. Oh, wow. Here we go. I feel like Fluffy might just have something against oh, Kitten Mittens. Oh, huge hit from Esther, and uh, Phenomenon is back up against the rail. I think that this is the end for Brandon Bennett Young and this Robots. Oh, and a maybe a uh, corner hit. Yeah, maybe a show of uh, of some sportsmanship. No, nope, there is a tap out. Wow. OK. Losers bracket round four. Wow. Phenomenon. This will be their last match of the night. Brandon Bennett Young, obviously huge uh, friend to Norwalk Havoc. Round of applause for uh, Brandon. Polyester goes on to face Other Disco in the next round. That's going to be a scary fight for them. That weapon on Other Disco is just devastating. Um, this is going to be a fun one. Yeah. All right. Uh, as we load into these cages, maybe uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, drop them in the chat. Please. And uh, Lindsay will send them to us. If you have questions about the tournament, if you've got questions about the sport, questions about us, I guess. Uh, or also, if you have questions for builders who remain li alive in the bracket, you can send them into the YouTube live chat and potentially, maybe, Kate Osborne will read them and uh, ask the builders your questions. Yeah. All right, but uh, as we're loading into the box, let's take a quick break and uh, go to our sponsors. Mauser for we want to thank Mauser for sponsoring this hour of Norwalk Havoc action. Uh, let's give a big shout out to uh, Mauser Electronics. Visit Mauser.com for great technical content and the newest electronic components from leading manufacturers. Thank you very much, Mauser. All right. Uh, if you've uh, been sending in questions frantically to the YouTube live chat, uh, now is the time. You know, uh, Lindsay is going to choose some of the best ones and uh, see if we can answer them or maybe Kate can answer them. Now, of course, Lindsay can also answer all these questions herself. <laughs> she is a uh, huge combat robot fan. Uh, Lindsay, uh, what is going on in the chat? Uh, all right, so we've got people asking for RAM plan. Oh, wow. Which we all know and love. However, it's worth mentioning that RAM plan is a 12 pound sportsman. And when it comes to the finals, there are no sportsman classes because we just kind of fight them for fun throughout the year. But Fingers crossed we see more of Ramplan next year. One of my um, favorite facts about Ramplan very quickly is that it's run by Business Cat. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you know that, you know, there's business-minded cats? I did not. And that they build combat robots. I mean, that doesn't seem very business-minded to me, but um, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, there's not a lot of profit <laughs> in a combat robot. Yeah, no, not so much. Lindsay, uh, any other uh, good comments from the chat? Uh, yeah, as you might imagine, we do have people asking for a thumb war. No. Specifically. Not happening. Nope. Uh, Matt Lantry, where are the thumb wars? Matt, Give you can. Give the people Matt, what they want. No, 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 no. Thumb Matt, war. here's the thing, okay? Listen, I don't want to do thumb wars, okay? We just do them because people give us obscene amounts of money. Correct. I feel like every single competition, we've got to ask for more. So this time around, if we're going to do a thumb war, it's going to be 
$75. What? I was going to say 200 <laughs> $75. You heard it here first. All right, yeah. If we have a deep-pocketed fan who really wants to I think you are underselling the value of the thumb war, Luke. That's Listen, all. Maybe in, maybe in February it'll be 200 bucks. Who knows? All right? <laughs> this is the only way that we can discourage this uh, this behavior because it's not okay. All right? We, we have standards. We can't just, you know, I don't know, just be doing things for oh, money. Oh, my okay. goodness. Okay. So what? this is a what? fight. The people oh, have been waiting wow. so long oh, We should have been talking for. about this, Kyle. Oh, yeah, I feel bad. Yeah, I know. All right, so we're going to have literally the Donnybroke. This is Lynx versus Silent Spring. Dream match come to life. Best of the West Coast, best of the East Coast facing off against each other. Wow. Does Look anyone at, have a paper bag I could breathe into? Now, check out this configuration Eight, that Silent Spring is seven, running. Look at all six, this. Six, yeah. Five, Look at all four, these little wedgelets coming three, out the back. Two. The thought One, process five, here is take the damage five. off the back what of the bot. What is happening? I am, I am so confused. Oh, oh, my goodness. That was so destructive, that first hit. And now you can see Silent Spring is actually upside down, but they're completely invertible, perfectly fine I to do that way. Oh, 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 my goodness. Oh, no, the, the weapon, weapon from the Silent Spring is gone. That full wow. weapon module has been completely removed from the bot. Wow. Tap and that out. is a tap out. Wow. Okay. Who could take down Lynx in this competition? <laughs> Not Silent Spring. Wow. Who could take down Lynx in this competition? There's who's left? Yeah. Okay. All right. I I feel like I yeah, my heart rate is going like 160 right now. Whoa. This is incredible. I cannot believe it. All right, Silent Spring, Jameson Go came out with these really interesting uh, forks on the back of his robot. And this is the first time that we've seen Silent Spring or Silent X get popped into Ooh. the air here in the finals. And uh, just the geometry of Lynx makes that possible. And uh, Lynx severed the, uh, <laughs> the modular weapon off of Silent Spring, tossing that uh, weapon into the pink corner Devastating. Wow, we're gonna All go right. to Katie next. Yeah, Katie is uh where standing cage side, is that right? The anticipation heading into that battle between the two of these was really actually quite special. Both of them talked about this battle and it has been years in the making. Let's first start with you, Jameson. How special was it? Oh well, I mean it's a it's a been a big question for a lot of people. Silence Spring and Lakes. It's it's always been that question that people have been asking. So, this is the unfortunate answer. <laughs> like we said, it was a little short and sweet, but the anticipation was there. You guys had the like eighty five percent plus win out of everybody. Realistically, Lakes, pretty un unbeatable at this point. I hope so. Um, yeah, it's, I wasn't expecting the outcome of this fight uh, to go like this. Um, I was really worried about the hitting five pounds because lots of stuff breaks on my robot when I hit five pounds with a uh, robot. And through this process, how, how has it been that you guys haven't really competed? And what were those nerves really heading into it? Because I, I know there's probably a few, a little bit. I knew Jemo always has some sort of plan. Um, I wasn't sure if he'd come up with something new for this competition because you don't like to test or like run anything untested. Um, so I wasn't quite sure what he was going to come out here with. Um, yeah. And but speaking of, the, it was going to say, what was that? It was a good surprise. I'd say it was a nice surprise. That was one of the things that we were talking about right before. There was a little bit of some untesting going, and that was your test. Can you break it down? What was that? Well, I'd say, so I always save a little bit of something, you know. In this case, these little green wedge things that are on the robot is the thing that I was saving for uh, particular opponents that I knew would defend against me in a certain way. And I think that I was actually doing pretty okay. Now the issue was when I got flipped over is that those are completely ineffective. Yeah. And so we went in the non-ideal weapon-to-weapon <laughs> impact, and you know he hits hard. So. If there's one thing we have figured out today is that Lynx does hit very hard. And how's your robot? What, what's the condition? Let's see. I haven't looked at it yet. Um, oh, you have a nice gash in the TPU. Oh, wow. And there's a big, huge dent in the weapon. Uh, but other than that, I should just charge batteries and be ready to go again. 
Gosh, to be links here today, guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's my big question. Okay, I saw Calvin Eba like holding that weapon. Jameson Go, are you gonna give the weapon to Calvin Eba? No, well, not the whole thing. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> if, if I gave the whole thing to him, he'd have to deduct from uh, his prize winnings. <laughs> Calvin, I remember the first time you came out here, you were so disappointed when you were leaving and you had not fought Lynx that day. Um, this has been so long coming. How does it feel to finally get this fight under your belt and have it go that way? I know the first time you came here, you didn't even win, want to win the competition. You just wanted to go up against Jameson Go and Silent Spring. So how does that feel for you right now? Uh, it feels pretty great. Um, I mean, I, I just yes. Jamo's a great driver, and I know it'd be hard to get a good hit on him. Uh, he doesn't let anyone get an opportunity um, ever. So <laughs> I'm really happy with the outcome. That's awesome. As it relates to kind of the, the friendship that you guys have created outside of the cages, what is it that you respect at this point about Jameson and, and what he's done with his career really here? I like how Jameson has an engineering solution for everything. <laughs> um, and it's really clever and uh, well thought out. And it's always like very optimized. And I really like that. <laughs> and we're going to flip that. What does Calvin have that he really brings to the table? Oh, he's got that energy. He's got that drive. Every single time, a better links, new, new everything. It's he builds the whole thing from the bottom up just to make sure it's the perfect machine every single time. It's optimized. It's excellent. So, I mean, that's Calvin. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna let Calvin celebrate that win just for a second, but we know that the the night is still young for you throughout this process. Yep. Gotta uh, repair the robot again. <laughs> Par for the course, I think. That's what we're hearing. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. wow. That was Lynx uh, and Silent Spring. It's a match that has been in the works for so long. There's been so much speculation on yeah. the internet about what would happen between these two titans in the sport. Yeah. And uh, I think we've seen a pretty decisive answer. Lynx rips off weapons. Yeah. Which is <laughs> wild, Kyle. When, when Lynx is having a good competition, the only thing that can stop its momentum at all is a droopy. And there's no Droopy here. Droopy, of course, the uh, kinetic walker that uh, has been at Norwalk several times in the past, and they, they did not come to this competition today. I don't think they qualified for this competition today. But they have been well known to break links. That's exactly what Calvin was talking about when, uh, when he's broken himself hitting five-pound bots in the past. Um, and, yeah, that was, that was such a fascinating battle that did not go the yeah. way that I thought it would. Just, I don't know. Just, just watching... You know, the performance today out of Lynx, I'm pretty sure an asteroid the size of Rhode Island could right now punch through the atmosphere and hit it square on, and Lynx is going to somehow make its way out of it. <laughs> All right, it looks like we are loading 12-pound robots into the big box. Looks like we have Disco versus Hot Leaf Juice. Whoo, this is going to be a good one. Both of these robots are undefeated in the bracket today. One of them is going to get kicked down into the loser's bracket. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Winner of this fight has oh. to go on to face Bobby in the next round. And uh, wow, other disco upside down, or disco upside down. Wow, and Hot Leaf Juice has tipped. Disco up onto the rails. We're going to see uh, what kind of Fluffy we're going to get here. That is if Hot Leaf Juice even allows Fluffy in. They are really taking their time and putting the damage into uh, Disco at that corner. Smart move on their part, really. Don't yeah. even bring Fluffy into the equation. Just here keep taking go. your damage points. Oh, they've done it once again. Disco again finds itself up on the rail. Here comes the saving throw of Fluffy. Fluffy is up to three hats, Chris. This is, this is too many hats. You haven't even seen Fluffy's final form, all right? So I think four hats is uh, about where it's going. All right, yeah, big, big hit there. Weapon on weapon, Hot Leaf Juice and Disco. And again, Disco on its head. Yeah, every single one of these engagements, Hot Leaf Juice gets Disco on their head. And you see so much, uh, you know, Patience on the part of David Jin and Hot Leaf Juice. Disco's already had its one save. This is where uh, the robot could die. 
And it's really up to to, uh, to David Jin about what he wants to do here. Ooh. Wow, okay. looks like they've shaken themselves nice. loose. Wow. The patience of David Jin and his driving. Incredible. Wow, once again, finding that angle. Now, one of the things we talked to Lucy Du about in the last competition was that aluminum billet right there on the face of Hot Leaf Juice and how much of a tank that has been for them in these competitions this year. They have not replaced it once this year. It's taken all of these hits. Really? And that is uh, a that is being tested probably harder than it ever has in this match with that powerful weapon from Disco. Disco up on the wall. They've already had their show one save. Motion. Already getting the show motion call from the ref. I think that this is it. 40 seconds left. Hot Leaf Juice wants to advance to winner's Show bracket motion. round five. Knockout. That wow. is a knockout. Round of applause for Hot Leaf Juice and fantastic work in this match. Hot Leaf Juice goes on to face Bobby in the next round. Both those bots going into that undefeated, and that's going to be a very interesting matchup for Hot Leaf Juice. Uh, it's a it's a rematch. I mean, they've fought one another in the past, they have. and uh, Hot Leaf Juice came out on top against Bobby. Uh, I feel like that team really knows how to uh, how to how to go against uh, Jonathan Clark. Yeah, I think one of the challenges with with Billy and one of the challenges with Bobby is that the design is pretty much locked in. Like you can't really make that many changes. You essentially continue to bring back Billy and Bobby. It's a fantastic robot. It's a tough robot. It's one of the toughest robots to uh, to plan against. But we saw in our last time uh, that they were together, what two, maybe two Norwalks ago, mm -hmm. a very similar uh, strategy emerge to defeat both Billy and Bobby, and uh, that is essentially drive backwards into your opponent and and break uh, break you that know, weapon. Break yeah. that weapon. Uh, I also saw wait, what. I think they started inverted last time. They is that did, right? yeah. That so way like, they could chop higher on those yeah. foam wheels yeah. and really bring Bobby down to size. Uh, we're going to see if that strategy works out for them this time. It's it's tough to beat a Bobby no matter what. And I will say Bobby was a lot more damaged in that last competition than they are this time. All right, we're going to go over to Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay, do you have uh, the latest uh, from the live chat? Uh-oh. Um, Lindsay, yes. here we go. Okay. So uh, we just saw one of the most insane matches that I think we've ever seen in Silent Spring and Lynx. And while that was definitely the talk of the chat, like just a hair underneath it was the talk of your thumb wars. Oh, Lindsay, no. Wait, what and are we so up to? We are at $70. <laughs> oh, no. So we have $20 oh. from our own judge, Andrew what? Russell. $30 from Mary Catherine Carr. Bring me some more. Mary, we're friends. Why do you <laughs> do this to me? This is terrible. We've got $10 from Kazik. Uh, I'm only here for the thumb wars. And then $5 from Divine Seal and $5 from Night 61. So uh, I'm willing to bet if I look at the chat right now, we might even be at 75. So no. thousands upon thousands of dollars in engineering, hours upon hours of labor put into these bots. Just so much talent on display here today. And these people want to watch us yahoos. I said it the first around. time, I don't like competition. It <laughs> makes me feel really anxious, and they just push me into it every single time. Hold on a second. I don't think that there was any stipulation that it had to be us having a thumb war. Oh, my God, oh. Chris. These people gave $70. You can't change the... the... Let's get another grudge match in here. Can what? we get a builder thumb war? Oh, my God. All right, listen. We're going to have to ask the YouTube live chat. Do they want a builder thumb work? Because I'm okay with that. Listen, I'll call that live, okay? Yeah, I'm okay with that, too. Do we want a two Jameson builders that Calvin are maybe Eva rematch <laughs> right now? Uh, Andrew Russell says no. No. <laughs> and uh, as we speak, we have another $5 from, from Send, Send It, it Robotics. Robotics. Oh. We have reached 75 Oh my God, Greg Needell! Stop it, Greg! <laughs> Stop it! All right. And then you have to eat a stick. Oh, he really was gonna do 4.99, so we got to 74.99. Uh, wow. Count. I okay. wouldn't have counted. 
All right. I promised that we would do a thumb war if we got raised $75. Listen, that this money isn't going to charity or anything. It's going straight into Austin McCord's pocket. <laughs> okay, this is terrible. All right. Uh, are we going to do it now, Control, or do you want to do it later, Brian? Do you want a thumb war now, Brian, or do you want a thumb war later? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Brian we'll says we're going to do it later. So uh, give me time to kind of mentally get to where I need to be. Meanwhile, we're going to head over into cage two. That's where the fights happen. And uh, so that's going to be three pound robot. Whoa. This, Whoa. this here is a rumble. This here is a googly eye rumble. Whoa. Uh, okay. I'm into this. Now the rules are the ones with the eyes on last survives. <laughs> Are we just going to see people running out their batteries? It's like flag football. Catching fire. Is that right? All right. Uh, this is for fun. This is a rumble. These are all of the uh, eliminated robots, I would hope, right? Yeah. We've got Voxel down there in the uh, the bottom. Judge's Dream. We've got, oh, we've got Busy Bee's uh, mini bot. Yep. Which uh, weighs in at three pounds. We've got Project Liftoff, and we have Samurai. Wow, all of these robots, like... Top-notch bots. Put back together. Yeah. You know, like you lose, you lose, you, you fall out of the loser's bracket, but you put your robot back together. It's pretty amazing. Just to come in here for this rumble. Rumbles are really a tradition in the uh, combat robotics community. It's something you yeah. definitely do towards the end of a competition. Um, I don't think they're particularly fun as actual like competitive things, but it's good. It's good to see some chaos in the box every now and again. So let's go ahead and get the countdown started for this. Everybody's kind of in their respective corners, with the exception of Project Liftoff, who's just, you know, doing its own thing. All right. Are oh. the builders ready? Never mind. Hmm. Are we going to go to three-pound action first? We're going to go to 30-pound action first. Oh, sorry, 30. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is Loser's Bracket Round 5. This is Stop Hitting Yourself, Dominic Yankaskis, the uh, blue multi-bot uh, over there in the blue corner. Versus Yahoo and Pete Covert in the pink Eight, corner. Seven, six, By the way, I'd like to five, point out that the Peza brothers four, both just added three, $25 to make two, it a three-way thumb war. One. <laughs> fight. Robots fight. All right. Good mobility right out of the oh! box. And stop hitting yourself. And it uh, looks like Yahoo is running a brand new armor package. It was black in the last match. It is white in this match. It is difficult to uh, to face off against two 19-pound robots, especially ones with such drive uh, pushing power, uh, like Dominic Yankaskis and Stop Hitting Yourself. Huge hit there right on the front. Yahoo has uh, managed to invert one of the Stop Hitting Yourself multi-bots, but uh, Dominic's robots have successfully uh, we pushed Yahoo into the corner here. Getting under Yahoo, cutting away at that bottom plate. Ooh. Oh, oh, it's not the bottom plate. It's the top plate, Kyle. That's right. Yahoo has been inverted for most of this match. Oh, Huge wow. Huge hit. Wow. Yahoo back on its wheels. Really difficult to get your bearings when you're getting, you know, hit from both sides like that and getting pinned. That's a good pin from Stop Hitting Yourself. A little bit of smoke. I think that that might be a belt. Could be a belt, could be melted plastic getting kind of into the works because that is a big plastic armor package on the side that he was grinding into. Oh, that's maybe more significant than that. Yeah, that's a lot of smoke. That looks like it may be a top out from Yahoo. Is that a tap out? Yes, that is a tap out from Yahoo. The winner of that match is Stop Hitting Yourself. Interesting facts about Stop Hitting Yourself. How many other competitions could they fight these robots in? None, Kyle. They built these robots, these two robots, specifically for Norwalk Havoc. They are 19 pounds. That is not a weight class that exists anywhere else. The reason why they did that is because they exploited the weight bonus that is unique to Norwalk Havoc's rule set. That does not look like a weapon belt. That looks like a lipo yeah, fire. Yeah, maybe a small puncture. Wow. Could be a burnt out ESC. 
don't think they would put the batteries in that part of the bot. Hard to say, though. Okay. All right, we're going to uh, to allow that to burn out here slightly. But uh, we do have uh, our Beetleweight boxes loaded up. Loser's bracket round six. And uh, here comes Jim Haney wearing the uh, alien space suit. All right, box is open. He is spraying one of the uh, multi-bots from Stop Hitting Yourself. I'm gonna close the box once again and see if it uh, reignites. Dominic Yankaskis uh, is uh, driving this robot with Bryce Yankaskis, his oldest son. And uh, they both appeared on BattleBots with Slapbox. And uh, Dominic also appeared on BattleBots with Gemini. So he has a lot of experience driving multi-bots. All right, looks like we're gonna go in, hit it again. Okay. I've always been really curious, you know, like after you uh, fill your robot with, uh, you know, uh, extinguisher kind of dust. What happens to your repairs afterward? I think you just end up spending a lot of time spraying that stuff out of the bot. It's a big old mess. All right, so we've got Silent X going up against Eruption. This is Loser's Bracket Round 6. Eruption is uh, driven by Brian Boxel from uh, WPI versus Silent X. Eight, uh, this is a robot seven, built by James six, Ngo and driven five, by his friend four, Alex. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Whoa! Oh my goodness! Wow. That is a huge hit, and you can see the armor package from Eruption. Oh, it happened, it happened again! again! Weapon disc off of Silent X is on the ground, and eruption. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Oh, wow. that is Jameson pure Go chaos. Cannot believe it. He's lost two weapons in a row. Show motion. Wow, what are the chances of that but happening hold. twice in a row? That is insane. Show motion. We're getting a show motion here. Is that a show motion? Knockout. And that is Eruption? a knockout. <laughs> Silent X is the winner of that match. Wow, okay, Silent X. That was a huge hit, and Eruption uh, died basically after that hit. Now, uh, very quickly, uh, I wanna send a quick note to Control. All we hear is snow in our cans. Uh, we can't hear anything else. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. All right, there we go. Okay, all right, that sounds much better. And we're back. All right, that was a chaotic match. That absolutely was. I cannot believe Silent X came out on top of that after losing their weapon module and it flying across the arena. Incredible. That was absolutely incredible. Now, Jameson Go builds his, uh, his robots to be modular. So you can snap in a, a drum. You can snap in an undercutter. Yep. Um, I think there may be even like a, a vertical configuration. Um, but one of the challenges there is that because you snap it into the body, uh, that is a weak point inside of your design. It could be snapped out. It could be snapped out. It could be popped right out. Yeah. Now, I think if uh, if Jameson Go was uh, Dominic Yankaskis, he would just build like five <laughs> versions of his robot so they were uh, modular, you know, kind of uh, by design. Uh, versus I think that's just called different robots. <laughs> okay, Chris. Um, but listen, um, and, and we saw two matches now in a row, that modularity really be the Achilles heel for this design. I guarantee you that Jameson Go will go home tonight and he will think about this, even if he ends up winning the Golden Brett. And we will probably never see that, um, that weapon pop out in the exact same way ever again. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I, this bot was built with the idea in mind that you can only bring one bot to a competition. In a lot of competitions that you see around the country, that is the rules. Here at Norwalk, 
kind of more open than that. You're able to bring more versions of the bot. As long as it really is interchangeable, you're allowed to bring multiple versions of the same robot. So, um, yeah, that might be a good idea for him in the future, uh, but we'll see. Okay. I see that uh, we've loaded into the big box. It's huge versus what looked to be Demi-Gorgon. It is huge versus Demi-Gorgon. Uh, huge driven by Don Dorfler from... Uh, Oh no, Don Dorfler's brother. Oh my goodness. Uh, versus uh, Brandon Bennett Young and Demi Gorgon. This is loser's bracket round five. Eight, the, uh, seven, loser here will be six, eliminated. five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right, right out of the box. Huge, oh, and I'm seeing bits of wheel starting to uh, get torn off from Demi Gorgon here. Demi Gorgon is uh, running in its overcutter position. Oh. oh, big hits right there, weapon on weapon. Huge has flipped De Demi Gorgon over, now it is an undercutter. I see part of that top armor now laying on the, on the ground. Is that top armor from Demi Gorgon? Yes, I believe so. Unless it's actually part of its weapon, I can't tell. The weapon on Demi Gorgon looks like it is down. I hear tap out. Is that no? I don't see tap out. Brandon knockout. Young. That is a knockout. That is a knockout. Okay. Round of applause for Huge, which advances in the loser's brackets. Let's uh, check in here on the loser's brackets. Huge now uh, it will go on to face Prom Hedda in loser's bracket round six. That's going to be a fun one. That is a huge one. Yeah. Okay. Now, loading into the box, you know, I see uh, that we have our rumble. Has that run yet? I don't it think has so. not run yet. No, we would have heard that. <laughs> yeah, I think the rest of Norwalk would have heard that. Yeah, probably. Uh, in the 12-pound division, we still have fights coming from Drunken Peasant and Whittle by Whittle. The winner of that fight will go on to face Disco. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then uh, in the winner's bracket, we still have Hot Leaf Juice against Bobby. I'm very excited about that match. I think everybody is. 12-pound division's really turning out to be a really fun one in this final. Very quickly, before we, we go there, maybe we can uh, we can show off the size of our thumbs, you know? Maybe give them, like, a little a little preview. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm on, I'm on the DL. I have a bad cut on my right thumb. Whoa. Yeah, ro robot builders get those all the time, I heard. Okay. All right, uh, we're going to yes. go over to a rumble. What are the rules for a rumble, Kyle? Is, is there three minutes on the clock? Three minutes on the clock, last spot moving wins. Do we get to choose, uh, you know? It's like Demolition Derby. It's like Demolition Derby style rules. Wow. I love that Project Liftoff just starts right there in the center of the box. Kyle, do you have predictions here? Uh, hard to say. I don't know how much time everybody's put into their bots. I know any rumble situation where you let Project Liftoff get even a little oh, bit of room. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Norwalk wow. Havoc now in 3D. <laughs> that was an awesome shot. Put that on the highlight reel. Incredible. My money is on Hunter Yankaskis and Judge's Dream. Look at that little orange robot. If you just watch it, you're going to see a Master Driver here at work. Oh, but listen, you can't let Project Liftoff spin up. That is very dangerous. Yeah, it's getting up to full speed now. Oh, and there's a wheel. Whose wheel is that? Oh, that's a wheel from Samurai, Kyle. Ah, yes. This is chaos, and I love it. I don't even see a... a countdown at all. No, not at all. Are we just going to go three minutes, four minutes, five minutes? At this point, who knows? When when things stop moving. Yeah, till the batteries fall out, till something catches on fire. 
Wow, I love all of these wheels that are just randomly inside of the box. There's so much damage here that you can't really tell, you know, who's lost a wheel. Wow, I do see a little bit of bright green uh, from the mini bot from Busy B. I'm off of that armor package. Let's just take stock here. Samurai is down a wheel. Voxel looks like it's looking pretty good. And I swear Bert is in the mix too. Is Bert part of this? Yeah. I yeah. can play too. I can play too. It seems like Bert's getting a little fed up with this action and he wants to get involved. Uh, it's going to get messy. You can tell when he goes red. Yeah, that is the kill mode of Bert. Looks like Voxel is dead. Nope, I spoke too soon. We've got a little bit of uh, teaming up action here on Project Liftoff. Probably a wise move. That is definitely the most devastating bot still functioning right now. Kyle, I called it early. Uh, Judge's Dream's weapon is still running. Can we I get a chant going for Bert? Bert! 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 Bert. Bert. <laughs> That's the end of the match. Wow. Okay, so this is an unsanctioned uh, match here, just for fun. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe we could hear from the audience. Who do you think won that one, audience? Was Bert? it? Oh yeah, was, was it, it Bert? Bert? Wow. Bert. Okay. All right. Unanimous audience decision for Bert. They clearly love the uh, house bot here. And uh, look at this. Bert is uh, helping clean up by pushing all the robots to the to the door. Okay. Heading over into cage one. Cage one is uh, still being loaded. Yeah, so we're loading in Shredded Bro and Polywog. Two very aggressive bots. That's going to be a very fun one to watch when these guys are all ready to go. Taping down the receiver right now, getting everything prepped. We see David Jin, the builder of Polywog, really uh, doing a last minute functional check. And uh, Shredded Bro now uh, releasing its weapon lock. They're going to close this box, lock it. We are about to see loser's bracket round six. Wow. You're These are two there. BattleBots captains, of course. Evan Arias drives Pain Train on BattleBots. And David Jin drives, uh, poly, um, drives Ribot on right. BattleBots. Team Ribot brings many bots to this field every single competition they qualified so seven, many of them Hollywog is kind five, of the crowning achievement four, here in Norwalk 3 2 1 fight robots fight oh, oh nasty Evan Arias oh. opting to run his uh his plow configuration on the front of Shredded Bro. Yeah, normally reserved for horizontal spinners. Interesting that he's running that here. So he's getting the pin right now, getting counted down. You're allowed to hold a pin for 10 seconds and then you have to let it go. Pins show the judges that you are getting control and aggression points over your opponent. It's a great way to uh, rack up points without damaging yourself or even your opponent very much. You can see that the weapon on Shredded Bro is still running, but uh, now inverted, it is bumping along the floor. Interesting choice going with that plow, Kyle. Yeah, not sure what the thought process was there. I know yeah. that, uh, that Ooh, Polywog is lower to the ground than Shredded Bro. Perhaps they were hoping that wedge would help feed them up into their weapon. Now David Jin is racking up control points here. And uh, it doesn't look like, oh, oh no. no, I see smoke from Shredded Bro. Yeah, not good. Not what you want to see at this point in the competition. Yet another yeah. pin from Polywog. Polywog, very destructive robot showing off their ability as a control bot for this match. Yeah, uh, with a four-wheeled versus a two-wheeled design, you just get better traction with the four-wheeled design. A lot better control as well. It's really going to come down to uh, just the strength of their uh, their drive motors as well. 
75 seconds left to go. It looks like uh, this is a very quiet match. Are either of these weapons still running? At this point, I'm not sure either of them want to run their weapon. I think Polywogs might be all the way down, and Shreddits just keeps grinding against the floor. Mm. And on that wedge, it looks like, too. It keeps hitting that as it spins around. I mean, Loser's bracket yeah. round six. One of these very talented builders will be going home in 50 seconds. Polywog is playing it smart. They, they've they already banked four or five pins. Um, and, and, you know, there's no reason to sacrifice uh, any more of your components, especially here in Loser's bracket round six. Yeah. Yeah. If the Show down, motion. Just save it. Save it. Evan Arias now twisting here in the corner. This is his last match of the season at Norwalk Havoc. So you notice that he is moving, but Show he's only motion. moving in one circle. That is not what we call translational movement. Knockout. So therefore, he is right. knocked out. Fantastic driving match there. Let's give a round of applause to Evan Arias uh, for an excellent season uh, with Shred It Bro. And uh, really absolutely love this robot, love this team. And uh, really cannot wait to see the improvements that you make to the robot in 2022. All right, uh, let's uh, go in and check in with Katie. Hello, Katie. Hi, guys. Emulsifier behind us here is actually using their uh, backup robot. Uh, they had to uh, put some forks on it to hopefully reach Jameson's Megatron. We know that Megatron was last with uh, the Disco Group, and they said it got one good hit, so they had some repairs to be done to that. So Emulsifier knows that Megatron's pretty bad, but it's also a little bit damaged back there. Interesting. Oh, I love the foam on this mini bot. Foam bot. Wow. Ready to go. Ready to go, phone bot. Okay, this is winner's bracket round five for 30 pound action. Emulsifier versus Megatron. Two of the uh, the biggest bots here in this competition. Yeah, both. James and Go is ready. Both really favored to win this 30 pound division. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. That is one. correct. Yeah, fight. It looks like Robots they are, uh, fight. Uh, kinetic energy absorbing material too. I don't even think it's metal. I think he's got some plastic up there, maybe some rubber. We'll have to ask him after this match. Not a bad idea, as much protection as you can get. Oh! Oh, oh! oh my goodness! Emulsifier really taking it to Megatron in this fight. Look at that, they've gotten around to the side of that front plow on Megatron. Oh no! Oh, we got a tap out and uh, Bots FC absolutely uh, celebrating here cage side. Wow. That was a huge knockout. match for them. Fast knockout there. That was impressive. Emulsifier winning round five of the winner's bracket, moving on to round six. So impressive. Holy cow. All right, so let's go over to Katie. Yeah, that was a huge win for you guys. <laughs> Quite the knockout. Was that the expectation first going into it that it'd be pretty lickety split? Not at all. We fought Megatron before and he kicked our butts. So we're glad that our changes actually worked for the better in this match. The last time we fought him, we only had one robot. This time we had three. Wow. Incredible. All right, so that really changes things up in yeah. the 30-pound division. So Megatron moves to the end of the loser's bracket in round seven. Uh, Emulsifier now sits in the winner's bracket waiting to see who it will be facing off against. Uh, we're going to still see. All right, so we're going to go back to Katie. It sounds like we, our technical difficulties have been figured out over there. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Maybe in a, maybe in a little bit we can actually get a, a snapshot of what's going on with Megatron, and how much work it's going to be to get that thing ready for yeah, uh, the next Yeah, that would be really good. Yeah. Now, uh, w no matter what happens next, Emulsifier has won either first place or second place. Correct. Because they've advanced to the finals. Yes. Now, uh, there are just a couple of robots that are left in the 30s that are still alive. Other Disco, Polyester, Stop Hitting Yourself, or Megatron. We may very well see a, uh, a rematch, Megatron versus Emulsifier. Now that gives Jameson Go maybe an hour to like think of a new strategy here against uh, against Emulsifier, but uh, yeah, if there's somebody back there who can do it, it's Jameson. Absolutely. So we're gonna see other Disco face off against Polyester next. The winner of that fight will go on to face Stop Hitting Yourself. We could have Multibot on Multibot action, which could be really fun. 
And then the winner of that match will have to go on and face Megatron, hopefully to score themselves a chance at the finals. Um, all of these bots are top-notch, and they've given us some great performances today. I cannot wait to see how that ends up. Uh, who, do you, who do you favor in this one, Chris? For 30s, Chris? I don't know. It's, it, it's too early to count Megatron out. You know, the loser's bracket, we're getting so close to the final stages of it. Uh, but, you know, there's Emulsifier is looking brutal. It's, I don't know. Chris? I wouldn't, I wouldn't put money on it. I'm ready to make a prediction. Okay. Okay. Let's hear it. All right. I think Stop Hitting Yourself advances and uh, defeats Megatron and then goes on to defeat Emulsifier. Wow. Oh gosh, that's like four fights in a row, though. I think that uh, I think that Stop Hitting Yourself really is my dark horse to win. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. All right. Uh, this hour of Norwalk Havoc action is brought to you by Mauser. Check out mauser.com for awesome technical content for engineering, plus the widest selection of new semiconductors and electronic components. Now, Brian, I uh, hate to tell you this, but um, I think it might be fun war time. Yeah. Uh, it's now, happening. Who who is who is thumb warring? Is it the two of you? Like what is? Oh wait, or your thumb is. He's injured. Damaged. I'm injured. I have a thumb Let injury. Let me inspect this thumb. I, I got glue on it. And oh that... my god, Chris. Okay, listen. Somebody get this man a band aid and like a little bit of neosporin. Let me see that. It's He's a, got glue on a, it. What are you, a thumb doctor? Dude, that's gross. They're thumb wars. There's no thumb triage. Uh, that's that is horrific, Chris. Well, Go get a Band-Aid, Chris. You're going to get that infected. No, he glued it up like a man. Leave him alone. That's fine. You, you put baseball? glue in there? Yeah, you put glue in cuts. Yeah. Like just regular glue. No, super glue. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. Should we talk to his fiance about this? Yeah, Lindsay, what do you think? Do you think Chris should go and get a Band-Aid? Or uh, are you okay with uh, your fiance losing his thumb? <laughs> no, I'm not okay with my fiance losing his thumb. Uh, very concerned about the glue. Uh, I did not know about that until just now. But <laughs> yeah, I'm in another room. What can I do? Um, but we do have some super chats. Uh, more people donated to the the thumb war fund. We're oh like well God. over a hundred dollars. We um, Five dollars <laughs> from Yo Robotics. Thumb. <laughs> Uh, $5 from Brenton Barber, uh, $20 from Alex Pezza, make it a three-way. We know we can't do that because of uh, Chris's glued thumb. And then uh, $5 from Caster Pezza, yeah, three-way. So all right, another all right. 50 bucks and you Pezzas. guys are leg wrestling. All right, all right, all right. No, stop, stop. <laughs> okay. I have a proposal. I have a proposal. Okay. What if left hands, three-way... That way, we don't have to worry about his damaged thumb. How would that work? I don't know, but the Pezza brothers want us to do it, and I think it's okay. No, no, you can't, because you only have one left hand, Kyle. Yeah. So do you. Okay, wait. How does this... Hold no. On. Okay. You, you, you lock... You can't lock thick fingers through. No, all right, we would Kyle, have to put I think all of it's our... you and me. All right, do you want to do right hand or left hand? Let's do right hand. Okay. All, all right. right. All right. I hate this. This judge. is the worst part of my entire year. It is. It yeah. really is. All right. Here, here's the thing. My thumb is massive, Kyle. I know. Yeah, I'm really at a disadvantage. It is what it is. Oh, my God. Brian Latimer, voice of God. He says that uh, we should pause because they're loading into cage three. Brian's all <laughs> about building the suspense. Listen, listen. Internet, I was ready to do it. A Brian Latimer showman. doesn't want us to do this. Okay, Woo! keep right. waiting. All right, there we go. We okay. were so close to having it happen. I'm, I'm really glad it isn't though. Okay, so wow. here we are. Okay, all right, listen. Uh, be upset at Brian, maybe, you know? Just set, send him comments in the chat. All right, so we're in 12-pound action. This is match 44 in the 12-pound division. Whittle by Whittle will be going up against Drunken Peasant. Drunken Peasant really had a lot of damage in their last fight. Let's see how well they did in the pits. This late in the competition, a lot of the competition actually happens back in the pits. This is loser's bracket round five. This will be the last match of the year for one of these robots. Eight, seven, six, five... Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Oh, good drifting speed right out of the blue square from Whittle by Whittle. 
which brings it straight to Drunken Peasant. This is what you need to do. You need to try and stop that egg beater drum on Drunken Peasant. But it looks like Drunken Peasant is able to consistently get under Whittle by Whittle. That is not what you want to see if you are Bryson Kaskis. No, that is a massive disadvantage in this fight. Oh, wow. Dangerously close to that back wheel. Good pop in the air from Junkin Presence on Whittle by Whittle, consistently getting under Bryce. Bryce is gyroing so much that he's giving uh, these openings, uh, opening up these openings here for Junkin Peasant. Incredible. This is really classic Drunken oh. Peasant. This is a lot of the same type of moves that you saw, these small controlled movements when they uh, got second place in Motorama back in 2020. Whittle by Whittle, uh, you know, able to self right, but it's not that fast. Drunken Peasant capitalizing on all of that downtime. Is Bryce Yankaskis able to spin up that weapon and score some damage points here? I'm sure that he'd like to. It feels like uh, Whittle by Whittle is moving in slow motion at this point in the fight. But Drunken Peasant looks like uh, one half of its drive might be locked. Look at this. And that top plate's got uh, awful weeble wobble to it, doesn't it? Yeah, I can see through the back of the robot, Kyle. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an unpleasant place to be. Oh my god! This robot is coming apart in real time. 65 seconds left in this match. Looks and like the... it's gaining a little bit more mobility out of those wheels, but now has the weapon gone down? Nope, there's the weapon. All right. Oh, slow motion tap from Whittle by Whittle there. Is Did that you see a that? pin? I guess that's a yeah, pin that's like from a Whittle pin by Whittle. Whittle. It's a little grip. <laughs> wow, Bryce Yankaskis uh, pushing a Drunken Peasant back into the pink square. Making these judges work for their money here today. They've got, uh, they're going to have to make some decisions, it seems like. Wait, Kyle, you're getting paid? No, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's a figure of speech. <laughs> All right, yeah, 30 seconds left here in this fight. And the weapon on Drunken Peasant is down. The weapon on Whittle by Whittle uh, has not spun up, but that articulated arm is working. 15 seconds left here. This was an amazing match. 10, 9, 8, 7, oh, that weapon firing 6, up. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That there's the end of this fight. Turn off your weapon and drive to the door if you can. This one goes to the judges. Let's see what our judge Oof. friends have to say about this match. All right. Uh, as they deliberate, what were your thoughts on this fight, uh, Chris? It, okay, so uh, Drunken Peasant did a great job getting under the other bot. It did a great job of using its gyro to spin around and get opportunities to deliver hits. You know, uh, but but it really came down to almost a war of attrition there within the box. Uh, both bots sustained tons of damage. Um, you know, it's really going to come down to, I th think, maybe aggression and control. It's, it's kind of a toss up there, I think, in the in the in the damage department. Hmm. Interesting. What do you think, Kyle? Uh, if I had to give it a judge, I'd have to give it to Drunken Peasant just because of their, their display throughout the match. But man, at the end there, it really was looking a little right. bit more whittle by whittle. Let's All go right. to our judge friends now. Let's see what they have to say. How are you guys? Oh my God, Matt's Burke. I yeah, love it. Good. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this little uh, narwhal here. Oh, it's a oh, unanimous wow. judge's yeah, decision. Matt. All the categories were really close yeah. Yeah. across the board. The the damage, control, the aggression, they were all right there in each category. One little nick here or there might have swung a category. Um, I, overall, I thought Drunken Peasant was the slightly more aggressive. Um, seemed like uh, Whittle by Whittle was just struggling to really get a good grasp on the match. And he got one great pin there at the very end, but uh, couldn't really bring the saw down and do the damage there that they uh, you know, if they'd have been able to land a solid blow there with the saw, that may have been enough to, to take it. But um, just too little too late, I, I felt. Interesting. Mm -hmm. 
All right. All right. Thank you so much. We're going to go over to Katie, who's got an interview lined up for us. Katie, where are you at? Uh, right here with Soul, and I got to think that luck is on his side. Little by little, you're defeated. <laughs> yeah, luck is on your side. First, taking it back, you had that fire, but it didn't blow up. So I have like some security. It's up to couple. So if weapons got on fire, like it happened, it doesn't affect control or drive. Uh, but he beat us like in the shaft and in this part of the frame and it's pretty difficult to to fix this so we need to work again with that and we only have one spare for the speed controller and um, i think to to uh, to work on this <laughs> that's where that luck is going to be needed but you used a little of that luck in that battle as well there was a little con aggression and there was some control that you had as well well yeah uh, i think that i have the with the weapon running i can keep hitting uh, and luck maybe help me in the next round <laughs> <laughs> we're going to keep crossing our fingers for it, guys but i really want to bring up the fact that all of y'all are in the holiday spirit Sorry, Chris. Yeah, it's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> also in Mexico, there is Christmas. We are very, very, a lot of parties are there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Feliz well, Navidad, Sol. I love it. <laughs> Wait, did <laughs> I just step right over of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. Sorry about <laughs> well, that, thank Kate. you. It's okay. Feliz Navidad to everybody. And, uh, and congratulations on that as well. We'll see if that luck keeps on your side. <laughs> All right. I love that, that sweater. What are, are those like half-eaten donuts? I think yeah, that's I, exactly what that was. Soul's got to go on to face Disco next. He's feeling the Christmas spirit right now, but man, that's going to be a tough matchup for him, especially if he's yeah. needing some spares on the speed controllers. Whew. Yeah. I uh, I feel bad for him in that particular situation. Uh, all right, so the in this bracket, we also have Promhita versus Huge coming up next after that, and uh, we're also going to have the uh, winner's bracket, Hot Leaf Juice against Bobby. Um, I'm really looking forward to that one as well. 12-pound division turning out to be a lot of fun in the finals here at Norwalk Havoc. All right. Uh, let's go back over to Lindsay. Lindsay, do you think it's time? What do you say? I think it's time for the chat to be really, really happy. Uh, before we do, okay. I want to read <laughs> one last... <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, Lindsay. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not getting off the hook Make that easy. Make him wait for it. It's Make a super wait. chat about the thumb war. Oh, no. And this is, again, from Ian over in the UK. Uh, and Ian says it's nearly 3 a.m. It's probably well past 3 a.m. where he is now. Uh, and I'm here watching robots with googly eyes fight live with demands for a thumb war. <laughs> this is it. This is my life now. This is all of our lives, Ian, oh, and yeah. we love it. Ian, yeah, okay. All right, this is the worst thing that we ever do. I, I mean, know. Like, I don't know why they keep making it's us It's going to be $500 now. This is the last thumb war that we ever do, okay? Ready? I, I just heard permission over, over the headset. Brian says do Brian it. Brian has given it the official green, uh, green thumb. Better do Green it now light. before the other bots load in. Okay. So let's go. Let's All go. Right. Let's go. Ready? All right. What What are the rules, Kyle? One, are, two, are we, three, are we doing four. them in the air or are we on the? Yeah, in the, t in the yeah. air, of course. Yeah. yeah. Right? So you guys got to just like look at the camera. You got to go above. Uh, don't uh, touch golden bread. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Don't touch golden bread without your gloves on. Ready? Okay. One, One two, two, three, four. four. I, I declare, declare a thumb war. war. Okay. God. <laughs> Listen here. Oh my God! Okay, oh. my my thumb is too wet. It's I so can't. slippery. I know. Kyle is on the offense okay. here. Listen, <laughs> Kyle. Kyle. Luke, Luke, Luke has a lot of elbow oh, action. No. A lot of elbow action. <laughs> okay, listen. I, uh, no. My thumb Luke, is so keep slippery. Keep the elbow locked. You're so slippery. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna let you have Boom, it. Boom, Kyle! <laughs> yes! <laughs> 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 wow. Oh, no. By the way, this is the guy who said he didn't want to do that and that he hates this. <laughs> and that's how he reacts to winning. So take that as you will. I don't like this side of me, Kyle. This is, <laughs> this is not a side Why do you make me do this? All right, we're going to go over to Cage 3 now. Let's get back to the actual <sighs> engineering, the robot combat, not the thumb combat. No one's actually here for that. That's going to make the highlight reel. I God, I hope not. <laughs> 
Polyester, other disco. Oh my goodness, this is going to be so much fun. All right, so 30 pound robot fighting action. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Polyester is a multi bot, two 19 pound bots that are scaled up versions of three pounds from Team Ribot. Silk and uh, oh. Polywog. Oh! In this case, they're called Polly and Esther. And Other Disco is a scaled up version of Disco, driven by Don Dorfler. And uh, Disco hits hard, but right now they are not where they want to be. Back up onto their weapon mounts and uh, unable to move. Those wheels are not making contact with the floor. They could get counted out here. They do have one save from Fluffy that they have not taken advantage of yet. But if you look, Polywog intel or Polly intelligently sat themselves right in front of another disco. That was, that was clever. That was a yeah. pretty clever so tactic. So when Fluffy came in to self-right them, they landed right on top of the weapon of Polly. Very smart, very smart. So that is knockout. the one on stick, and that is a knockout. Okay. Wow. Multibots dominating in the 30-pound division today. You know, there is a lot of conversations about whether or not multibots are actually uh, a good idea, a good design concept, and they're really proving their worth in the 30-pound division right yeah. now. What do you mean uh, a good design concept, Kyle? Of course it's a good design concept. They're winning. I they, mean, look at all these multibots uh, that are yeah. here well, this I think late what he in the meant bracket. Was at, at heavyweight uh, weight classes, it's, it doesn't translate upwards that well. Yeah, but I think here oh. at Norwalk, you get additional oh. weight bonus that really does make the multibots worth it. You know what I mean? Because a 19-pound robot can can kind of hold its own against a 30-pound robot. That's not too far off. It's not crazy. It's not like trying to send a 15-pound ro robot up okay. against them. All right. Uh, we're going to go over to Katie. She is uh, there with Matt Boris and Emulsifier. Yeah, just to circle back from that one interview that we were having, and, you know, the question was, what were you guys, what was the top of that? It was a replacement bot, but it was your secondary, but it had some pink duct tape and some other things on it. Yeah, what Gap was tape. that? We, uh, we have this thicker top plate specifically for Megatron, so we put that on, and then we put some thick pieces of UHMW taped on top of it. It was good for one hit, basically, and uh, luckily it never got to that point, so... What does that really mean moving forward for you guys? Well, we don't know who we're fighting yet. Um, there's still some matches that have to play out, but we've got both robots working in good condition. So depending on who we fight, we'll add whatever attachments we need to for the finals. And, and, and as you're looking across the pit, seeing who's still here, who is the biggest, toughest competition for you? <laughs> uh, if you asked me that 10 minutes ago, I would have said Megatron for sure. And he probably still is. I'm, he could easily come back through, and we might have to fight him again. So that's probably my answer. Still Megatron. Oh, all right. Well, we will see. Well, we're going to be staying tuned to that. And at least you still have your, your piece that's good just for Megatron. Wow. The interesting thing about this part of the bracket is we're going to see two multibots going up against each other. Stop hitting yourself versus Polyester. Oh. Um, and the winner of that match will have to go on and face Megatron. Megatron has been able to take out multibots in the past. It's going to be a tall order. These are two very talented multibot teams. Wow. Little multibot on multibot action. Yeah, I've Both been waiting of them, to see that. They're all 19 pounds. Yeah. Interesting. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's check in with Lindsay. Lindsay, how are things going back there in uh, social media land? So we, we have a question about the multibot, uh, basically, weight bonus. And this question comes from Jake Ewart, who oh. we know from Hydra, from BattleBots. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you may have heard of him. Uh, so what's the multibot bonus? And I imagine that is per class. It, it probably varies. Do you think Jake is thinking about building a multibot and bringing it here? I think Jake likes to know the rules so he can exploit them as well as possible. <laughs> so, yeah, that might have some... The Ewerts are like lawyers when it comes to the they rules. Really, they always have been. That's kind of their brand, and yeah. they really stick to it. Um, All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Jake a little bit of a device if he wants to fully exploit this multibot bonus. Okay. Yeah. You build a multi-bot in the 30-pounders, you can get two 19-pound robots in Correct. there. Correct. But make build them a shufflers. little mini-bot. Ooh. Okay? Then you, you get, get a little bit of extra weight. That's right. You make them shufflers, 
Now you're running two 30-pounders against one 30-pounder. <laughs> okay? I think it's like 28 and 28 or something <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but you run like He's a 100-gram like yeah. like mini bots. But, you know, the— And then put bike racks on both of them, and uh, you're going to be yeah. undefeated. And, and you will make everyone very angry with you, Listen, and uh, we will love that. it. Yeah, okay? it's going to be great. All right, uh, looks like we have loaded into the big box. Huge versus Promida. 12 pound action right now, although you could not, you would be, uh, you would not feel wrong to think that you're looking at a 30 pound bot when you look at huge. It takes up so much space in this arena. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, Nida, robots, fight. This competition. Yeah, but you can hear it. It's like a jet engine in there with Promhita's weapon. Oh, oh, a huge concussive hit right onto the weapon. Kicking huge again. That's two hits in a row. Loser's bracket round six here. Yeah, very impressive work. Promhita is uh, just going straight weapon on weapon. Interesting tactic. But it sounds like the weapon on Promhita is down. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a jet engine in there anymore. All you can Not hear is all. that steady hum of huge. Now, without a weapon, possibly, Promhita uh, now needs to rack up control points. Yeah, and avoid that bar as much as humanly possible. Yeah, the, the big the big risk here is that... Oh, oh, oh here we go. That huge cuts into something important and kills the drive on Pramhita. Oh, wow. Huge is... Uh, huge just looking at him with those evil eyes, letting him know he could. Knock he could out. end this wow. fight. All right. Okay. All right, so I wanted Huge to win this match. The only reason is is because this makes it actually possible that we could have a Huge versus Bobby match in the future, and that's really <laughs> all I want out of this division. All right, how many hats do you think it's going to, uh, to Fluffy? Fluffy's going to need to, uh, you know, appear in that match. What do you say, four? I'd say at least four hats, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so Huge moves on. They will face the winner of Disco versus Drunken Peasant. Um, and then they're basically in losers round seven, the semifinals of that bracket. So they will go on to face the winner of Hot Leaf Juice or Bobby for the finals. So that's what I'm hoping for, right? If we can get huge through this next round, um, beating either Disco or Drunken Peasant, and then we could very possibly get a Bobby huge match for the final. Huge. Who wouldn't want that? Huge match for the huge. final. Who would want that? Bobby huge match for the final. Yeah. Wow. Could well, be I, fun. I don't know. I I would not bet against Hot Leaf Juice. No, you should never bet against no. Hot Leaf Juice. It's a terrible idea to bet against Hot Leaf Juice, especially against a big-wheeled robot. But I'm saying it's there's a chance. Ask Gil. I mean, how many losses has Hot Leaf Juice had this year? Three, maybe? Four? Yeah, not. I don't think four. They fought probably 20-ish matches. Yeah. Maybe three? Losses? Yeah. Listen, they are taking home this golden bread. 100%. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. All right. Bold statement. Listen, All right. I, I, I feel strongly about this. I don't, I don't think that this current field of robots can defeat Hot Leaf Juice. So strange, but you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. They, they really have been dominating these tournaments. Yeah. Um, you know, anything can happen, especially at this weight class, especially this early in this weight class's development here at Norwalk. But uh, I, I love how people say anything can happen. We've never seen Hot Leaf Juice lose its weapon ever. True. We've never seen it lose its drive ever. True. What do you mean anything can happen? That is a bulletproof robot. We've seen we've seen wheels get eaten up a little bit before. It's built by one of the smartest uh, robot builders in the uh, in the field. Yeah, she's pretty incredible, and driven by one of the best drivers in the field. Yeah. And the design is, like, really balanced as well. Yeah. And that whole front is absolutely tough. Yeah, it's a billet of aluminum, a Kyle, solid it's brick. it's unbeatable. All right. Uh, we are going to go to Katie. Uh, she's talking to uh, Don from Huge. That's right. And the one word these two brothers use to describe today is... Chaotic. <laughs> and haven't eaten yet, so... 
Oh, Give somebody the guys feed some this almond butter or something around here. You haven't eaten yet. It's chaotic. What's been the biggest stressors for both of you? There's just been a lot of matches and a lot of adversity we had to go through. So that's pretty much it for us. Yeah, a lot of good matches. Things break all the time. Not enough time to fix them. <laughs> that's, that's what it seems. But one thing that you guys have as a benefit is you have two of your best buds uh, who are here helping you out at one point in time. They were the ones, I want to use say the word wrenching on, <laughs> on you, and you guys weren't there, and they just fully support what you guys are doing in this adventure you're on. you have anything to say to them? Yeah, no, for us two working on four robots, it's hard. So Ryan and Stanley have helped us tremendously. You know, the, anything we ask them to do, they do it. And, you know, we, we think them as dear friends to us, and they always will be. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don Mic Dorfler. drop on that one. Stanley, Ryan, we're thinking of you in that regard. And is there anything now that you guys are going to be focusing on here as we finish out the finals? Um, just trying to win first place with one of the 12-pounders. That's what we're still in, so we're still trying to fight for that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> A man of many words. <laughs> There you have it. This is huge. Don Dorfler. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and offer this to both the Dorfler brothers. We do have two apple cider donuts up here at the desk. Yes. If you want to come by and grab some just so you get some food in your yeah. system, they'll be right here. Just just come on by. Yeah. Please. Brought to, uh, brought to us by Lindsay Yuriko, who uh, drove here all the way from uh, Lake George. That's right. Brought uh, apple cider donuts, which is, you know, upstate New York uh, staple. Where are the Dorflers? They need some sugar. Yeah, get those boys some sugar and some carbs. Yeah. All right, so let's go over and talk to our friend Lindsay. Lindsay, what's going on in the chat? All right, so uh, I would like to point out that actually Jonathan Schultz pointed this out, but Huge has beaten Hot Leaf Juice this year just a couple months Ooh. ago. Oh. So it's not unprecedented. Jonathan Schultz stirring the pot. I love it. <laughs> Uh, I do have a question, though, from YouTube, and this okay. one is from user Divine Steel. And I know we kind of asked the, this in different ways throughout the night, but are there any plans to uh, expand to more weight classes in the future? Maybe more than 30 pounds? I just I want to say real quick, Divine Steel, it sounds like a, a pseudonym for like a romance author. What do you think? <laughs> you know? That's not where my head went, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, sure. oh, you know, this is the latest book in the Divine Steel series, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> yeah. think I think if uh, if Norwalk does expand in any other weight classes, we're going up. We're going just straight into romance novels next. Is that right? I meant, I meant higher. Oh, oh, going up weight classes. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Yeah, now there, there has been some talk about uh, having other competitions, having some junk bot competitions, having some other yeah. competitions out there. Okay. Uh, maybe some school competitions where we could throw some one-pounders around. So different but, formats. But the official competition here, if it does go, if we do add anything on, we're going to add, add to those weight, bo uh, weight classes. We're not going to go down. All right. Good question, Divine Steel. Really looking forward to reading the latest draft. Okay. On over to uh, Cage 3, we've got Bobby versus Hot Leaf Juice. This is the one that we've oh, been boy. speculating about. I am very excited about seeing the outcome of this match. Now, Bobby has lost to Hot Leaf Juice twice this year. Both times were by decision. This is, however, a <laughs> zombie pirate, Bobby. So uh, who knows how that's going to go. Seven, six. Five, now, interestingly, four, Hot Leaf three, Juice is starting in its two, undercutter position. One, I was expecting fight, it to go as yeah. an overcutter. Yeah. It's an overhead uh, uh, spinner. Interesting choice. Was that an error? I don't think it was an error. Perhaps the idea is to send that billet right into the weapon of Bobby to try to break oh, the weapon. Interesting. Now, one of the big things that you're looking for is blue foam being sprayed around inside of the box. That's how you know that Hot Leaf Juice is executing its strategy here, cutting apart the wheels on Bobby. Similarly, if you see pieces of black and blue rubber spread around the box, those are the wheels of Hot Leaf Juice getting shredded apart and launched all over the box. Both of these weapons are pretty optimized for taking the wheels off of the other bot. And that seems to be the strategy both these bots are working on right now. Now, Gil gave us a really good little factoid there. Uh, these robots have fought each other twice before in July, and Hot Leaf Juice won by knockout both times. Let's see if uh, they can do it here again. You can hear that, uh, that cutting sound. It sounds like uh, you're cutting into a pool noodle, and that is, uh, that is Hot Leaf Juice taking apart Bobby's wheels. 
decision both times, not knockout. Oh, by decision. Correct. Oh, okay. Well, it was much closer than I thought. Yeah. Okay. Wow, you Coming see up. big shower of sparks, weapon on weapon. That means that Bobby's uh, blade has now reached the floor. Yeah, unless it's perfectly straight up and down, but you can see that stick from Bobby that's up in the air. That means that weapon's gonna be touching the floor pretty often as Bobby lurches forward. The angle of that weapon's gonna face downwards and grind against the plywood and the bondo. Hotly Q doing a great job thus far of keeping that big That impact plate. sent them all the way across the arena, though. Bobby's weapon is just brutal when it gets a good hit. Oh, oh no! Oh, that's a big chunk. Yeah, that's, oh, that's they are losing that wheel on the right-hand side of Bobby. It's way more phone than Bobby wanted to lose. And uh, grinding against the floor like that doesn't stop the weapon, but it certainly does slow down the force that it can pre uh, get, it can gen uh, generate. Yeah, look at this. Hot Leaf Juice is looking absolutely unscathed. And Bobby is looking sad. Pirate Bobby, no! Essentially, this is like trying to uh, hit the gas with the brakes <laughs> on. Every single time Bobby spins up that weapon grinding on oh, the floor. Oh, and there goes the left wheel, Kyle. Yeah, it's just getting smaller and smaller. This is winner's bracket round five. I feel like I am, I'm getting July 2021 deja vu here. Very similar. All right, Ten now here you go. Left. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. That's the end of this fight. This goes wow. to the judges. Wow. wow. Well, well, that was a match, and that is a match that happened. And it's going to the judges, and I Kyle, will say. Kyle, listen. I said that the drive was going to be bulletproof. The weapon was going to be bulletproof. Hot Leaf Juice, unbeatable in this bracket. Uh, you know, bold words, but okay, okay. Now, what I will say is Bobby now goes down to, or Bobby is, uh, if, assuming the judges go the way they think they will, he's going to still have a chance of facing huge in this competition, which makes me happy. All right. Oh, that's right. We've got uh, the pirate. The hook. The pirate hook. All right. Oh, Matt's but there Burke, was no, you know? there was no, uh, there was no pirate advantage given to Bobby by Matt Spurk. You could see that there. Yeah. Wow. More of a guideline than an actual rule. Oh, <laughs> of course, of course. Oh. So unanimous decision for Hot Leaf Juice. They are now sitting proud on top of the winner's bracket, waiting to see who they will be facing in the final. Bobby sitting there in round eight of the loser's bracket, trying to see who they will face in the final. That means there is a very good chance we will get Huge versus Bobby today in this next match, or in the match after the next one here. Um, so Disco is going to face Drunken Peasant in this bracket next. Let's go over to Katie, who's got an interview for us. We're here with uh, Jonathan and Bobby, and the one problem with Bobby having some sort of look that he looks like something that we all can relate to, like a human or something, is you actually get sad when he loses. <laughs> how, do you do, how do you deal with that? Sad. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> you said you have a lot of work to do. You could still recover at this point in time. What What's this going to take? Uh, pretty much all my spares, I think. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he really took that one apart. Okay, well, we'll let you get back to it. On a scale of one to ten, you think you can uh, you can take it down? I think you still have huge ahead of you. Take what? Take it down with huge. Uh, that's gonna be tough. <laughs> we'll see. It's going to be tough, and there's some sadness right now, but Jonathan can probably turn this around. <laughs> Best of luck. All right, <laughs> Bobby's face, that sad little face. Just, uh, you know, getting his face ripped apart, his, his legs ripped off. That is... Uh, Heartbreaking. I love Bobby. Yeah, I yeah. do too. I will say I love the similarities between Bobby and Jonathan in the sense that they can both express so much with with so little words. <laughs> yeah. You know, just just so much uh, right, just with yeah. their facial expressions. Just their their just absolutely dead affect. You know. <laughs> yeah, but you can see what's boiling underneath. Oh, we we got a cake. Oh my God. Austin brought us a delicious cake of uh, blue okay. foamy goodness. 
All right, these wheels are so much thicker than they look yeah. on on camera. Yeah, it's like a cheeseburger thickness. It is. It's a big old cheeseburger, yeah, Kyle. All for right, sure. Here. There you go. Yeah. Can take I take a piece there? Here All we right, go. I'll take a chunk. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Now, are you sure that Jonathan doesn't need these? I mean, should we return these back into the pits? Well, perhaps? do you, uh, if he wants to bring us some glue, we could just put these back tape. together for him while we're yeah. sitting here. Yeah. Look at this. This is uh, so much damage. And you know, like this is this is really the only way to kill Bobby. You can't kill uh, Bobby's weapon, but you can eat away at this foam if you have a strong enough robot. And uh, this is listen. I should probably put my mask on. If I breathe any of this in, I'm gonna shorten my life. Yeah, it's probably life. not gonna be that great for you. If you uh, look at the rings, you can see exactly how old Bobby is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bobby's uh, 200 years old. Yeah, some problem here. <laughs> My goodness. Okay. All right. I'm going to give this to somebody. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Thank you so much. Wow. Uh, that was a nice dis the, like uh, little display for us to show. I didn't even realize how thick those wheels are on Bobby. That's that's pretty chonky. Yeah, it's a chonky wheel. That's like nice. That. that was nice. Yeah. All right. So that's our 12-pound division. It's shaping up pretty interestingly. We're going to have Disco versus Drunken Peasant. That'll be the last match in round six of the loser's bracket. After that, we're going to see the winner of that fight face face huge. And the winner of that fight will then have to go on to face Bobby. And uh, that will then lead us right into our final up against Hot Leaf Juice, who just, you know, probably has to change out the batteries and hang out. Yeah for the next hour or so. So that's going to be fun for them. Oh, it's going to be more than an hour, Kyle. Yeah, probably. All right, here's the thing. Uh, Hot Leaf Juice has advanced to the finals. That means no matter what happens, uh, Lucy Dew and uh, David Jin will be going home with either $4,000 or $12,000. That's right. Um, and uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm calling it now. They're going to be taking home the Golden Brett. Okay, uh, looks like we are loading into box three. This is Drunken Peasant versus Disco. Now, as we heard from Soul after his last fight, he is running low on spares. He is running low on parts, and it's going to take him a lot of luck to even get the bot functional for this fight against Disco. Let's see how well he did. He's smiling. Yeah, he's all smiles. He's all smiles. He's having a great time. I gotta say though, I don't know what that means with Soul. You know what I mean? He seems to be smiling when he wins, smiling when he loses. He's just having a good time out here. Now you see that he made his weapon safe and he was checking here some electronics. Now he wants to turn on the robot here. Yep, checking his drive. Sounds like uh, maybe not everything was uh, exactly right out of the box here. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard for it to be right out of the box at this point in the competition. Look at you that thing. You need a little bit of duct tape on the top. It is literally held together by Gorilla Tape, yeah. Been there. <laughs> All right, removing that uh, that weapon lock. And uh, his Minibot driver collecting all of the transmitters. And uh, they're going to close this cage and lock it. There is no impact rating for Gorilla Tape, really, but robot builders have a pretty good idea. Loser's bracket round six, another do or die match for Drunken Peasant. Now, will our friends from Mexico stay alive for one more round? Or will uh, Don Dorfler, the Dorfler, bro the Dorfler brothers, send home uh, these uh, Mexican competitors here early? So these are two different styles of vertical spinner. We've got uh, Disco with their disc spinner. They can pack all that energy into a tight little package. And Drunken Peasant, with their egg beater spinner, what that does is it really delivers all of that energy to the exterior side Eight, of that spin. Seven, six, uh, delivering the maximum five, amount of force to four, that end of, three, the, of the impact. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. The sheer amount of duct tape on the top of Drunken Peasant is concerning, Kyle. I agree. Oh. And what was that? I don't know. Is that a wheel from off of the minibot? It yes. was. Yeah, that's exactly what that was. So Disco, obviously the most mobile bot in the arena right now, really just uh, taking full control. Drunken Peasant able to spin in circles, so that's what they're going to do. They seem to have lost that left side of their drivetrain. It also looks like Drunken Peasant's weapon is down. Oh, I hear tap, tap out. out. Wow. Ooh, All that right. That was a fast tap out from Drunken Peasant. This will be uh, Seoul's last match of the season here at Norwalk Havoc. I want to thank Soul and uh, and Soul's friends for coming all the way here from Mexico City. 
Uh, they are our, uh, among our favorite competitors uh, that we see every single time, and we really hope that they uh, make the trip out to uh, Norwalk, Connecticut again in 2022. Now, this is the interesting thing. Now that Disco advances, it is going to advance to fight its fellow team member in huge. That's right. What happens there? Do well, they forfeit a match? They, do they could. Do they automatically disqualify one of their robots? Which uh, robot would you want to see advance to fight Bobby? Yeah, that's a hard one. I mean, um, I'd now say— Now, remember, if you even defeat Bobby, now you've got to go and defeat Hot Leaf Juice. Yeah, and that's the difficult thing, right? Yeah. Because really, I think Disco is better suited to face Hot Leaf Juice. But if we're talking about Bobby, the better bot to face them is definitely huge. So mm. it's a tough choice for them if they are going to do the forfeit. Personally, I think they should just send it. One no, Dorfler drives one that. bot, and the other Dorfler drives the other. We see where it goes. That's Kyle, what's more fun for you me. You're insane. No, okay. that's more fun. That's Why a good would time. you do You're going to destroy both your I'm robots, and you're going to fix them. I'm not here to watch people forfeit their robots. No, I'm no, here to no. watch Dorflers, people fight their robots. listen to me, okay? It's listen, okay to forfeit. Come get some donuts. Come get some donuts, Dorflers, and fight your robots. That's what we all want to see. That's what we're here for. No, no. All right, I'm gonna make a. Uh, I'm. I'm going to uh, to make a suggestion here. If I was the Dorflers, okay. okay? I would uh, eliminate Disco, and I would keep Huge. See if Huge will go up against Bobby, and I feel like Huge is really your your best bet against Hot Leaf Juice. I just don't think so. Really? Yeah. Attacking the top of that robot. What are you gonna do? You're gonna hit that aluminum. You're gonna hit that billet on Disco. Really? That billet is is bulletproof. There's no way you're gonna get through that. With disco, billet. you at least have a chance to get around to the side, perhaps rip some wheels off, perhaps do you're some damage. You're gonna get around to the side of David Jin now. You could you could try. You have a better chance with a bot that's more mobile. Wow. I love it when you two bicker. <laughs> it is late in the night, I Kyle. It. I can tell that you've uh, you woke up this morning at 4 a.m. because you are not making sense. Okay. Huge is the best robot to fight both of these opponents. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I know mean, if that's the case. Undercutters and huge, that's a tough one. You know what I mean? It's a really tough one. That chopping the wheels out from under huge is a great way to end their day, just like it is a great way so to end It so rarely their day. happens. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah, but a vertical? You think a vertical oh. is going to do well against... Oh, oh wow. Oh, yeah, they're throwing oh. the computer equipment into the 30-pound box oh, now. Oh, my God. This is like the least ethical thing that we do uh, at Norwalk Havoc, <laughs> like legitimately. I love that there is actually a ranking in your head of the uh, the least ethical things that we yeah. do here at Norwalk yeah. Havoc. Yeah. So Most what do you what least. do you find so unethical about this particular practice? Okay. All right. Loading into the big box right now is uh, <laughs> Buffy. Are we, yeah, are we're we calling it, it Buffy? Buffy. It is Buffy. Okay. It is the buffing uh, robot with the Crocs sandals on it. This is an abomination. I hate it. Should not have shown up. Uh, who built this? We, we still don't know. It was, it was just dropped off on the Norwalk doorstep. That's what Ed said. This is a sketchy. Kill I, me. <laughs> Kill me. I don't like it. Yeah. All right? There's I, way too many eyes on this thing. Uh, the, okay. we, got some, we got some zip tie tie downs for that weapon there. I oh, like that. Oh, but I see Casey Jermiason and her husband, Casey Jermiason, loading in rip and tear. Whoa, what just happened uh -oh. there? Oh, no. Oh, boy. Wow, that was almost fatal. Uh, you okay there, Casey? Uh, they've, they've loaded in a, uh, a fire breather into their robot. Let's see here. Wow. I'm very interested to see what the chat has to say about that. Yeah. Okay. That's true. Wow, look at this. Okay. We've got a bunch of, uh, of robots here. And what is that? What is that? That would be, uh, I believe what? that would be some sort of paint thinner. Is that flammable, Kyle? Uh, I don't yes. know that much about household you don't, cleaners. You don't put anything in that metal can that isn't flammable, right? You either put mineral spirits, paint thinner. What? Yeah, there's there's nothing you put in that, that kind of metal can that's not flammable. Why do we do these things, Kyle? Acetone could be acetone. Thank you for wiping that up off the floor. I don't know how much help that's going to be, but whatever. All right, we've loaded a bunch of uh, dead laptops into uh, the box as well, and I guess we're going to destroy them. 
This yeah. is one of the least ethical things we do because there's all sorts of weird chemicals inside of these laptops. I just have to quote Jake Ewert from the chat. Don't tase me, bro. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say this, this is a great idea. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's all an right. idea. It's an idea. We've got Rip and Tear. I believe Rip has now been outfitted with a flamethrower. You know what's definitely kind of not flammable at all is that foam on tear. It'll be yeah, fine. The foam is flammable. That buffing mechanism is flammable. I guess fight robots fight. What's the worst that could happen? What's There's the so many yeah. worst things that could happen. So the taser is now going off on tear. We're going to see if we can see any fire. There's... Oh, oh there it is. No! Oh, oh, wow. Why, why is this happening? What is happening right now? All right. And then Buffy's, Tear is now on fire. Buffy is now getting up to speed, but you can see the flame on that disc. Wow. And yeah, there you go. The foam on Tear is uh, a flame. Buffy wow. is now buffing Fluffy. <laughs> wow! Flame, it's a little flame buffing on uh, on Fluffy there. And Why that, are we okay with this, Kyle? I, I don't, I'm not. I don't know about you. Now, Ed did tell us that, uh, that Fluffy had some scratches that they were hoping to uh, buff out uh, safely from a distance and via remote control. Now, is that flames off of the front of Buffy? Yeah, that's exactly what that is. That is the flaming back. Yeah, see what? how that every single time that sparks? Wow. So, yeah, there's enough. <laughs> oh, gosh. Wow. Yeah, oh, uh, so you can see the back of that rag on Buffy still set aflame. Kids, don't don't try this at home. Yeah, yeah. You can try this at home if Austin McCord uh, builds you a full 30-pound robot box. Uh, yeah, but this is not safe at all. I don't even know if this is safe for me to watch, Kyle. Uh, this is pretty safe to watch, but yeah, don't try this at home. That's the graphic that we see up there. I think that's good advice. The, the white flag of surrender on Buffy there. He's not here to fight. He's here to buff Fluffy. Wow. I do I do not understand the Crocs armor. Oh, no. Don't. Oh! Okay, yeah. That's uh, that's just flames from Buffy uh, losing its, uh, its buffer. What? Oh! There we go. That spin up actually added a lot more heat and a lot more oxygen to that flame. All right, we've got 30 seconds left in this match. I could hear that cage side. Wow. Uh, we have a request for an encore, which should automatically. Be encore? Yes, yes, we what? should. What? Which automatically right. adds 30 seconds to any fight. Let's so... ask the audience do you want an encore? All right, let's add 30 seconds to the clock here. Uh, yeah, this is your uh, are you not entertained moment right there. All right, I'm going to say it. Buffy, surprisingly effective. Maybe we should see a Buffy robot here. Yeah, how much does Buffy weigh? How much does Buffy cost, Kyle? Uh, this is a $7 robot, Kyle. No, Crocs are more than $7. Come on. Those aren't even real Crocs. Those are knockoff Crocs, oh, Kyle. Oh, you're right. They're 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 Crocoffs. <laughs> Crocoffs. Yes. <laughs> All right. Are we calling this What what is happening here? Uh Yeah, this whole fight is a Croc. I I think that is uh we just heard that from Control and I have to agree a thousand percent. Look at all the googly eyes on Buffy there. Wow. All right, so there we knockout. go. That's the end. <laughs> oh. It is declared a knockout. I'm not sure how accurate that call is, but uh, there we go. Uh, so that was something. That was a thing that happened. That was a thing that happened, um, and folks in the chat seem to appreciate it. And now we are filling that arena with fire extinguishers. Wow, look at this. Um, yeah, so what do you think happened to Chris in that fight? He seemed to get really nauseous. Yeah, listen, I'm getting nauseous right now, Kyle.
Yeah. Listen, we, we've got we've got rare earth metals in all of these laptops. We've got some weird machine I've literally never seen in my entire <laughs> life before. Got, probably got burning uh, rubber with with the Crocs. And uh, yeah, you know, we've got this packing foam that uh, was on fire too. This is this is shortening all of our lives. This is <laughs> this is not okay. <laughs> This is how we encourage mask wearing here at Norwalk Havoc, really. Yeah. Oh, good point. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. <sighs> well, Kyle. Huh. It smells lovely in here now. It's got that, uh, you know, kind of backwoods redneck campfire thing going on. All right. Do you, do you want to know a fun personal fact about me? Please. I feel like I don't really reveal a lot of fun personal facts. Yeah. I'm totally interested. Please tell us. Okay. I actually don't have a sense of smell, Kyle. No sense of smell at all. Like zero sense of smell. Wow, that must make these competitions so much more pleasant for you because it smells awful in here right yeah. now. Yeah, well, here's the thing. That doesn't make me, like, uh, immune to the effects of uh, toxic, toxic, you know, toxic Yeah, but you don't like, know they're smells. coming. You, you have no warning. All, all I feel is, uh, like, a pounding headache and then, like, the urge to throw up when, uh, you know— I've got a uh, burning plastic next to me. That's great. That's yeah. uh, that's really not helpful at all. I'm killing brain cells, I'm sure, just sitting closer to the box than you are. <laughs> this is terrible. I don't have a lot of extra ones. You know, I can't really just no. Spare at our any. age, it really is. You know, you got to keep all the ones that you've got. You know. Yeah. yeah. Wow. All right, here comes Chris. Hey, Chris. How'd it go? What did I miss? <laughs> uh, Nothing. You Nothing. missed a thing? Yeah. I I don't know how to describe it. You'll All have right, to Chris, go back and read the chat later. Let's inspect later. this thumb. Did uh, did you clean your hands? Did you put a bandaid on there? What are you so there? obsessed about my thumb for? Chris, you're my brother-in-law. I care about this. Okay, I don't want you to see you lose your thumb. Okay? I'm just impressed that Luke has never glued a wound shut before. Like I don't cut my hand ever. You, you might have to pick up a tool or something if you ever want to cut a hand. I wasn't gonna say it, and I'm glad Burr. you okay, did. Okay, wait a second. I use tools all the time. I just know how to use them correctly, so I'm not cutting my own limbs, Chris. Okay? I put on I put on protective gloves, okay? Eye protection, ear protection. Yeah. Okay? And I know how to use my what dang tools. tools. Are you talking what about tools? tools or when you play Tetris? <laughs> what tools do you what tools do you use those protective gloves with? Uh let's see. Forks, knives. What did I use what did what was the last thing that I built? Let me think. Hmm. <laughs> I built like some IKEA furniture. Yeah, and you wore gloves for that. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Did you, you use uh, Did you use a hammer? No, 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 no. Did you no, use I'm a screwdriver? No, I used the little key, the little Allen key. Oh yeah. So you use protective gloves for your Allen key. Eye protection. Yeah. And hearing protection. Yeah. Yeah. Did you use like a drill or a motorized uh, no, tool of any type? I don't own those. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say none of that counts. Listen, those are tools, all right? Just building stuff. Fair enough. Fair all enough. All right. Let's go over to the Beetleweights. Uh, we've got Polywog versus Silent X. Interesting. Silent X lost its weapon uh, in its last match. Now, the winner of this match will have to go on and face Silent Spring in the last round of the loser's bracket in the three-pound division. Um, that means we could have a Silent Spring versus Silent X fight. We've never actually seen one Eight, of those. Jameson seven, usually just pulls one. Six, five, four, three, two, Silent X, Silent one. Spring. Fight. Robots fight. <laughs> this is Loser's Bracket Round 7 action. And Silent Spring has already ripped off one of those tiny little wedge wedges. Uh, forks off of the front of Polywog. Oh, and another. Oh, now they're completely gone. Wow, they're both gone. Silent X really uh, doing a great job being cautious in this fight, making sure that they're keeping the weapon facing Polywog. Um, that is that is an interesting strategy. They're just taking it kind of slow, a little bit more paced. Nice hit there. And you saw that hit there it didn't look like much, but it did rip a big chunk of the both the front wheels off Polywog. That's going to have a massive effect on this fight. You see the mobility of Polywog is, is a little bit changed now. They've got a little bit more rumble in their step.
That looks like so far that uh, Silent X has managed to keep its weapon on, which uh, I cannot believe that I'm saying. Oh, no, look at that. That's a little bit of trash from the last match. How'd yeah. that get in there? I the think fate. that was actually underneath the chassis of uh, Bert. Wow, interesting. And it just kind of shook loose when Bert moved away. Silent X here against David Jin and Polywog. Silent X is remaining totally planted to the floor. Intent on trying to break the uh, the weapon belt that's running down the center of the drum of Polywog. Sixty seconds left in this fight. They are exchanging blows, and uh, both of these robots are, are surprisingly nimble. We haven't seen any huge hits, but um, really, no. Polywog is picking its moments and trying to attack Silent X uh, in a good spot. Tough to do with the robot that uh, basically has no right angles, uh, like uh, Silent X. Ooh, Ooh, that was a good hit. That was nice. You see these big, wide arcs that uh, Polywog is making around Silent X. I wonder how the judges are going to see this. Who here is controlling the pace of this fight? I think that that's what it's going to come down to. Control. All right, and we're at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, that's the end of this fight. Please power down your still very functional weapons and drive to the door if you can. This one will go to the judges. You know, we haven't checked in on our judge friends in a while. It'd be nice to hear from them. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock Eastern You're here hour in Norwalk, Connecticut. Hour 13. 13 hours into the live stream. Let's check to make sure they're still awake. Is everybody there? Did you guys see that fight? Yeah. Yeah. No. Nope, I had my eyes closed the whole time. Was it a good uh, one? I wasn't looking. It was a pretty good one. It was a yeah. great fight. Yeah. All right. Silent X versus Polywog. Now, the judges are going to uh, go and deliberate. This was a tough one. I mean, I think we're going to see a lot of 3-2 splits here. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised. Winner of this match goes on to face Silent Spring in the next round. Do we have any time for a replay? Oh, good hey, Do we question. have time for a replay? Uh, let me ask Control. Do we have time for a replay? Do we have the capability to get a replay? We have Brian's no Brian's telling replay me no technology. replay. Andrew, I'm sorry. You're going to have to use your memory. Here comes Matt with his scores. Look at these. 3-2, three, 3-2 two, three, two, all the way yeah, across. I have a feeling we're going to see that all the way. Wow. Okay. Peter and Andrew. Oh, Andrew's locked yeah. in his votes. Wow, a unanimous judge's decision for Silent X, which advances in the loser's bracket. Polywog has been eliminated early in this, uh, in this competition. Anyone want to talk about uh, what they saw in Silent X? I know this was a very close decision. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it could have gone either way in, it, in any of the categories. I thought... Um, Polywog, as you said, they got some of his tires cut a little bit, so the weapon just didn't seem quite to get up to speed, so I had to give Silent X the damage there. Um, I thought uh, Polywog had the better control, but Silent X would seem to be doing more of the chasing, more of the, was more of the aggressor there. But Polywog was, got the control points there because he was, you know, avoiding those attacks, timing his runs. Um, so you end up with this well, they're, they're basically tie in those two categories then. And then the damage, neither one really did any significant damage, but that little bit of tire damage earlier in the match, I, I felt kind of swayed me towards Silent X. Okay. All right. Yeah, it was a very close fight. Absolutely. Very close, yep. Good analysis there, Matt and, uh, and Andrew. Okay. Wild. That was a, that was a really very evenly, uh, pretty, pretty balanced match. And um, I'm actually a little surprised that Polywog didn't pick up um, at least one judge um, in that decision. I felt that Polywog was a bit more nimble and uh, a bit more aggressive. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess 
at the end of the day, I mean, you lose your uh, you lose one of your wheels right at the end. I mean, that tips it slightly over um, into Silent X's favor. Was there uh, any feedback from the chat as to uh, who won that oh, match? Interesting. Yeah, let's check that. So in the chat, 89% Silent X won that fight. 10% Polywog out of 38 votes. 1% um, Milk Tank. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's always 1% Milk Tank. Yeah. Two uh, percent. So, Two percent milk tank. Uh, we will not get to see Pollywog versus Lynx today. I made a milk joke. I know. I heard. I heard the milk joke. Yeah, it landed. Steam but only, right only over my milk joke. Uh, so it's going to be up to Jameson what he wants to do here. You know, he's got uh, two of his bots that have qualified. They're in the, the final losers, er, the eighth round of the losers bracket. Oh, wait, are they facing each other? They are, yeah. Silent what? Spring versus Silent X. So it's up to him. He could have this fight and uh, then see who's going to then go on and face Lynx. Or he could forfeit one of them and uh, decide that that is the one that is going to go on and face Lynx. Yes. Yeah. He's going to forfeit one, just like the Dorflers are going to forfeit one. That's because you are a thief of joy and you're not here for the fun, okay? That's all. That's all what I'm saying. What are you even talking about, Kyle? You want less combat instead of more? I mean... No, no. They've earned this decision because they were able to build great robots that went all the way to the end. They need to survive in this bracket. They need to win one of these out of the loser's yeah. bracket. They can't be messing around with like destroying all of their robots. That doesn't he, make he, any he sense. He makes a point, Kyle. He makes a very valid point, a very logical point. Also, we just watched two giant things catch each other on fire and try to buff a giant robot in the arena. Listen, this isn't a place of logic. <laughs> None of them are taking home a golden bread. No. That's probably true. Yeah. That robot was made in like two hours today. <laughs> All right. I heard it was dropped off on the doorstep here. That is sketchy. <laughs> All right. Here's the thing. Uh, Silent Spring versus Silent X. If you were Jameson Go, which one would you advance? Obviously the spring. Silent Spring. Yeah. He cares about the uh, the record of Silent Spring. He looks at Silent X as like, this is just my like test bed. Why yeah. why am I so deep in the bracket with my test bed? Because he's know? Jameson Go, that's why. Yeah. Now I will say if we did see a fight between Silent Spring and Silent X, it would be the quietest fight we have ever had here. Why is that? because it's Silent Spring versus Silent X. <laughs> oh, wow. I walked right into that. <laughs> All right. Uh, we did get a, uh, a request from Jake Ewert, Hydra Captain Jake Ewert in the chat. He's really interested in seeing the walking mechanism on Silent Spring or Silent X. Oh, yeah. It's a really cool piece of engineering, Jake. You're going to like this. So um, if we have uh, Kate Osborne back there, maybe uh, maybe we can find Jameson Go, and he can kind of push that robot around on the table a little bit. Yeah, do a little spinny spin. Now, or the interesting thing is... Uh, we are going into a um, a rematch between Lynx and Jameson Go. Yeah. No Either Silent X or Silent Spring. Yeah. Now, the question is, will we see a very similar configuration? Are we going to see these weird green forks off of the back of Silent Spring again? I'm not sure. I mean, we, we saw it once. You know what I mean? And that doesn't necessarily mean we are going to see it again. Um, and it didn't work out the way that he'd hoped it would in that particular case. So... I think that he failed because his weapon fell off, Kyle. I think he got flipped over and then those uh, those forks became more of an impediment than they were a, a help. And so he wasn't able to use that strategy of ramming the back of his robot into Lynx to break that weapon like he was planning on. I'll tell you what I really like about Jameson Go. He's been planning for Lynx for six months, probably. He's been thinking about this. He printed than those, little, those little green finger, fingerling forks, you know. Yeah, for I bet those, I bet he's had those in his toolbox literally since like two years ago, the first time Lynx came here. Yeah, yeah. I bet he's just had those hanging out. It's really cool that he built a specific configuration for a match that he was anticipating. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm probably going to go defeat seven robots in a row and I will probably face Calvin Eba. Yeah. Let me print up something specifically for Calvin. Yeah. And uh, you have to. I mean, that's how you have to think about Calvin because he's a real threat at these competitions. That bot is so impressive. And Calvin's driving is, uh, if not the best, among the best in this entire sport. I am really interested in seeing what the configuration is going to be and if his strategy is going to change at all. Yeah, same. Listen, if, uh, if Silent Spring's weapon goes flying off one more time, I don't know. It's going to break the internet. All right. 
Now, before we get to that, we do have to have some multi-bot on multi-bot action. A tag team match, if you will, yeah. in the 30-pound division. Yeah. Um, so, in your mind, in the, I guess you could call it the first ever tag team match here at Norwalk, who's got the advantage? Stop hitting yourself. You think so? 100%. Yeah, they're very well-designed, very beefy little bots. I mean, okay, so we saw a fire from Esther earlier in the day. We did. Polyester. We saw a fire for Stop Hitting Yourself as well, though. We saw yeah. smoke. Yeah, we saw, we saw smoke. a little bit of right. smoke. Yeah. I think that the simplicity of Stop Hitting Yourself, it is such a just tanky design. Yeah. I think that we are going to see uh, them exploit some of the weaknesses that uh, Esther has been facing today. Agreed. I haven't seen, like, the same kind of reliability from Esther that I've been seeing from Polly. Yeah. Now, can David Jin, you know, succeed in outdriving two very good BattleBots drivers? Maybe. Maybe. Can they take out Esther and immediately, like, you know, kill kill uh, Polyester? Maybe. I think, though, that, uh, you know, just the, I think the rock, paper, scissors favors uh, the Yankaskis family there. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that seems to be the match that we're going to be loading into next, so we're going to have the what? answers to all of these Are questions here shortly. Yeah. Wow. Why do you think I started that Kyle, conversation? Kyle, my, my back was turned to the I big know. box. I had no idea what was loading in. <laughs> I, I, I feel uncomfortable when I make like like a prediction and then we're right about to see it, you know? Yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes. I'm excited. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay. Very exciting. Polyester versus Stop Hitting Yourself. I like that you had your answer all ready to go, though. You really knew. You've been thinking about this today. Dude, I called this like an hour ago. All right. <laughs> Here we go. So here we go, getting deep in the 30-pound division. We've got Stop Hitting Yourself versus Polyester. The winner of this fight has to go on to face Megatron for the Eight, last round of seven, the uh, loser's bracket. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Wow, look at this. Four 19-pound robots in the big box. That weight bonus does not matter anymore. This is true one-on-one -on -one action. And it really looks like polyester is getting the better of these early exchanges. Kyle, I might be eating my words in real time. Yeah, look at how well Esther is doing. They're keeping that one uh, half of Stop Hitting Yourself pinned up against the wall. Backing up and coming back in for hit after hit. Quite frankly, Esther is the real MVP of this match so far. All right, it looks like uh, these uh, two robots from Stop Hitting Yourself are now going to team up on Esther, see if they can take out that robot first. David Jin is hanging back very wisely. One of the big things that you're looking for with the multi-bot is that you do not hurt your uh, your, your partner um, when you're attacking. Like that, yeah. right there. And it does look like one of the bots from Stop Hitting Yourself is stuck up on the rails. Can Fluffy come over there and help? I think Fluffy's trying to find an opportunity to get past all this chaos before they go over there. Wow. Oh. Stop nice hitting yourself work there. Up. Wow, it's lost one of those uh, one of those forks. Oh, and the uh, the other multi bot from Stop Hitting Yourself is trying to twist itself out of the corner and get back into this fight. It doesn't appear as though Fluffy is going over there to help. I do not know why. Perhaps the driver has asked them not to, so they can save that one save for later if they need it. Wow. wow, huge hits there on Stop Hitting Yourself. Esther putting in the work, doing a lot of damage. Polly, no slouch in that department either. Wow, Whoa. huge hit on Stop Hitting Yourself. All the big hits are coming from Polly. Now Stop Hitting Yourself is not going to get its free save, it seems, with 45 seconds left. Where is Fluffy? Fluffy is asleep. I mean, we've seen them change positions several times, but they are not moving over to help stop hitting yourself at all. Leaving this 19-pound bot to their own devices, trying to take on these two very powerful opponents. What is that that just flew off of Esther? I really oh. don't know. 
I think it is one half of the, the forks on Esther that just came off. Esther now stuck in the mat in the corner. This is an even match between Ten, Polly and Stop nine, Hitting Yourself. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh. That's the match. Turn off your weapons and drive to the door. Now, that was Huge. a really mixed ending because at the ending of that, you saw that front weapon pack or that front armor package come off of the, the primary bot we saw in that fight for Stop Hitting Yourself. But the other half of Stop Hitting Yourself actually got off the wall at that last second and started moving around. I don't know how I feel about Fluffy deciding whether they're going to uh, save these uh, robots or not. No, I mean, that's going to be some controversy. It's been a factor now in two fights tonight. Of uh, Fluffy deciding whether or not they even want to be involved. Yeah, I agree. Hmm, interesting. Okay. We're going to go over to the judges. Esther also ended up on the rail. Esther also didn't get a, a throwing save from Fluffy. So I guess, uh, you know, if you're uh, not going to do your job, you might as well not do all of your job instead of half of your job, right? Agreed. Yeah, okay. You can clearly see how I feel about Fluffy. Uh, no, Fluffy was not driven by the ref. I just wanted to answer that question in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're going to go to the judges on that one. That was a pretty hard one to call in some ways, but in other ways, I don't know. I think Polyester took that. I agree. Yeah. All right. I agree, Kyle. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to the judges. Let's see their scores here. Ooh, big scores in favor of polyester. It's polyester. Look at that. Yeah. Right it's off easy the bat. to do the math when the numbers are really large, you know? Yeah, it helps when you got fours on there. You <laughs> yeah. know who's winning when there's fours. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we've got a unanimous judge's decision for polyester, which advances in the loser's bracket. Are there any uh, any other robots for them to defeat left in the loser's bracket? Yeah, Kyle? they got to go up against Megatron next. Yeah. Megatron? Yeah. For the final final? No. Oh, Megatron is That's in the loser's, losers round seven. Oh. Loser's bracket round seven. The winner of this fight then has to go on to face Emulsifier. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So Megatron is now got to take on the uh, apparently most deadly multibot in the division. Uh, also facing off against David Jin again. So that'll be fun for him. Um, hmm. Yeah, you know, and they're good friends and they, they really respect each other as competitors. But man, it's going to be very tough to face two very, very powerful bots um, just as a single control bot. You know, a control bot in a multi-bot situation is just a difficult place to be anyway. Oh. Interesting. All right. So that does confirm one of my theories from earlier. We just heard this over the, chat, uh, over the uh, headset. So stop hitting yourself. Did ask Fluffy not to interfere in that match. That was not controversial. They wanted to save their one save for a situation where both of their bots were immobilized. Um, that was a strategic choice on their part. Perhaps not the right one, but it was a strategic choice on their part. So I just learned something new, like TIL. I didn't know that you only get the one unstick if you have two bots that share the you same weight. You have one unstick. Period. The end. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So it was a strategic move on their part. I don't necessarily think it was the right one, especially with 40 seconds left in the match. You should have been like, hey, just go ahead and do it, man, at this point. Um, but yeah, that, that was the choice they made, and that is the choice they have to live with. And, uh, you know, that's that's where it is. At least there's no controversy there. That was their choice. And, you know, all these builders or the, all these drivers are right next to each other. They can hear each other. They can yell back and forth. Yeah. And that communication is very important to how this match goes. So that makes a lot of sense. All right, we're going to go over to Katie in the pits. Yeah, standing by here with Jameson and Aaron, and there's some deliberation as to what are the next steps for you guys here in the final. Coming from your guys' mouth, Jameson, what is it? All right, well, you know, we're both on the same silent team here, so we're deciding against our number one enemy here, enemy, is, <laughs> is Lynx, and that fighting each other is actually going to decrease our chances of beating him. So what we're going to do is to pick one to advance uh, so we can, all the parts are fresh as possible. And then at this time, we're going to fight each other anyways. But <laughs> the tournament, we're going to try and you know, increase our chances there first. And from that point of view, which is the one? We're going to advance the, the primary bot, Silent Spring. 
All, All right. right, gentlemen, does that surprise you? Not even whatsoever. a little bit. That's surprise exactly what we 0%. thought Jameson was going to do. Yeah. Okay. It's a uh, choice he has made Thank in the past, guys. and I'm sure he would make that same choice again. So there we go. Silent Spring is going to move on into the final in the three pound division. They will be facing Lynx. You don't just get one Lynx and Silent Spring fight today, you get two, possibly three <laughs> Lynx versus Silent Spring fights today. Wow. What more could you ask for? Yeah. December Four. 2021 finals are okay, lit. Four right. of them. Yeah. Chris wants to see four, all right? You, you could ask for four. Yeah. yeah, and just a grudge match right at the end. Where, yeah. where we get Silent Spring versus Silent X, just for funsies. All right, and look at this. Kyle, I called it. The Dorflers, they uh, they eliminated Disco, and they are advancing huge. Yeah, so this decision also kind of happened behind the scenes, it sounds like. So we're going to have, oh, look at him. Bobby looks happy about happy this. Happy-go-lucky, so got seven, both of his eyes. Six, no eye patch on five, Bobby, ready to four, go against huge. Three, huge. Two, one. Oh my goodness. Fight, robots, fight. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Bobby versus Huge. So here's what's going to happen. Huge is already missing huge chunks of its wheels. Why? Because that undercutter or that spinner on Bobby is devastating. It's going to rip chunks out of these wheels as we go. Look at that. Horizontals oh, are not no. good for either of these robots to face. But in this particular case, the horizontal advantage goes to Bobby. Now, Bobby's body is literally made out of putty, right? We are talking about 3D printed body on Bobby. It is not made to take any damage. So if they do make contact with that center bar on Huge, they could take a ton of damage and possibly get eliminated. Wow, Huge is not in a good spot right now. Not at all. There you saw a nice big hit oh! from Huge. Oh! Oh, oh, oh Bobby! Do they oh. have enough torque to get their bop moving? It looks like Huge is trying. Bobby's already in bad shape. They've got one of their wheels completely cattywampus. They're able to crab walk. Huge able oh, to move. Oh. oh my goodness. Wow. I'm not sure who's actually winning at this point. Uh, we are. Yeah, accurate. We are, we are, are all winning. winning. We are all winning. This is a match I've been wanting to see. I was always like, what is going to happen? And I got to say, I did not think any of it would be this. <laughs> this is this is going to end up being a top 10 fight for the day for me. Bobby has lost both of their eyes. <laughs> Huge uh, taped their eyes on with electrical tape today, so that's helping. It's interesting. Bobby looks so big compared oh. to any other competitor except Huge. So we're oh, going those into... wheels are getting chewed up now. Yeah, they absolutely are. Both, the, both, both these of bots. them. All right, so we're in the last minute of this fight. Oh. And uh, that's oh. some smoke coming out of, is that Bobby? Yes. Yeah, is Bobby moving? Is Bobby mobile at all? He's going to get a little nudge. A little nudge, a little unstick. Losers bracket round eight, Bobby. Bobby! Bobby, can you hear me? Oh no. Knockout. And we that just saw is a knockout. The winner of that fight is huge. Ooh. Wow. That is not how I saw that fight going at the beginning of this match. That was really looking like Bobby's fight to lose, but man. Huge is going to have some uh, work cut out for them in the pits right now. Look at that thing. Oh, no, it's, they just got to put more tape on the wheels. What are you talking about? It's fine. I don't know. Take a closer look. I mean, <laughs> that, that thing, uh, you know, when you, when, you, when you lose and you're dropping your vertical weapon on the floor like that, so much can happen. Let's, uh, let's go check out and see what's going on in social. Lindsay, what's up? Uh, everybody, everybody was just, you know, that blew everybody's minds. I'll kind of go through what the uh, prediction was beforehand. So we had 38 votes, 55% said huge and 44% bo said Bobby. So the majority predicted it, but I don't think anybody could have predicted how it actually went down because that was... That was wild. I've never seen anything like that. And, and this is a fight that we've been waiting for and hoping for for a long time. Yeah, I agree with that. That was uh, that was very impressive. 
Um, how did you see this one going, Lindsay? Did this did this happen the way you thought it would? Yeah, you know, I think I was going to give the favorability to Bobby, um, especially in the beginning when it latched onto Huge's wheels and kind of shredded them. I thought that, that it was going to be over. And Huge just got a second life and managed to like power through that and and just turn Bobby into a cloud like it was just a a violent mess. Yeah, the uh, the strategy I think you'd use there was oh my wheels are not circles anymore. Maybe if I spin them faster they will turn into circles again. Uh, super effective. Worked out really well for them. This box, by the way, I'm looking over at it now, is an absolute mess, Lindsay. There is yeah, foam. Yeah, it's pretty bad. How do you clean that? You you, you just have to sweep and vacuum for literally ever so uh we're gonna have to be waiting for that box to open up again <laughs> uh it is a straight up mess in there is poor ed just on his knees with a little broom in there oh no he's making the young kids do this so we're fine Good. he's picking up the individual pieces of foam one <laughs> <minute>. <laughs> oh, i love it all right so where does that leave us in that bracket so we've got Bobby versus Huge just ended. That means we're going to have Hot Leaf Juice versus Huge in the for, next match. For the Golden Bobby. That's exactly right. For the Golden Bobby. If Huge wins, they have to defeat Hot Leaf Juice twice because you have to lose twice in order to be eliminated. So uh, that's going to be interesting. So someone could technically be walking away with $12,000 after that next match. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. All right, Katie, let's check in back with you. How's things going in the pits? <laughs> yeah, this is when the excitement really happens. As you can see, a couple people uh, are running by. Oh my. We also have Huge, who was just brought back here to the pits, and they're doing a whole lot of work and making some quick moves here. Uh, this is where the wheels, legs, and the weapon are going to have to be re-put on. These wheels happen to be... Uh, thicker and a lot harder to grab and cut through and they think for leaf juice that is a better strategy heading into this next round but as you can see there's a whole lot of effort that needs to be done in less than 20 minutes now yeah. wow interesting these we look like they're smaller wheels than uh than you just normal wheels so uh they're trying to uh to I, i'm assuming get closer to the ground yeah We've uh, getting closer to the ground and also just having a thicker wheel base. This is something we've seen Yuge's big brother do in larger, uh, in the heavier weight competitions. Having that thicker, more solid wheel lets you take those horizontal hits for longer. Uh, they, it's still susceptible to horizontal hits, but it, it lets you take them for a little bit longer. Yeah, and guys that they're talking about, I was just speaking with them about this. These are some of the wheels that have had some of the damage already done today. These have a couple of battles on them, the smaller ones that you're mentioning, but they think with Leaf Juice's weapon, the way that, that the, the, you can see how much thicker that is, that that's just gonna be a much greater advantage, even though it is a little bit different than some of the others that they've run. Yeah, now with that, you've gotta swap out a shorter weapon bar as well, or else, uh, you know, if they ran their weapon bar from the last match, they would be dragging along the floor. Interesting, uh, interesting decisions here. A lot Kyle. of work, a lot of work to do in 20 minutes, and you can see the whole team is just going ham on this, trying to get everything done. And I don't know if you guys can, can they still hear? Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, oh, we can, can hear you. Still, okay, okay. I'm glad you guys can, I can still hear your voices anyways. These guys haven't even eaten yet today. Wow. The, the apple cider donuts are still in your desk. <laughs> yes, I, that's I right. can't get them to eat some chips over here or anything. Yeah. So <laughs> they're running on fumes. When your adrenaline's adrenaline. going that hard, it is so hard to just even think to consume food. So I totally understand that. We've been trying to foist these donuts on the Dorflers for, for hours now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think as we continue on, let's go ahead and come back over here to Christian Cooper, who had a quite a day earlier, um, and he has been consistently working. Now, I don't know that he has eaten yet today. Christian, have you eaten today? A little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I had lunch and dinner. All right, so that, there is a little bit of a priority there. We were talking just a bit ago about what the team has left. Rolodex. Just like in general? Um, I mean, there's two matches. We're fighting Sawblaze, which, going to be honest, is one of the main reasons we built this robot, because he can't prepare for both of us. Uh, and then, hopefully, Emulsifier, but we'll see about that one, you know? We'll see. And right now, the work that you're doing to Esther is what? Uh, repairs. The entire back of it is kind of oh. uh, completely bent, which made getting this module in a huge pain. Um, and part of that is 
top plates won't really fit, which when you're fighting a top down attack saw robot, is kind of a big deal. Yeah, yeah, a lot of this is a big deal, in fact, and as I'm learning, uh, really navigating, and when their brains have, don't have food and they've been on their controllers all day long, you guys were telling me earlier, so much of it has to do with being focused. And after a 13 hour plus show and these guys battling all day, that is something that I think we're also gonna see is that mentally strong right now too. Yeah, yeah, and preparation really just comes in so important at this point in the fight. You know, there's uh, there's that that mentality of uh, not only did I get here at a reasonable time this morning, do I have plenty of spares, but I slept last night too. And that makes you much more of a threat when you're getting this late in the competition because so many of these competitors didn't sleep last night. Right. They were working on last minute repairs and last minute builds on their bots. So it's... It's interesting to see where we get to at this point in the competition. Or driving four yeah. hours to get here in the morning. That's exactly 14 right. 14 hours. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know, when, when you think about some of the uh, the drives that some of these competitors have made, you know, uh, the Ancaskis family, they drive all the way from Indiana to get here. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, you think about Casey Jermiason and Casey Jermiason. They had been driving all the way from Minneapolis. This time they decided to fly. Yeah, that was probably smart. Yeah, super smart. I will tell you that uh, when we were talking to Christian Cooper, Annika Yankaskis came by and she dropped off two stickers from Dragon Princess. I love it. These are dope. Yeah. All right. Those are huge. Those are great. Now, do you think I should keep both of these? I mean, I think we should uh, give make one a giveaway. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna keep one for sure. Yeah, you should keep one. All right, I, I feel like maybe we can give it, uh, give this to uh, somebody in the audience, maybe somebody who's been here all day. Somebody feel very strongly about this. Do we have a hand up? Oh my <laughs> got goodness! People pointing at each other. Yeah, I love William that. Marchese. There you go, bro. You ready for this? Okay. Come on all over. Right. Come on over here. Let's go, William. The uh, the captain of Sea Dragons Roar typically, and uh, now the uh, the, <laughs> the uh, fresh owner of one of these amazing stickers from Annika Yankaskis. There you yeah, go. Yeah, limited very edition. Cool. Very cool. Are we going to see you at a uh, at a future Norwalk? Yes. Awesome. Cool. All right. Nice. All right. Good. Cool. Thank you, William. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna keep this. Bring it home. I don't know. I gotta find some place to put this. Maybe like on my my fridge. What do you think? Maybe on your Subaru. Oh, <laughs> Good. There you go. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's go check in with Katie in the pits. Here's the thing I like right now is Calvin right here. Look at the cool, calm, collected version of himself. A smile. <laughs> he, doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't have one tool in his hand. No, Meanwhile, he's got here, two bots ready. Look at that. I know. He's just chilling. Meanwhile, over here, Jameson looks like he's just chilling here, too. Oh. But in fact, he's not as chilling as he looks right now as he just put some tools down. What? <laughs> what are, <laughs> you guys do look pretty cool chilling. Um, what <laughs> What were some of those changes that you... They haven't eaten either, I don't think. I don't know if any of us have at this point. Um, no, what, what were some of those changes that you are working on right here? We're out of spares. Oh. We're gonna, oh, we're gonna throw something together. Wow, wow, That's... is that really true? Uh, there's, there's a lot of things which are sort of suboptimal. <laughs> suboptimal. <laughs> this blade, this blade right here, is like five years old. Okay. Yeah. It is not my first choice for a thing like this, okay. but everything else has taken so much damage this tournament. The blades I would normally use against against like Calvin or someone are all bent. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so being cool and hanging out here is about as good as it's going to be right now, huh? Wow. Yeah. This is intense. This is uh, by far probably the toughest competition that Silent Spring, Silent X has ever had. We've never bent blades like, like that ever. So these robots hit really hard. Yeah. It seems like a lot of them are taking a beating. And remember earlier today, <laughs> Lynx and Jameson went up for the first time. Both of them had 85% or higher win ratios. And uh, yeah. that's something that these guys are really excited about to get a real battle under their belt as the last one took, what, less than a minute. So yeah. Whew. Going into this competition, both of these guys seem to have a it is what it is attitude. 
Now, I, I guess the big question is, is Jameson Go charging his batteries? Is he trying to run down the last of the 20 minutes? Just double checking everything? Like how much time does he have left? I don't know. We haven't had the timer clocks up yet, but yeah. It's been we, more than 20 we minutes. Yeah, we haven't needed them. I'm but pretty you're right. sure it's been more than 20 minutes for the Beatles. I Between those new, fights, I think you might be right. My favorite Jameson Go quote is, uh, uh, "There are a few things that are suboptimal." <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna start using that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. You know that's not good when Jameson's calling something on his bot suboptimal, but uh, you know, the suboptimal for Jameson Go is pretty optimal for a lot of our other competitors. So take that as you will. I think that uh, we're going to be seeing a, uh, we're going to be crowning a Beetleweight champion here pretty soon. Yeah. And it uh, looks like both Lynx and Silent Spring are pretty close to being done. Interestingly enough, Jameson Go ran the exact same configuration for Silent Spring. Yeah, looks like it. Looks like it. We don't know. We don't know exactly what he's bringing to the box, right? That could be a... He's, he's got those he's tricked, weird green fingers, He's Kyle. tricked people before, right? He is, uh, he's like come to the box with his bot in a little box to hide what he's going to be doing. So, so you know, yeah. we'll know what he's bringing when he brings it to the box, right? Interesting. Uh, it's, it's a strategy that he's used in the past, so we'll see. We'll wow. see. And running a five-year-old uh, five weapon... Oh my gosh! <laughs> Look inside what is of the going big on box. In there? So, okay, uh, they, there is a negative pressure system in these boxes. We've talked about that before, but I don't think we talk about how powerful that is. Uh, inside the big box right now, the uh, arena crew is just throwing random things into the uh, the top vent. The top suction vent, just to see what sticks. <laughs> they, they threw a phone up there, and the phone sticks to the ceiling. Incredible. So all of that is just being held up there by air. That is how uh, hard this arena sucks all of the air out. Yeah. I think it's like Is that uh, my hotel room key? It might be. It might be <laughs> your hotel room key. No, you can't do that. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that dollar is not coming down. What? <laughs> They're just peeling it off right now. Wow. Amazing. So it's a little late. People are getting a little loopy doing some strange things. Why not? All right. I can see the finals of Beatles loading into cage one. All right. This is Lynx versus Silent Spring. I'm going to just say round of applause just ahead of this match. This is amazing. <sighs> this is a rematch from earlier in the day when Calvin, Eba, and Lynx ripped off the weapon of Silent Spring from Jameson Go. That's right. Now, either way, uh, one of these two drivers is going to be going home with $10,000 and a Golden Brett. The first time that we've ever built Golden Brett. Um, so it is an exclusive uh, here for 2021 Norwalk Havoc. The other driver will be going home with $4,000 and lots of good feelings. <laughs> $14,000 is going to go out the door. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's just great. That's where all your super chat money went. So all right. We know in you know, throughout the year, throughout the season, we give away the thousand dollars in cash, it goes into the dumpster. What are we doing with ten grand? You can't just is there a money gun? <laughs> <laughs> is there a giant check? Uh yeah, ten thousand dollars are we do we have actual cash? I don't think we have actual cash of ten thousand really? dollars that we're gonna be throwing at people. Really? It's a giant Just check, yeah. Put it's the a 50, check. Put 50,000 in front of me and I will watch it. <laughs> You'll just keep it nice and safe? Safe. All right, uh, let's get ready for this. This is the final uh, match, potentially, of the, the Beetleweights here. This is uh, a moment that we've been waiting for this entire year. These are the two very best Beetleweights in North America, very likely the best Beetleweights on the planet. And they're about to go head wow. to head I have here. To stand. I have to stand, Luke. I'm yeah, sorry. my very Amerocentric yeah. view would say, of course, they're the two best Beetleweights in the planet. I'm standing for this. Here we go. Amazing. I cannot wait. We've seen Lynx go undefeated uh, here today, and uh, Lynx had defeated Jameson Go earlier. Let's see if Jameson here can uh, exact his revenge with uh, very few spares left for the evening. See a good shot here of Calvin Eba getting ready to go. And the area around this arena is filling up. Everybody wants to see this fight. Wow, the room just quiet. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. 
I have been looking forward to this match for months. It is dead silent in the pits. Dead silent everywhere. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Here we go. Fast uh. box rush right out of the box from Lynx, taking it straight to Silent Spring. Silent Spring, though, its long green forks have gotten under Lynx uh, there. They may have worked. Incredible. Calvin, Eba, and Lynx is finding great traction here in the box. Trying to pop Silent Spring in the air again. There he goes. That's a big pop. And one of those fingers is gone. And another big pop in the air from Lynx on Silent Spring. Silent Spring is now on its head. They're going weapon to weapon here. Calvin Eba trying to pick his moment. He wants to knock out Silent Spring. He wants to win a decisive victory here. Huge hit. Is and that what the is that? Oh, oh my God! God. It's gone! Oh my God! Tap out. Wow! Wow! At the one minute mark again! Oh! The internet is broken. Look at that. Calvin Eba has won two matches in a row against Silent Spring and Jameson Go. Round of applause for Lynx. Amazing. Where's that giant check? <laughs> it's a very small check. Wow, okay. Kyle, your thoughts on the uh, Beetleweight Finals for 2021. That was a beautiful match. Uh, I got to say, I love that fight. I love the build up to that fight. I think both of these competitors wow. are very happy with the way that that went. And uh, this is, this is a, a rematch I can't wait to see. Okay. Unbelievable. Wow. Calvin, Eba, and Lynx went undefeated today. They uh, ate through this entire Beetleweight bracket, didn't lose a single match, and uh, faced the most feared Beetleweight driver on the East Coast in Jameson Go, not once, but twice. All right. I guess we have a question here. Do we want to talk to Calvin Eba cage side, or do we want to bring him over here to the desk and start paying uh, this man out? I don't know. Where's the check? Do we have the check? Uh, I just I heard over the comms. Uh, also wants to know if you have your checkbook on you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. There we go. Okay. Um, Calvin Eba, how about we, you come over here? Uh, let's take Chris's spot. Would love to uh, hear from you. Uh, first off, fresh round of congratulations. Yeah. Fantastic. Such a good job, Calvin. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. First off, okay, you've, you've won a couple of golden dumpsters. Uh -huh. This is the first time that uh, we've ever built a golden Brett. What do you think about this new uh, this new trophy? Yeah, this trophy is pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it's perfect for Norwalk Havoc. I love that it lights up. Yeah. Uh, I'm super excited. Yeah, all right. Jim's going to finish this off for you. He's going to engrave your name on top of it. So you'll get that along with the check as your prize. Uh, I just, I couldn't be happier for you right now, Calvin. What a great day for you. What a great Thank competition. What a great year here at Norwalk yeah. Havoc. Well done. This competition yeah. has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's been a rough battle from the start. I mean, there's no easy fight uh, today for anyone. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was really impressed by the competition. All right. Uh, you know, I, I guess the, the big question is, I mean, so like, you know, we saw you here at the finals last mm -hmm. year. You took home second place. You know, like, this is... The, essentially the top Beetleweight in the world right now. How does that feel? It uh, feels pretty cool. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I've kind of uh, dominated the West Coast as well, and uh, no one wants to build Beetleweights anymore. Ah. So <laughs> I think I'm going to put links on a shelf for a little while and build what? something different. Are you serious? Um, yeah. And then have let people have some more fun. Wow. So, so you're not going to try to get a rematch with Tommy Wong here next year? Because that's the only one you've really lost to as far as the championship matches. Oh, I fight him all the time in SoCal. That's true, yeah. you do. Um, yeah, so 
it's still not a fun bi- bot to fight. <laughs> no, uh, Droopy's never a fun bot yeah. to fight. All right, let's break some news here. So are you going to build another beetle weight, or are you out of this weight class now? Uh, I'll build another beetle weight. Really? Yeah. Something else? Yeah. A different design? Yeah, I think a flamethrower. A flamethrower? Yeah. Really? Nice. Pretty fun. Is that going to be the active weapon? Yes. Whoa, okay. All right, so we have it right here. Let's go ahead and get a nice shot of that. This is the check. All right, look at that. $10,000. Congratulations, Calvin. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Now, Calvin, uh, you've, got, you've got a choice here. Do you want to hoist this up with your grubby little fingers, or do you want to wear these white gloves here? He says, go oh, for it. Grab okay. it. up to you. Hoist that sucker up. Here we go. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, it's oh, heavy. It's heavy. Wow. Yeah. There we go. Amazing. I love that. Amazing. Uh, yeah, oh, okay, so wait, do you get to, oh no, we're gonna Yeah, he's gonna get it that. engraved, he's gonna get it finished for him. Got it, okay, all right. One more round of applause for Calvin, Eba, and Lynx. Great Thanks for the today. great event. Yeah, great work, awesome. All right, do we have Jameson Go? Do we have a second check for Jameson Go? I think that, oh, no checks. Yeah, Ryan Sadler, write out that check. Come He's on. writing it out, that's fine. <laughs> Look at this. All right, so we did have some questions earlier. People wanted to talk to you about your shuffler mechanism. I think this is just as good of an opportunity as any for you to show that off. It's just an awesome feat of engineering, especially at this weight class. Um, so let's go ahead and tip this up and we'll show everybody kind of how those work real quick. Wow. Oh, wait. Oh, you got to put this on. Yeah. There we go, JMO. It's based around a cam mechanism. So there's a cam so there's a, that shares a central shaft in here. And uh, basically, uh, these legs will rotate based on that cam. And it will, in combination with some other you know, mechanisms, basically force the legs to not only do a rotation step, but also kind of move it in and out. So what you result in is the vertical travel required for lifting each leg so you don't kind of like scuff on itself when it's trying to move, re reset the leg. It's like rowing, right? You don't want to like yeah. make negative progress. Very, very cool. Yeah, and the horizontal motion gives it more horizontal travel so the, the walking is a little bit more efficient. So Got Jameson, it. while we're talking technical details, what kept happening to these weapon modules today where they flew off in this way. This is something we really haven't seen with your bot that much in the past. So, so what was that? Well, in short, I think they finally got tested. Ah. <laughs> so Silent Spring and Silent X are both half a pound underweight. Gotcha. What? Yes. Wait, what do you mean? He's How never told us this weigh? before. Four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. Yep. He's okay. never told us this before. This is new information. So I think we have a clear direction on how to improve the design. Yeah. More weight in the right places. Oh, and so okay. specifically in the structural integrity yeah, right there. It's hollow. Wow. This is this it's still printed hollow and that's been fine for, you know, many generations of Silent Spring. And Silent X has been pretty good until really it's tested today with a, you know, the egg beater wedge reinforced type robots and I think that we could probably well, I guess in one piece. That's a good start. <laughs> but uh, the rest of the chassis, the locomotion seems incredibly solid. So Looking forward to making future improvements onto the design with X and Silent Spring. Uh, we are huge fans of Sawblaze. We are huge fans of the Silent Spring of robots. Uh, we are huge fans of you as a builder and as a driver. And, uh, you know, like we feel like it's so cool that we get to see you here in our backyard competing at Norwalk Havoc so often. And uh, it is really, really amazing that you fought through the entire field throughout the year fought all the way to the end, and faced your friend in Calvin, and uh, took, took home second place for 2021. Yeah, I mean, fighting robots, I've been doing this for so long. It's always been kind of like a grassroots thing for me. It's my really big first step into engineering. Yeah. And to continue competing, I think it's just the coolest thing ever. It's, you know, it pushes myself. Other people push me to do better. I inspire others, and you know, I wouldn't be able to do this with, with, again, talking about friends like Calvin. Here's my friend Aaron, 
is driving X today. So yeah, really good job Aaron. today, Aaron. Very good job. We made it super far. And a lot of the improvements, the reliability that made Silent Spring work was because of him. So this guy, big round of applause for him. Yeah, all right, Aaron. Great work today with Silent X. <laughs> all right, so we've got there the check go. here for Jameson. And Wingo. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. $4,000 to Jameson Go and the Silent uh, family. Really like pushing Silent Spring and Silent X all the way to the end. Really incredible uh, testament to your engineering uh, skill here. And we're really looking forward to seeing you next season. Thanks. All right. Thanks so much, Jameson Go. Thanks so much, uh, Alex. OK. We're going to party. This is so interesting that we are not ending the night on the three pound division. Yeah. I think that's the first time that has ever happened here. Yeah. This is, uh, yeah, we still got to uh, crown a 12 pound winner and a 30 pound winner. Absolutely. All right, uh, Lindsay, I would love to check in with you and see what the chat thinks about our Beetleweight finals. I, I mean, the chat really, like, loves both of these teams, as they should. Um, they uh, also fixated on the fact that the uh, bobby hat is uh, just randomly on your desk after <laughs> falling off the golden dumpster. No, the golden bread. I'm sorry. Um, but I, uh, I can try and find some comments to read. Oh, good. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, I'll, uh, <laughs> Jake Ewert said, oh, uh, uh, Son of Oyachi style shuffler, how 2001 of them. <laughs> so, wow, Jake Ewert stirring the pot. Amazing. <laughs> uh, so now that we have actually concluded the th three pound bracket, um, we still have the 12 and 30 to go, but we can start looking forward to what is to come in 22. So Techmeister1993 says, when does the next season of this start? Are we ending here or are we coming back next year? This is a great question, Techmeister. We are going to uh, restart uh, the season. So we're going to wipe everybody's uh, season records clean uh, starting February 5th. So uh, we're going to be back here in two months for uh, the start of the 2022 season. Now, um, if you are sitting there at home and you're thinking to yourself, wow, I think I'd really like to compete against these top-notch uh, competitors, you have two months to finish your beetle and bring it here. Um, on February 5th, we're going to be running three pounds, 12 pounds, 12 pounds sports spin, and 30 pounders. Now, uh, looking forward, you can check out our complete schedule. We're going to have six qualifiers next year and mm -hmm. the finals uh, at nhrl.io. You can see our complete schedule for the year. We would love to see you here in person if you can. And if not, just spread the word around and uh, watch this with your friends on uh, YouTube Live. Yeah. Bringing that back, by the way, Matt Spurk, finish your beetle. Yeah. I want to see Wally. I want to yeah. see a mechanized killer Wally, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see the spurts. We'll bring the flamethrower Wally for, for yeah. 22. Ooh. I love it. I love it. That would be great. I like that. All right. We, uh, we also have a super chat. Oh, really? Yeah. This one is from uh, YouTube user Metal Squid. Uh, he says, or she says, great stream, y'all. Been watching BattleBots, et cetera, for years, but new to this particular channel. Rock on. Oh, yo, Metal Squid. I love it. Yeah, um, welcome to the madness. Yeah, it, it's a different format. It's like pretty fun. You know, like I think one of the great things is seeing this sport live. It's really kind of bringing us back to the sports roots where you would sit inside of a huge stadium and you would watch this with thousands of other people. Now you're able to watch this from anywhere. And uh, we run seven of these events every single year. So if you like this, Come back in February and come check it out. Yeah. You know, I don't know where Metal Squid lives. Maybe somewhere uh, underwater in the sea. <laughs> but maybe, uh, maybe they can come check us out in Norwalk. Might I rust. Like I feel like we're pretty close to the water. You know. Uh, but yeah, Metal Squid. If you're anywhere on the East Coast, you know, uh, we are a short drive away. And uh, I don't know. I guess if you're from the Midwest, we're kind of a medium drive away. You know. West People Coast, you gotta fly. Yeah, yeah you gotta fly. 
All right, uh, we are going to go over to the finals for uh, 12 pound action. What we are looking at here is uh, David Jin and Hot Leaf Juice. This is Sable's team member, uh, Lucy Dew. Oh, and they are flipping their robot over. They are not going to go in the undercutter position. They are going to come into this as an overhead disc. It's, 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 a, it's a very smart move. Yeah, take out as much of those wheels as humanly possible. Well, then you also have a horizontal spinner as part of your defense mechanism on the top. Of your very true. This very, very is true. the 12-pound finals. If Hot Leaf Juice is able to defeat Huge here, Lucy Dew and David Jin will take home uh, $12,000 cash Ooh. and another golden brett. If for if Huge is Eight, able to defeat seven, Hot Leaf Juice, we will six, go into a sudden death five, rematch. Four. Three, you've got to lose two, twice in a uh, one. double fight. Robots in fight. Look at that Look at tiny that little, teeny, tiny little spinner. It's so cute. Oh, 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 whoa! Nice hit there. Oh, I see a belt on huge. What? Yeah, that hit knocked oh, the belt no. loose on huge. There is no active weapon on huge right now. Oh, the weapon on huge is down. And now David Jin and Hot Leaf Juice, they are not worried at all about taking damage to their robots. This fight is now academic. It is, can I stay alive for two and a half more minutes? Can I knock off these wheels? Can I put on a good show for the, uh, the crowd? Can I keep my weapon running? But what we've seen is bulletproof reliability all year round from Hot Leaf Juice. Something catastrophic would have to happen for Hot Leaf Juice to uh, stop working here with two minutes left. Yeah, I just don't see that happening. Lucy has built a tank of a machine. It has been so reliable all year long. Hot Leaf Juice has been the 12 pounder to beat. And uh, if you're thinking about building a 12 pounder for 2022, build it to beat Hot Leaf Juice. It is looking absolutely unbeatable in this, this weight class. This is a decisive way to, uh, to end the, uh, the season. 90 seconds left here. This one will very likely uh, go to the judges, perhaps. And uh, yeah, uh, what we are seeing here is Hot Leaf Juice really taking apart huge. So Kyle, is this a foregone conclusion with 60 seconds left? Are we crowning uh, the next winner of 12 pound full combat? Do you really want me to say it, Luke? Cause I'll say it. Yeah, say it. Anything could happen. <laughs> oh my God, Kyle. <laughs> wow. <laughs> No. But it's true. Anything Put could that happen. on a t-shirt, Kyle. That is... No. <laughs> this isn't baseball. This is combat robotics. Yeah, at this particular point, no. Nothing's stopping that weapon. Nothing is stopping Hot Leaf Juice from winning this fight. Good durability, though, on these uh, thicker wheels. Yeah, from it huge. was definitely the right call. For Don Dorfler and for uh, Team Brutus, you know, this caps off a really great season. They qualified so many robots here today, and it does look like they're going home in second place. Five, four, three, two, one. That's the end of the match. Turn off your weapons. Last 12 pound full combat match of the year for Norwalk Havoc. Oh, yeah. a good hug from David Jin on Lucy Dew. They've had such a successful season. They really have. All right, we're going to go to team. the judges, but uh, I think this one's going to be pretty fast. Oh, a good hug, too, uh, on the Dorflers with, uh, with David Jin. Okay. All right. As we kick this over to the judges, I don't know. I feel like that match was uh, settled in 15 seconds, the first 15 seconds. Yeah, that first real hit. Perfect. Oh, wow. Look at this. We got all these checks from Ryan Saslow. Kyle, this is our opportunity, okay? To, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
to pretend like we just won a tournament? We can escape to a foreign country. Look at all this cash we have of Austin. I love it. Not a not one that's really far away though. <laughs> <laughs> we could maybe hang out in Canada for like a month, you know? Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, we're gonna go over to the judges. I think that this uh, one should be pretty easy to call. Lucy, do uh, prepare yourself. Yeah, it was pretty obvious this one went to huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matt's Burke. Terrible. Okay, big numbers here for Hot Leaf Juice. That is a unanimous judge's decision. The last 12 pound full combat match of the year here at Norwalk Abbey. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's call over uh, Lucy Do. Lucy, where are ya? Lucy, come on over. I, I only really have one question for Lucy. Okay. Is she gonna change out that billet for next year or just leave it? No, it's a lucky billet. <laughs> It's a lucky it. billet at that time. Just keep running it. Keep running yeah, it. Yeah, see what happens. Why yeah. not? All right, where is Lucy? Dude? Here she Here comes. You go. Come Lucy, on over. come on over. Congratulations. All right. Go ahead and throw that on. Lucy, do I feel like I uh, I interview you a lot for uh, you know the final match of the twelves? <laughs> you know, how many golden dumpsters have you won this year? Do you know off the top of your head? Two. That's it. So July and November. Really? Yeah. I could have sworn it was like five golden dumpsters. Uh, well, we've only brought hot leaf juice to three. It was okay. May, July, and November. Got it. Um, didn't build hot leaf juice until May. Yeah, got it. Amazing. Um, I would love to to hear from you. You know, um, what is it about hot leaf juice that makes this design so competitive? Um, you know, I wish I had a great answer for that. Um. But I, I really think it, that it's the magical billet that's just in the front of the hot leaf juice. Yeah. It's taken abuse from Bobby three times. Huge, twice. Um, can, uh, Cannibal Mini, two, twice. Like, it's taken abuse from everybody, yeah. basically. Um, and it's the same billet that we ran in all four events now. Yeah. Um, Kyle wants to know if you're going to swap yeah, out the billet. Are you going to change that thing out for next year, or are you just keeping <laughs> it? What's the thought well, there? I think now that we've made it through the year, um, our plan is to have everybody that we fought um, and has made a mark on the billet sign it. Wow, um, cool. And then we'll epoxy coat the whole thing, wow. and maybe I'll hang it on my wall. That's amazing. That's, That's really, really cool. cool. So what's the next step for you? Are you planning on bringing another version of this bot next year? Are you trying something new? What's the thought process? Um, I don't think we've really decided yet, um, hmm. but you know, hot leaf juice has, has now have or now has a very special place in my heart. So yeah. I think there's a few design changes that we've wanted to do, but um, since it keeps doing so well, we kind of haven't changed them yet. Yeah. But I think New Year is a new time to uh, to make some upgrades. Yeah, I uh, I read your your feature article, you know, <laughs> this uh, this month. You know, that was really cool. Um, you know, I felt like I learned a lot about. You're like many interests outside of combat robotics. You know, if you get a chance, uh, Google Lucy Do and check out the MIT article. Really, really good reading. <laughs> and you. Uh, yeah, you know, you're you're an absolutely like one of the top uh, you know builders in this sport. You can see that in your record here with Hot Leaf Juice. I am really, really looking forward to seeing what you bring in 2022 here to Norwalk Havoc. And um, yeah, I mean, you're taking home one of the coolest trophies I've ever seen in my entire life. It's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, what do you say? You want to hoist it up high? Maybe we can take some photos? What yeah. Do you think? Just yeah, just yeah. grab it, just grab it. It's heavy. Oh, Be it's careful. apparently All really right. heavy. Yeah, okay. it's heavy. All right, heavy. one more round of applause for Lucy Dew and Hot Leaf Juice, yeah. winner of 12 pound full combat finals, Norwalk Havoc 2021. All right, here's your check from Austin McCord. You. $12,000 to Lucy Dew. There we go. Very cool. All right. Lucy, one more thing before you go. You sticking with 12s for next year, or do you think you're going to branch off into some other weight classes? Oh, um, interesting. I won't make any promises, uh, but definitely sticking to 12s at the very least. Awesome. awesome. I like that opportunity being left open. All right. Very Thank cool. you so much, Lucy. Really yeah. appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Another round of applause. Another round Amazing. of applause. Yeah, great, absolutely. Great work. <laughs> okay. Do we have the Dorflers? Where are the Dorfler brothers? No? No Dorflers? Okay. I guess we're just going to go to uh, Polyester versus Megatron. 
We're gonna get in one more fight in the 30s. Those Dorflers need to eat. Leave them alone. Yeah. Well, I was thinking we could call them up and we can give them some donuts. What do you think? Some donuts, maybe a check so they can go buy some dinner. All right, this is the final match of the loser's bracket. The winner of this match goes on to the finals to face Emulsifier. We have two, potentially three fights left for the evening. Here uh, with Megatron, Eight, we see Jameson seven, Go six, and uh, Polyester, five, David Jin uh, running Polyester two, with Christian Cooper. One. Fight, robots, fight. All right, uh, the audio there was a little off. We are still closing this box. It looks like the uh, the door is still open. Yeah, definitely it's don't want to start the fight with the door open. Not recommended. Slowly closing. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, Katie, uh, what, what do you think? Well, in talking with Jameson Go there, uh, he was saying that Megatron is in really good shape and uh, is looking forward to this little bit of a fight. Meanwhile, one side of polyester is having a hard time firing up. Uh, they thought they were going to be okay. They're tired. They need more caffeine. But that door looks like it's uh, closing up shop here. Whoa. Wait, so are we going to run this without Esther? Are we running a 19-pounder versus a 30-pounder here? That really changes the math, doesn't it? What is happening? Oh, it, it did become David and Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, we're taking Five, out Esther. This four, is going to be David three, Jen versus Jameson two, Go. One. Yeah, Five, two drivers that know each other very, fight. very well. Oh, my goodness. Oof. This is a 19-pound robot in Polly and a... 30 pound robot in Megatron. This is the semifinals of the loser's bracket. The winner of this match will go on to face <coughs> Emulsifier. Wow, and you're really seeing that extra weight from Megatron uh, be the deciding factor here, pushing Polly all around the box. Whoa, but Polly just got a good hit. Momentarily flipping Megatron on its head. Yeah. Megatron's long forks are really able to scoop up Polly and push it around the box. You see that expert level driving for David Jin. David Jin was just in the big box uh, driving Hot Leaf Juice. Now he's uh, driving Ooh. Polly here. Yeah, that's, that is why he was not up here with his partner Lucy. He was prepping for this match. He knew it was coming right afterwards. Just one right after the other today for him. You can see Polly uh, backing up to reset. Oh, and one of those little uh, fingers at the end of these forks is bent on a uh, Megatron, and Just now it is off. gone. It's probably good that it's gone, actually. Yeah. That's going to really help. Now, the way that Jameson Go likes to drive Megatron, uh, he will not sink that, uh, that spinning weapon into a live uh, robot. He wants to break the drum on Polly first and yeah. then go to work with that articulated chop saw. Or pin him in oh, a place I heard, where it's safe. I heard tap out. Was that a tap out who from Polly out? Yester? Yeah, who tapped out? Wow. That was a tap out from Polly Esther. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Megatron is your winner. Megatron will advance to face Emulsifier. That look on David's face said everything. That look of disappointment on David's face is palpable. Oh. So close. Oh, Somebody wow. give David a hug. Oh my God, David. We're gonna pop in there. All right, this is the end of the season for David Jin. So very close to, uh, to the final match. He with designed this robot with Megatron in mind. He knew that Megatron would have a hard time facing two All robots right, David, at real once. Quick, if we can get you. Oof. All right, we're gonna go to an interview now. Yeah, starting out here for. Yeah, so that right now, Polly Esther is really struggling from the get-go on that one, right? Losing Esther at one point. Polly is uh, when you're making sure it shuts off. The disappointment that David has in his face right now and his tone. Uh, What's interesting is, of course, how uh, this shows a lot of highs and lows within the battles. Him coming just off of uh, one high and now the low with polyester. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Driving Hot Leaf Juice to victory, helping, uh, you know, Lucy do his teammate uh, together win $12,000, and then to come so close to the final match of the 30s and to be denied right there at the very end. Oof. David Jin is absolutely one of the very best uh, drivers and builders in this sport. And uh, what, you're, what you're seeing here is iteration in real time, like development in real time. Yeah. I, I'm going to make a prediction. I think that um, all of the time that he spends here in the box is going to make him a very uh, dangerous driver to watch on BattleBots. The show returns in early January. We obviously know that Ribot is in the competition. Yeah. And uh, I would love to see the the um, kind of uh, the driving improvements from season to season because they are just exponential when you can get this much time inside of the box. Yeah, that's one of the things that we like to say about the Ribot team. They're here grinding it out every yeah. single competition, just putting in the work, putting in the hours. And uh, it really shows in their performances. That's why it's so disappointing when he lo lost that and uh, wasn't able to proceed forward and wasn't able to go forward with the plan that he wanted to have. Two bots against Jameson Go, against um, Megatron there. It really would have given them a decided advantage instead of that that 19 pound disadvantage that he had. So let's go ahead and go back to an interview with David. It looks like we're ready for that. Katie, how are you doing over there? Yeah, I, I think I'm great, but I think David right now is working through a whole lot of emotions and feelings. Walk us through that last battle. Well, uh, it always sucks to not have your teammate with you. Um, unfortunately, we've gone through quite the gauntlet today. Um, we've run into a whole bunch of problems, and the fact that my team was able to get uh, these bots as far as they have is quite an incredible feat. Um, I decided since this is like kind of do or die at this point, I might as well try to take the 1v1. Um, the disappointment isn't necessarily the fact that we lost, it's that uh, we, had a, we had a really good chance there for a moment. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll have to take a look at the bot to see what went wrong. Um, at, at this time, I have no idea what went wrong. But uh, yeah, it was kind of a failure on our own. It was, it was a bit of a failure on our own uh, part here because I don't think we took a direct hit that caused the failure or something on our end uh, went wrong. But um, as my day and my team's day comes to a close, uh, huge thank you to everyone who came out here with me. Uh, there's no way we would have gone this far without the uh, extra hands that we had. Yeah, it was incredible. I think every time that we were over there in the pits, something was going on within one of the bots and one of your team members. What are some of the positive takeaways that you can kind of carry into next year at this point? Well, first off, teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, I chose these people for a reason and uh, today proved that. Um, but uh, I think we have a lot of good going forward. We know um, our bots conceptually work. There are some uh, problems, I guess, um, and some things about repairability that we need to work out, um, especially at a competition that is this fast paced. Um, but yeah, I'm really proud of everyone. I think we can all go home with our heads held high. Uh, obviously, I'm coming off the disappointment of a loss right now, but uh, yeah, overall, a really great day still. Yeah, there was a bit of a disappointment with their loss, but a lot of positive takeaways. And as you guys are saying, it's really providing him the tools to be able to continue in this as a, as a career moving forward, building robots. Congratulations on, on the job well done. Thank you. Yeah. Guys? I want to give a, another round of applause to David Jin for yeah. all of the work today. So much good work. So many entertaining fights. Uh, thank you so much, David, for everything you've done for us today. That was fantastic. And for the year. Yeah, and for the year. Absolutely. All right. Now there's one more fight here left of the night. Uh, this will be Megatron versus Emulsifier. Now this is a rematch. In their first matchup, Emulsifier a absolutely eviscerated Megatron. They really did. Yeah, they really did. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens going into that. Megatron, uh, I'm sure, was planning for this fight while prepping for this fight that they just had. Yeah. Uh, so they probably already have their configurations ready to go. They have 20 minutes that they're able to use to get the bot going. You saw Jameson disappeared from ringside very quickly after that fight was over. He is using every single second on the clock of that 20 minutes to get his bot ready. It's going to be a tight one. It's going to be a tight yeah. one. And then most fires just been sitting back there ready to go. Yeah. So. yeah. The 2021 season of Norwalk Havoc will end either here in 20 minutes or 40 minutes. That's right. Um, which is incredible. If uh, Jameson Go is able to defeat Emulsifier, that will be Emulsifier's first loss of the day, and they will go into a sudden uh, death rematch. 
uh, which would be the 40 minute option. If Emulsifier is able to successfully uh, defeat Megatron one more time, they will go home with the Golden Brett and $15,000 in cash. Now, um, I guess as we are coming potentially to the last 20 minutes of, uh, <laughs> of our season, uh, Kyle, Chris, I would love to get your thoughts on uh, the Norwalk Havoc season so far. We've seen every single fight here of the entire year. Yeah. It has been like just an honor and a dream, you know, to see these fights cage side. Um, I don't know, like, I guess kind of thinking back to like when we started the year, kind of wild, like we were like still in the middle of the pandemic. Yep. Wearing masks. Yep, wearing masks. There was in the no audience. Booth. Nope, no audience. We were pre, uh, pre-vaccination. pre That's true. Yeah. It was sketchy as heck. Yep. And uh, still, like, competitors were coming out from across the country to uh, come and fight here. We had competitors coming from Mexico even back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sol and his team flew out here, and they got their vaccination in New York, which That's is right, great. while they were here. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, now, um, I am uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested, you know, in hearing your thoughts about um, – about uh, about the season, Kyle. You know, as you reflect, uh, I think this is the best season we've had. I mean, clearly, like yeah. this is like the level of competition has been so good. Uh, like so many things in this past year, you know, there there was there were some some situations that made everything suboptimal to quote Jameson <laughs> Go. Yeah. Um, but we still got these great fights. We still got these really great great progressions and stories that we got to see these builders go through throughout the year. I, that just makes me want to see how well they're able to perform next year with less impedance. Um, all right, so we're going to go over to Kate real quickly. It sounds like she's got an interview ready for us. <laughs> Kate, what do you got going on over there? I'm just checking out what's happening with Emuls Emulsifier. This is one of those uh, bots that you guys have already done what you needed to do once with it. Why is that? Well, we're doing the same thing again against Megatron and hoping for the best. We kind of had a suspicion we'd end up fighting him again. He, Jameson always has a way of <laughs> getting to the final, so uh, we're just going to run the same config and hope for the best. So for those who maybe weren't with us earlier today, I don't know how many hours ago that was, what have you guys done differently today to fight Megatron that maybe the robot didn't start out with? For one, we added a much thicker top plate to protect our internals if he does come down on us with his weapon. And then we took our titanium wedge off and added these forks to help get up under him because his forks would get under our wedge. So we're trying to win the ground game there. So you have a ground game going on. What else does Megatron bring to the table that really amplifies the competition? He's probably the best driver here and uh, very good at strategy. So we're gonna have to get a lucky hit or two. So. <laughs> Well, it's happened already once before. There's a chance that it could happen again, knowing uh, that you guys know how to get the job done. Yeah, we'll uh, see how it goes. We're gonna, we got two robots ready to go <laughs> and he'll have to beat us twice. So. Oh, so the best. <laughs> I guess so, crossing fingers over here, but the, the little, little nudge that I just heard is they have two robots that are ready to go and they've had that time. So in case there is another round that needs to come around. These guys are going to be ready. Yeah, real wow. advantage for them yeah. moving forward for sure. And you can see Foambot, of course, ready to go. That might be the deciding factor in that match. We're not really sure. Yeah. Um, so we've got a little bit of time now leading up until this fight. Megatron's got a lot of work to do over on their side of the pits. I'm How excited to see how it goes. How much time do you think we've got left on the clock? It's got to be like 15 minutes, Yeah, right? I think we're probably at about 15. Yeah. yeah. Now, Ryan Saslow keeps uh, motioning to us. I can't hear you. Oh my goodness, we, we got, got some the Dorflers. What? Give those men some donuts. All right, please. here we go. Let's go. All right, so bring them on over. All right, so second place winners of the 12 pound bracket. And there you have Huge. Uh, absolutely, I love this bot. Just going to move this right yeah, there. Yeah, give them, uh, yeah, let them see. See okay. what's going on. All right, uh, we've got Don Dorfler here, uh, the captain of Team Brutus. You know, uh, I would love to hear about your experience today. You qualified so many robots. Uh, you know, what, uh, what, what, what was your experience like uh, today at the competition? Uh, it was amazing. Had fights, had great fights. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite fight from today, Don? Uh, I'd have to say Knockout versus Yahoo. That was pretty yeah. chaotic. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, oh, and sorry, huge, go ahead. Huge and Bobby. Yeah, huge. Yeah, that was really ridiculous. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Kyle, I called it. I said that he, they were going to run huge, and I also predicted that they were going to beat Bobby with that. You were correct. Both Roll times. back the tape. I did say that. <laughs> all right. This is an incredible robot. You know, we are huge fans of huge. Uh, this was the robot that had Chris fall in love with uh, combat robotics. And, um, you know, when Chris initially came and pitched me, he was like, look, we got to go to Norwalk Havoc because Jonathan Schultz is there and he brings like a miniature version of huge. And uh, I was like, I'm sold. All right, let's get in the car. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go see it, you know? Um, you know, Don, coming here and uh, making it all the way through the brackets um, and winning second place, you know, what does this mean for your, your season next year? Uh, we'll definitely be back. Yeah. Uh, be better and stronger and going to be harder to kill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that we have some donuts. Is that right? Yeah, so Ooh. first and foremost, these guys deserve some donuts. So yeah. apple cider oh, donuts. Full six pack. We get to eat. Full yeah. six pack. You <laughs> finally get to eat. That's the first thing we want to give you. The second thing we want to give you is this check for $4,000. Thank you guys so much for the work that you put in today. You uh, absolutely deserve this. And uh, thank Thanks. you. You're coming back next year, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. I like that. Good, good. Don, we're going to see you in the judges' booth again sometime soon. What do you think? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> and yeah, we'll be back. All right. A round of applause for the Dorfler brothers and thank Team you Brutus. Thank you, guys. Running so many robots so successfully here today and with huge. All right. Thank you so much, Dorflers, and I'll see you soon. All right. All right, now we were uh, talking about our retrospective on the year. Maybe we can run a highlights package and uh, look back on some of our favorite fights of the year. Chasing after DDE. Response. Eruption. Erupting Doom into the corner. Doom was not a good exchange. Alex getting up the speed, getting that gyro block to help the kind of move around. The wheeled horizontal. Perfect for taking off the lifters on copy and paste. Wombo just running over top. And he runs it straight. Oh, Aggressive driving, soon hit, Judge is doing a kick and a two jack move. Oh. Wow, off track, he was having a little bit of trouble getting some traction. And now it's Blueberry Oh, wow, that is not good. There's exposed wires, there's exposed pieces coming out. Fragment trying to get back. Can they self right? Traction? Oh, there we go. Slowly That's the last dismantling Sepio one. And there goes the weapon. I mean, we are just seeing some Dieter Bar dominance right here. Oh, nice. nice. Trying to get around to that other wheel. Oh, oh. Air mobility for sure. Sundial's weapon does not seem to be functioning anymore. A lot of, of team members from Ribot. Especially with a weapon. I'm not able to keep Phenomenon oh. away. Phenomenon. The competitor who was here last time was, what was it, Drunken Peasant? Well, we have, can't even tell you. How many of those movies here? Like, and they're the the launching <laughs> Smee up into the air, putting them back. Oh, and a big hit on Droopy the there. In place where Star Child. Let's see an actual fight. Oh. <laughs> oh. We'll see how it works out, but this time around. Oh. We go. And that's a oh. whole bunch oh. of pieces. Oh. A lot of drive. Oh! oh! Did not come out of the ability. Oh! Just off his pinballing everywhere. 
one minute left. That was on 14 was amazing, and now it's gone. But they're getting some, some hits, some nice hits on Demi Gorgon. I can't believe it. They're not able to. Corner is motion. Show oh, this is chaos. This is chaos. I love it. Wow, look at Whoa. that. This is of those hits on the top of the bot, and they've got to be very careful when they launch that. Oh! oh. Everything about this. This is the best day of my life, Kyle. Uh, is that one of those door springs? Yes, that is a door spring. Whoa, nice wow. hit there. Oh, oh from Judge's Dream. Oh, that was a nice big hit. Oh, we're now more than oh, there we go. was the bite. Oh, that weapon does not sound good. Whoa. Force. <laughs> We're loading. Oh, and their weapon is locked up. Whoa, there we go. Now, look at that pile up there. There is nothing you can do with that much power on top of your robot. I don't care if you're 12 pounds and everybody else is three, two, one. That's a knockout. <laughs> Kyle, what Kyle, a proof I've never been happier in my life. This, tournament. this is the best thing ever. <laughs> Kyle, all right, listen, watching that highlight reel brings me so much joy, all right? <laughs> You're like, tearing up. We, we've seen so many great fights this year. Like, 2021 was like, uh, I don't know, the worst, but also the best, you know? <laughs> yeah. The best when it comes to watching, you know, small yeah. robots destroy each other. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, like... Uh, I, I think I think like the the really cool thing, uh, you know, kind of just watching them all back like that is uh, we've had just so many incredibly entertaining moments this year. We have, and um, yeah, I, I completely just... forgot about the fire penguin. Yeah, was that this year? Mm -hmm. Was it really? No. Yeah. Oh my god, how old am I? Like, how many <laughs> years has it been? February. Yeah, yeah, that was the first. Yeah. That was February. yeah, that was the yeah. first event. Yeah, and I think it was one of the earliest matches. That's correct. Yeah, like they just threw the fire penguin in there. I saw Izzy running around here earlier. Around. She was uh, she was piloting the uh, the fire penguin. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was wild. All right, uh, let's uh, go check in with Lindsay. Lindsay, how are you doing back there? Hello. <laughs> you like my hat? <laughs> oh my God, Kyle! I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a super chat, and this is from Team Just Cause Robotics with Seth, Seth Schaefer. Um, so, awesome event as always. Wish I could have been there. Thanks to all NHRL staff and you wonderful announcers. And get ready, Division version 3.0 coming in 2022. Might even have Shrapnel Mine in May. And a new 12 pound in progress. Ooh, fire Very cool. emoji. Very cool. Yeah. Do you think maybe it's a firebot, Seth? Could be. Could Ooh. be. Seth is uh, is a big fan of dangerous designs, so uh, we'll see. Yeah. Seth Schaefer is a very prolific YouTube, uh, you know, content creator. If you're interested in building a beetle weight, uh, really check out Seth Schaefer and Just Cause Robotics. He's got these really great uh, tutorials. He's got cost breakdowns. He's got videos about uh, event recaps and, uh, you know, these kind of build diaries. Uh, really check out Seth's uh, channel if you can. Really, really great content for, uh, for combat robot builders. Yeah. Yeah, or if you just want to build a 30-pounder and you don't know what you're doing, you could always just get Seth on your team, <laughs> steal some of his tools, and, yeah. and lots of his time. Yeah, there you go. All right, uh, let's go over to uh, Katie in the pits. <laughs> I'm just following, following uh, Jameson. Go just kind of take his swagger step into consideration <laughs> here. There he goes. Wow. I'd say he's probably ready for this one uh, to get under his belt. So, Jameson, real quick, as you're making your moves, and, and man, that's some swagger that you have. Uh, what's going on with Megatron? How was the repairs? We got everything back together. Uh, Team Megatron has done a ton of really hard work. And, I mean, this robot looks almost as good as when it came in through the door. So, 
that's why he has a little swagger to his self step right now. Uh, is there any of those big changes that were made that anyone should be aware of? Well, not really. I mean, they're not, they're not improvements, but it's just spares. Suboptimum? Suboptimal. But the thing is, remember <laughs> is, I'm loving life. Uh, the team has done a ton of really <laughs> hard work, and we're at least second place. So you got to remember the, the good stuff, and uh, we're already super happy with that. Yeah. Wow. All right, so let's do the math here. Jameson Go, if he takes some second place, he's going to go home with, uh, no, no, five, nine thousand dollars here right. today. If he wins fifteen thousand, what is it? Nineteen thousand dollars. Correct. Not too shabby. So no. he's ending tonight with either nine thousand dollars or nineteen thousand dollars. It's a pretty good day. Either way, he's taking us out for wings. Wow. Amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's check in with Katie, and I think Emulsifier is wheeling themselves into the box. I think the real question is, is what's your guys' swagger step? What's your dance moves? <laughs> yeah, I let's go, dance. Matt. He doesn't dance. dance Matt, you says, dance. Okay, Come on. If y'all win, we will be seeing some dancing. <laughs> what's the, what's the headspace right now for the team? We're just adrenaline's pumping, ready to go in there and, and see if we can do it and pull it off. But Jameson's a hell of a driver, so it wouldn't uh, surprise me if he beat us twice, but we're going to try. Well, they do have one win under their belt uh, against Megatron. Wishing you guys the best of luck out there. All right. Now, uh, as these two builders are loading into the box, we see uh, Jameson Go and Megatron in there already, and I'm seeing a worrying amount of uh, pink duct tape on the top of Emulsifier, Kyle. I mean, that's that's what's holding down that UHMW armor on their top plate. That, they said that's good for one shot. This team's very familiar with this material. UHMW is actually the ablative armor that they use on their big heavyweight bot, Shatter. Um, it's, it's great at absorbing impact. It's great at uh, diffusing kinetic energy. Oh, wow. Look at all of that duct tape. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta hold it down. Gotta hold it down. So they're also running uh, Stickbot and Foambot. Because why not? Team Bots FC, uh, they, they, this is their second time coming out to Norwalk Havoc. Every single time that uh, this, <laughs> this team puts a bot in the box, I... T I, I you know, make a case, Adam Wrigley. You got to bring like a 30 pounder to this. All right. Yeah, I would love to see um, Knock Off White. Knock Off White come to this competition. Uh, it's in pieces. He said he said he's got to do some work to put it back together, but I would absolutely love to see it here. It put in some great work at Motorama back in 2020. I, I would love to see that bot come back out. This is the 30 pound finals. If Emulsifier is able to defeat Megatron here, that will be it. We will give out a golden Brett. If uh, Megatron is able to defeat Emulsifier, we're going to go into a 20-minute sudden death repair and uh, rematch. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right, so the Minibots starting us off here, getting in the way, getting in Megatron's face, acting as a distraction as they do. And when you can see Jameson goes running that big old chonky wedge on the front of uh, Megatron, intent on breaking the disc of Emulsifier. Tossing Stickbot aside, pushing Emulsifier into the corner. Yeah, this is this is the Megatron you want to see. Oh, 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 huge hit right onto the top wow. plate of Emulsifier. That that blade of her just exploded That's off the exactly top what you of Emulsifier, to do. leaving Emulsifier. Uh, wow, I think it just broke one of the lights. What is happening? <laughs> All right, Emulsifier has its one unstick. That was so impressive. Oh, wow. Jameson was right on top of them. As soon as they came out of that corner, he was right there in their face. Now, Emulsifier jockeying for position, trying to get into some way that they can actually do some damage on Jameson's bot. If they can connect with that weapon, you know they're going to do massive damage. That thing hits hard. But Jameson's just feeding them that front plow. That's all he's giving them to hit. I think that the geometry looks good. Oh, he could probably could attack he do it? The, uh, the left-hand side of that robot here. 
Ooh. is very, very careful whenever he brings that arm down. Oh, and again, wow, here we go. Nice work there by Jamison Go. This is, yeah, this is one of those moments that he has to oh! see. No! Oh my goodness! That could change the entire trajectory of this match. Oh, that was an error from Megatron. Let's see if uh, Megatron Looks is... like the, uh, the arm is still functioning and the weapon wow. is still spinning. 60 wow. seconds left here in this fight. This has been a slugfest. It is a little bit uh, askew. Askew. But it still works. That's what matters. He's able to deliver the hits with it. Jameson goes, got around to the side of Emulsifier and pushing it, uh, showing control. 45 seconds left here. Kyle. Oh! Oh! What is about to happen here? Let's go. Oh. Not quite close <laughs> enough there, but, ooh, right up against the wall. Huge hit. Look how much debris is inside of this box. Well, those mini bots are just pieces at this point. Oh, no! That was the treads on the right side of Emulsifier. That gives them all of the grip and purchase that they need to move around the bot. That was an a, a oh, addition oh, that they Oh, wow. Gave. You see the top plate coming off of Emulsifier. Oh, no! oh, my goodness! 15 seconds left that here. Wow! Brutal. Absolutely brutal. He's going in oh, for a second seconds. one. It looks like 10, The weapon on Emulsifier nine, is eight, dead. Seven, six, five. Wow! Four. Wow! One! That's the end of this fight. This one goes to the judges. The match ends with Jameson Go dancing around the box and wow. his bot driving in circles and Emulsifier is in pieces. Yeah. Oh my wow. goodness. All right, listen. Uh, this big box is filled with debris. Yeah. There are bits and pieces of Minibot everywhere. Absolutely. Uh, at one point, Jameson Go kicked Stickbot so high into the air that it looked like it was going to break one of the lights. It did knock it offline for just a second. Yeah, we had, a, we had a little flicker in the box because of that. As we go to the judges, I feel like I can guess how they're going to go. But uh, as they deliberate, Kyle, your thoughts on this fight. Was it closer than you thought it was going to be? It's the way I thought the first fight those. of Big the day numbers, between these Kyle. two was going to go. Big numbers. It is Megatron. Megatron has defeated Emulsifier. We are going to go into one more match. This will be the third time that these two robots face each other today. And this will be the last match of 2021 Norwalk Havoc. Absolutely. So wow. 20 minutes to get their bots ready. Now, it sounds like Emulsifier has a full version of their bot ready to go. Megatron looks good. Megatron looks good. Megatron wow. looks good. They've got to look at that arm. That arm took a little bit of damage, it looked like, on that one hit from Emulsifier, but... Did you see the emotion from Jameson Go? Yeah, very excited about that. He was very excited about he that fight. He was pumped. So pumped. I mean, why wouldn't he be? What a great showing. Uh, he's had a day full of ups and downs, and that yeah. was a big high for him today. He's he got a good one chance. match away from $19,000 in, in prize money. He's got here. a good chance for $19,000 in prize money right here. Good and walking around money right there. <laughs> yes. Some pretty yeah. decent walking around money. All right. Uh, we're going to go into an instant replay here. This was such a good match that we're going to watch it again. Incredible. Now, one of the big things that you want to look for with Megatron is control. Now, uh, Jameson Go ran his very long forks here in hopes of staying uh, away from the, the massive vertical disc on Emulsifier and uh, also ran his big heavy plow, his kind of Sawblaze-esque plow, so, uh, because he knew that that plow could take a, a punch straight to the face from Emulsifier's disc. Multiple punches, really, yeah. is what we saw throughout this match. And Megatron uh, did a good job of not being distracted by those, you know... Here we go. Yeah. First big hit. He really used those mini bots to his advantage in so many ways. I mean, look at that. You see yeah. Emulsifier stuck up on top of their own foam bot there. Five hat uh, Fluffy coming over here to uh, to extricate these two bots from the pink corner. And yeah. Fluffy so gentle, such a gentle giant. Wow! And look at that. Stick bot is dead. Uh, foam bot is dead. And look at all of this debris in this box. I. I think that uh, for this next match, we might have to run one of those uh, 
Gravedigger RC cars that uh, that <laughs> Bots FC brought because I don't think Stickbot and uh, Foambot are going to make it back yeah, in. Yeah, they're probably not going to happen. And by the way, those are not Gravedigger bots. Those are straight up Bots FC branded material. Hashtag not a copyright infringement. <laughs> wow, amazing. Yeah, and, and I mean, we saw all of the control here going to uh, to Emulsify, uh, sorry, to uh, to Megatron. And uh, really, this was the only moment here where Emulsifier was able to rack up any significant points. Yeah, that was a nice hit. Uh, finding uh, Megatron on its head, that was really the moment for Emulsifier to capitalize, but they weren't able to. The geometry of these two robots made that really tough. We're seeing these super long forks really just kind of keeping away these two robots from one another. And that's what you've got to do if you're uh, Jameson Go and trying to beat Emulsifier. What do you think, Kyle? Are we looking at maybe a Jameson Go win here? It's going to be Cinderella a... Cinderella story. It's going to be a tough road to cry, uh, climb for him, but if anybody can do it, it's Jameson Go. Can he defeat Emulsifier twice? Interesting. You know, I think the team behind Emulsifier oh already answered gosh. that question. They said, yeah, yeah, he, the could, tread. he could beat him twice. It almost looked like uh, Emulsifier just popped its own tread off. I think they did, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And there we Holy go. That's, smokes! Look that's at that! When, look, at the, look at the lid on, on Fluffy flying up and down just by being next to that hit. Now the weapon on Emulsifier was dead. If this match, if, if this hit had happened, you know, uh, 60 seconds left to go, I mean, this would have absolutely been um, been just a knockout, but it really looks like uh, they were saved by the bell there. What was the so end. impressive to me about that fight is that thick plate on the top of Emulsifier, you saw it was like, what, a half inch of material, and there wasn't that much damage yeah. to the plate, but that impact caused yeah. the plate to just sink down and then bounce up off the top of the pot. Who knows what it did to the inside of that bot, but they weren't moving anymore after that. I think they're going to run the other version of they the emulsifier that they yeah, have. Yeah, the question is, are they going to be able to get that top plate to actually fit on the other version, which is, you know, they brought that plate just for mm. Megatron, and uh, if they can't run it, that's going to be... Here's what they do, all right? More duct tape. Now, right now, yeah. behind the scenes, in the pit, I'm sure that the most frantic restoration project ever undertaken is happening as we speak. I, I want to get some pit cameras in there capturing what's happening at both of these tables. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, Megan, please, or, sorry. Kate. Kate, Kate please Yeah, add. jump in here. Let's uh, let's uh, take a look at, uh, at this. It looks like this is... This robot's not looking right, Kyle. No, that's that's the bot that they're not bringing into the next fight, I'm pretty sure. Hey, guys. Yeah, I'm out here. Hey, Kate. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, check out that robot. Um, actually, let's go ahead and take a look behind us here. Jonathan, if you move the camera, Emulsifier is in the test box. Oh, wow. Yep. So here's what's going on. These guys are trying to get this thing squared away. The real question, like you guys were saying, is, is will that top fit? Uh, that real thick top that they had had before. What's the take right now? Are you guys thinking it's going to be okay? I'm trying to bend it back over in the shop to get the top plate back on, and I think we're going to be able to do it. And and this obviously be number the the one that you guys had saved then the backup. Yes. This is the spare bot, so we're just going to test it right now, see where we're at. Oh, we're going to see a live test here. That's pretty exciting. Oh, it looks good, Kyle. Looks Look at that. Looks real good. Looks real good. Little, little tough to drive. Not quite as good as it was before. You gotta wonder what that top plate's gonna do to the drive too. A little bit, so yeah. it doesn't drive quite as well. So treads don't contact the ground Ooh. evenly. But that's all we got to go with. So. <laughs> wow. So that's what we're going with. <laughs> Meanwhile, over here, I want to lead you guys over to what's happening with Jameson Go and Megatron. As you can see, they're trying to peel it together. But one of the things I think is really interesting is you know the Megatron, the Ron part of the name? Well, Jameson was just telling me his first childhood robot was named Ron. Oh. And this is basically it being brought back to life time and time again, a little bigger and bigger and a little more 
powerful, I think, would be the right way to say that. I did not know that. Yeah. It's just the... I really uh, fell in love with the dustpan architecture, and I thought it was really interesting as a kid, and that there weren't too many builders that were kind of capitalizing on that. So it's maybe a little bit of an uphill battle. It's definitely a weird design, but I mean, I think a lot of people really enjoy watching it fight, uh, and we've improved it so much since the original inspiration. So, yeah. I like that you said I think a few people like watching it fight, something like that. I think anybody still left in this building just enjoyed, and online, and those in the community, uh, really enjoyed watching it fight Emulsifier there. What's your takeaway from that? It's possible. <laughs> I wasn't sure it was possible because that first fight was such a butt kicking. So, yes, batteries, please. So, we can do this. We can do this. And if you do do it, what are you going to do with that money? Uh, I'm going to take Team Megatron, which is Aaron, Aaron, and Ginger, and we're going to go party. <laughs> <laughs> wow. At least he's honest. Yeah, wow. <laughs> All right, we'll let you get back. <laughs> a little party, you know. That's now, fine, just uh, a little. Now, Kate, this is very exciting. Uh, we see a shot here of Aaron Hill uh, from the Captain of Tantrum working on the bottom of Megatron. Aaron flew out here from Silicon Valley to uh, to see this competition. Uh, this is his first time out to Norwalk Havoc, and uh, he tells me that uh, he may be building a robot to compete here in 2022. Whoa. Oh, yeah. I would Aaron, love to see that. You're kind of a topic of conversation right now. <laughs> a little, little wave. There we go. <laughs> He's a little Are busy. you building a robot to compete in 2022? I intend to. Oh. All right, I'll take intention all there's, day long, Aaron. That's good. Yeah. yeah, there's a few hoot and hollers around here. Yeah, that would be pretty pretty special and obviously paired up here with Jameson Go and learning a few things around uh, the block as well. What are you? What's some of the things you're taking away? Uh, tiny robots are way easier and faster to work on than big ones. <laughs> so that's nice. Also, it's way less complicated than what I usually make. That's also nice. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll let you get back to it. Obviously, it's a little bit of work here and there. Chris, you were talking about some of the uh, the thrashing that could have been happening back here in the pits. What's your take at this point? It's wow. I mean, it's uh, this is this is crunch time. This is one of my favorite things to watch. Um, I, I I'm. You know, it's one of the things that you really don't get a good chance to see in, in the sport. Um, you know, whether you're yeah. watching something on television, whether you're watching something in a an, an event, if you're in a live audience, like this is this is that heads down crunch time and like watching watching these builders work. It's awesome. I love watching. Yeah, I mean, at the uh, at the very end of the night, I mean, these are the very best builders in North America and you can see them the way that they work in the pits. If it's your first time coming out to compete, you know, uh, your pit space is uh, pigsty and uh, you look like you are running around with your hair caught on fire. But uh, this is uh, smooth, this is fast, this is deliberate action. They know exactly what they need to do in the next 10 minutes to put on the very best fight possible. Amazing. Kyle, what do you think? Uh, one of my favorite takeaways from that interview that we just saw was uh, that Aaron Hill said smaller robots are easier to work on than big ones. It made me remember that Aaron has never built a smaller robot. He jumped right into heavyweights. Huh. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that is true. This is literally his first experience jumping into these weights. I love it. I think that's so fun. Aaron Hill is running two robots at BattleBots uh, this season, both Tantrum, his original robot, and Blip. And uh, listen, I am a 100% dyed-in-the-wool Blip fan. I was actually overhearing conversations where he was like pitching ideas to Jameson for Blip for next season, and some really? of them were pretty silly. Yeah, really? I'm very excited. Wow, awesome. I think it's really cool that uh, that Aaron Hill has flown in from California, you know, just a couple days ago, and uh, is working in the pits here. Yeah, just here to help some friends, you know. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, genuinely cool person, and uh, I would love to see him bring a bot. Now, here's here's a thought. Here's a thought that might be interesting. Multibots successful in the 30-pound weight class, as we've learned. What do you think about these two working on a multibot together? Hmm. Interesting. Isn't it? 
Yeah, I mean, Aaron is one of the very best drivers, you know, um, at BattleBots. And uh, yeah, you know, creating some kind of super team that uh, does nothing but win here at Norwalk Havoc would be pretty awesome. I would love to see that. I now it looks like they're trying to figure out which wheel to put here onto uh, the left side of Megatron. You know, deciding if, uh, if these wheels are good. But yeah, wow, interesting. Probably have about, what, 10 minutes left on the clock? Yeah, I think that's accurate. Mm. So interesting to be ending our day in the 30 pound weight class. Kyle, they are screwing on the bottom plate. Megatron is essentially done, it looks like. Yeah. Wow. They're gonna do a little bit of QC, a little quality check, just to make sure they didn't mess anything up, but uh, yeah. What do you think? Do you think maybe uh, he's gonna take it over to the test box? Does he, has a, does he have enough yeah, time yeah. for that? Got a few minutes left, I'm sure minutes, that yeah. that's, that's a good idea. Ooh, oh, it's hey! ten, ten and a half minutes left. Jamo wow. is like, I will show you exactly how much time I have left. Wow, he was able to take apart this robot, check things in uh, less than 10 minutes, which is amazing. Yeah, one of the things Aaron also mentioned was serviceability on these bots. You know Jameson designs his bot with that in mind. Um, and that is one of the key factors, deciding factors in this competition. How well can you service that bot? How easy is it for you to take it apart and put it back together? Listen, I could watch this for the next 10 minutes, no problem. It's right? pretty cool. Look how clean this table is too, by the way. Do you see tools everywhere? Do you see a mess everywhere? Do you see trash no. everywhere? No. No. He's got just the tools he needs right okay. in front of him. All right, Aaron, as we continue talking about you here on, on air, what makes uh, this league here in the series so special that caught your eye? I think it's just like you can count on consistency. Like there's so many events a year, there's a qualifying setup. There's no rigmarole to go through. Because when you're trying to do BattleBot stuff, there's a whole lot of hoops to get to jump through. Here it's like, no, come have fun. You register, you show up, you have some fun. Yeah. And the level of competition is insane. So. Now it seems that way. And at this point, the guys were also talking about how, talking about insane, you jumped right into heavyweights <laughs> and kind of skipped over a few little things along the way. Yeah, uh, I have yet to build a beetle weight or anything smaller than a heavyweight in the combat land. <laughs> uh, don't recommend that. So this is definitely a learning curve. So, but it's it's fun seeing all these in person because you don't get a sense of scale as much for watching the live streams, and these are bigger than I thought they were. So, what are going to be some of those challenges to go back and build, say, a beetle or something? Uh, for me, a whole lot of it's getting all that I'm gonna say tribal knowledge you build up as far as what's good, what's not. I've asked a ton of people questions. Like I've asked Calvin a ton of questions. I've asked Jameson a ton of questions. Some of the other BattleBot builders who build small stuff too, and. Everyone's super helpful, and that's nice, because coming into it knowing nothing, at, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't scale the same. And then if you and Jameson were to kind of pair up and do a little something something together, what does that kind of thing look like? I have no idea. <laughs> but it could be cool? Uh, it'd be fun, yeah. We're on opposite sides of the country, so it makes it weird. Yeah, but there's airplanes and stuff you know, these days. So, well, I know that everyone's appreciated having you here as well and seeing your face and the potential rumor that we may or may not have busted here uh, that you will be building a robot next year. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and look, Jameson Go has put his robot into uh, the test box. He's gonna wanna do a functional test here. See if everything looks good. I suppose if it doesn't, he's got eight minutes to uh, take it apart. This is, uh, this is really the, the experience that you see here. He was able to fix his robot with enough time that he was able to test it, which is amazing. Yeah, that is a rare commodity for so many of these teams. And he just bakes it right into the process. Oh, wow, that is looking good. Everything works, everything functions, everything's doing what he wants, it looks like. I would love to get a thumbs up, thumbs down from Jameson about uh, whether everything looks good in the test box. Is that a thumbs up? Ooh, I don't know. There might be something that's suboptimal. The big question here is, uh, is that a thumbs up or a thumbs moderate or a thumbs down? That's a, that's a thumbs up for the time we have. Ooh. <laughs> that's wow. a good answer. So what is it, suboptimal? <laughs> Are we? <laughs> 
<laughs> I think a few of us are taking it now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing it. There we go. The word All of the right. day. I love it. So suboptimal at this point, but it but it's in good it's in as good a condition as we can be right now. Suboptimal. <laughs> His word, not mine. Shirts. There we go. Wow. And over here, as we continue to make this move, we're making it pretty in pink. What's your, what's your, what's your thoughts? Just gonna go at it again, and hopefully we get it this time. Um, there's really no time to change anything, so same configuration, and hopefully we pull it off. How is it fitting up here on top? It's a little bent, but we made it fit. We pounded it flat and took it to the belt sander, so we got it on there. All right, guys, it's almost battle time. Wow, oh my gosh. Got 10 minutes left on the season. It's gonna come down to this one last match. Ooh, the anticipation, Kyle, it's delicious. I'm I love excited. it. I'm excited to see what these two bring to the table with their uh, suboptimal configurations. Here in Norwalk, Connecticut, it is 12.53 a.m. It is now a completely different day. It is Sunday. We're That's coming true. up on our 15th hour. <laughs> 15 hours. Yes, yeah, 15 hours on the live stream. I love it. I love it. Wow. All right, and you can see there Matt Boris. He is cleaning the treads on his robot. He wants to try and get as much sawdust out of those treads as possible. He uh, doesn't want to, uh, to, to lose any traction inside of the box. All right, let's, uh, let's go over to Lindsay. Lindsay, our friend. This might be uh, our last time seeing you on, uh, on camera for 2021. What's, uh, what's the live chat saying? Well, we, we actually have a super chat, Ooh. and this is from Chad New from Yahoo. Uh, and he says, thanks to all. Yahoo will be back next year, stronger than ever before. And then this is fun. Uh, Lindsay, how big of a pumpkin are you going to grow? So I don't think that this is a known fact or a well-known fact about Chad in this world, um, but he's a championship pumpkin grower. What? <laughs> He grows pumpkins that are, are over a thousand pounds what? large. And he heard our podcast over the summer that where I talked about growing tomatoes. And he remembered this time to bring me seeds. Oh my God, Lindsay, <laughs> what? Wait, are you going to grow a thousand pound pumpkin? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, we're going for 1200 <laughs> 1200 <laughs> But like multiple. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. Listen, I've next time I see Chad, I've got to ask him about these pumpkins. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That you can have cool. one yeah. seed. On his Facebook, that's all over. He has like these massive, like you need a crane to move them, which does make me wonder if I grow these on our lawn, like what do I do with them? them after? Yeah. No, you eat them. You make like a pumpkin like you stew or them. something. Yeah, they're what? not they're not food. What? No, they're not food. Sadly. Yeah. I, I know Are what these... will happen. I have to go out there with a sledgehammer and remove <laughs> a thousand pound pumpkin <laughs> from our front yard. <laughs> All right. I mean I think Thanks, listen, Chad. The first five hundred pounds is fun, right? But then after that it's just tedious. At what point how many pounds does it need to be before you stop eating it because it's too woody or whatever it is? You can't eat it it's like I Oh my God, Kyle! Look at this! They've brought the grave digger. Hey, hashtag not grave digger. <laughs> wow! All right, they are uh, weighing in this robot. They're trying to figure out how much weight they have for this match. Interesting. Let's just call it Shatter Digger. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. It's an interesting name. Let's see Adam Wrigley here. Taking off tape, looking at tape. And they also have the Smeedleweight kit right there. It's their other me mini bot that they'll be running. We see Megatron walking uh, past the camera here in the foreground, clearly ready, going to the uh, the cage. Jameson Go is wheeling in Megatron. He said uh, back there in the test box that this is suboptimal, but uh, listen. I don't know if I've ever seen Jameson Go say that he is fully prepared for a match. He is always looking for weaknesses in yeah. his design. But uh, this Megatron is looking good. As good as you can for 1 o'clock in the morning after, what did you say, 15 hours? 
yeah. in three minutes, this uh, this live stream will be 15 hours old. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, there it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Oh, that, that uh, just came off the top of the bot. What's going on there? You know what I was not expecting? Megatron in the box first. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I think that that was uh, an extra piece of plastic armor that That's they were right. trying to uh, make weight uh, with. They would love to uh, put some extra armor on the top, but look, I don't see any armor now. Look at the yeah. pink, it's all gone. What is happening here? So you gotta weigh in before every one of your fights just to make sure you're legal. Um, so they did have to take that, that uh, top UHMW armor pieces off. Yeah, please. Let's go ahead and jump over to Kate. Kate, what's going on back there? Following along too. I'm trying to figure out uh, what that weight uh, debacle was all about. What were you guys doing, shifting, shimmying? What's going on? Basically, the last one we just fought was lighter, had a magnesium frame, so we could afford to put the H and W on top. This Ooh. one's got all aluminum frame, so when we checked it, it was over, so we had to take them back off. Oh. So, <laughs> well, plan B, yeah. it's, it's gonna have to do good, just yeah, fine. Work. <laughs> At this point, that's what it's all about. And uh, it looks like, are you guys bringing in some extra little minis and different tools and toys yeah, in there? Well, not a mini bots at this point. So <laughs> we're kind of down to our last few. <laughs> so this is gonna be a tough one to win, but. Well, made the best competitor win here <laughs> at this point. And as you guys said, at about 15 hours uh, of, a, of a show. So we'll All see. All right. Wow. Look at this head to head. Megatron wow. versus an NHRL logo. I'm also fired. You just uh, didn't have a picture of it today. It's a weaponized logo, Kyle. Weaponized logo. This is our final, final match Here's of the night. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a logo and we're going to spin it real fast. <laughs> Yeah, listen, anything can be a weapon if you spin it fast <laughs> enough. All right, this is our last match of the night. This is our last match of the 2021 season of Norwalk Havoc. I want to I wanna read a super chat before we move on. This is yeah. Anthony D'Ambrosio. He says, thank you to the broadcast team for another amazing event. You guys are the spirit that keeps the event burning bright. Uh, he also says, uh, Blackbird 2 Electric Boogaloo coming in 2022. What? Wow, into say it. that three times fast, Kyle. I do not want to. I do not want to. All right. Uh, and uh, as, as we see, Megatron is going to uh, be crossing the box here. They're going to start in the pink square. The box is locked. Let's see the mobility here on Megatron. Oh, man. Look at the, wow. the mobility on uh, Emulsifier there. Oh, no. This... Needleweight uh, has gotten under emulsifier. Yeah, that's not. Th that is. They're not. gonna have to open up the box again. No, I think they're gonna get a little fluffy. You a little fluffy so? bump. Ooh, yeah, a little fluffy go. bump. All right. Good prediction there, Kyle. The last match, he needs to be very careful. Yeah. yeah, a little fluffy bump. Look at look at the wobble on emulsifier there. He said that that frame's got a little bit of a bend to it, so it's got a little weeble wobble as it moves around. Jameson's got that stance, that go stance that he likes to get into when he's ready for these fights. It's the intensity. I wish every time he would say, it's go time. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Chris, I appreciated it. Thank you. All right, here, just a couple seconds before the final match of the season. We're going to crown a 30-pound winner here. Whoever seven, wins takes six, home five, the golden four, Brett. Three. Two, one. Fight, two, robots out bears, fight. Out of parts, out of time. Ooh, oh. look at that weeble wobble that we're seeing from Emulsifier. They are just shifting and dancing around the box. Trying to jockey for position. Oh. Ooh, nice push there. Emulsifier getting uh, Megatron pushed back up against the wall. Emulsifier coming in for another position. They really do not want to throw that arm in any place where it could potentially hit the weapon on Emulsifier. That is a death sentence for Jameson's weapon, so he's really trying to pick his shots here. But you can see the uh, pushing power on both of these robots is pretty evenly matched. Yeah. You see these uh, these tread uh, you know treads on Emulsifier really getting a lot of traction inside of the box and pushing Jameson go around. 
These two robots are locked here in combat. Oh, big hit from Emulsifier on Megatron's plow. Good shower of sparks there. That's what that plow's there to do. Oh, it oh. wants to take all those hits. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Megatron getting the Emulsifier. Oh. Huge hit from James to go on Emulsifier. And that was on the bottom plate of Emulsifier. That is another not big hit. Oh. 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 Wow. Now the disc on Emulsifier throwing up a huge shower of sparks, hitting that plow. But look at that. Wow, this thing is going to cut through the box. Another huge hit. They are telling the driver of Fluffy to move out of the way. Oh my goodness. $15,000 on the line. Yeah, exactly. And look, uh, Megatron successfully nice. uh, flipping Emulsifier onto its head. Whoa, dangerous situation there. That weapon from Emulsifier could have run into the arm of Megatron and knocked it out of alignment. Megatron running out of the way, trying to avoid that damage. And Megatron now jockeying for position. They've got themselves positioned on the side of Emulsifier. Emulsifier desperately trying to avoid that. Wow. Oh my god, I We've saw it. What was tread. that? It was a tread. Oh, with 40 seconds left, one of those treads is gone on Emulsifier. There you go. We're going to get the spin up and we're going to get the attack. Let's see it. 30 seconds left. Oh, oh huge hits. Here we go. We oh, get the spin up and oh, another and attack. Another. And he backs it off. Wow. We are 20 seconds away from crowning a winner of 30 pound full combat here. This one looks like it's likely going to go to the judges again. Let's see if they can get one last hit in to impress those judges at eight. Oh, Seven, no. and the Six, weapon on a multiplier oh goes down. Three, two, one. That's the end wow. of this fight. Let's go. This goes to the judges. Both of those teams can be very happy with that performance. That was impressive. Woo! Amazing. Wow. The audience loves it. I love it. Incredible. All right, this one's going to go to the judges. That was a back and forth. I don't know how they're going to go. What do you say? I, you know, I don't, I don't want to skew any, any judges, uh, you know, interpretations of the match. I think we got to go straight to them. This is the biggest decision of the night. Let's I will it. say this. If yeah. Jack Tweedy was still here, it would be 6.04 a.m. where he is. <laughs> Wow. And he'd figure out how to split everything by 2.5, 2.5. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Now, as the judges deliberate, uh, yeah, this is our, our last time seeing, uh, you know, them for the season. I yeah. don't know. This is our last fight of the season. Yeah. Kind of feels a little bittersweet. How many fights do you think that we uh, we ran this, this year? 47,000. Like, yeah. <laughs> Over the entire year? Quite a, few. Quite a few. Yeah, yeah. It's like 200 fights per, you know, per event. Yeah, it's, it's over a thousand fights for sure this year. Yeah, yeah. easily. Wow, amazing. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I don't want to uh, I don't want to influence any judges. I do have a thought. Uh, I have somebody who I would pick. Let's see if the uh, the judges agree with me. Shall we go to our judge friends? Judge friends, how you guys doing over there? Wow. Oh, that's tired. oh, look at this. Oh, Matt's feeling I a little see... split. A Matt's... Andy Russell's up in the stands. What? Megatron's throwing up huge numbers. I think it's Megatron. It is Megatron! Wow! wow. wow. Unanimous right. judge's decision for Megatron. That was a fitting end. That really yes. was. You know, the, the, the 30 pound robots, two fantastic machines, went the full three minutes. Jameson had to win two matches to take it. Um, and he did just that. He was, he was true Jameson domination there at the end. Uh, just super aggressive, fantastic control, timed his attacks perfectly. Um, a perfect a perfect way to end the series. Amazing. Well right, so said, why don't we Matt get the Spark. Bots FC folks up here first? We'll go ahead and give them their check. Okay, yeah. And bots uh, FC. congratulate them on a really great season. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, if, do we have Matt Boris? Do we have Adam Wrigley? Bots FC. Please come on up, guys. All right, here we go. Matt, 
Matt, you said it. You said there's a good chance Jamison could beat you twice. I didn't believe you when you said it. Uh, what did you think about those two fights? Did they go in any way how you thought they would, how you hoped they would? Well, we had good success the first time against him, and uh, I figured 50% chance we just needed to do it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> but I know what Megatron's capable of. He's kicked our butt at Motorama, and like I said earlier, it wouldn't surprise me if he worked his way back through and, and won it all, and that's exactly what happened. Wow, that's great. Emulsifier uh, really, like, absolutely dominant this season. Yeah. You know, you took home uh, a golden dumpster, is that right, earlier this year? Yeah, September. Yeah, in September. And coming home uh, with uh, $5,000 in cash and second place here in the finals, does this mean that we may see Emulsifier here at Norwalk Havoc next year? Yeah, I think so. Nice. So. We're just going to keep improving it. Yeah. Try to make incredible. another run at it. So. Yeah. Now, I'm curious, you know, now that you've, uh, you've had uh, a couple of outings here at Norwalk Havoc with Emulsifier, does this mean that any design changes could be on the way for 2022? Yeah, I really need to think about a couple of things, see what I want to do. But there's probably going to be something. Yeah. Maybe some different attachments or something. Yeah. Um, the forks worked okay for Megatron, but still not quite. <laughs> He's just still getting the better of the ground game on me, so. Yeah. yeah. It's 1 a.m. at the end of a very long day, you know. Uh, do you have anything to say to your teammates who helped you uh, get this far? <laughs> There's no way I could have repaired those robots in time without these guys, so they've been a huge help. And, uh, yeah, we've done a lot of repair work today, and they've just really helped out a lot with that, so I can't thank them enough. Yeah. The minibots, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the minibots, the deciding factor for sure. You know? All right, so a question that's been on our mind quite frequently today. So, yeah. uh, Wrigley's, are we going to see a knockoff white here next year? Yeah. I know you got to get it together. I know you got to do some fixing on it. What do you think? Uh, All right, I hear I want to. Yeah, I, a lot of people want things, but are you going to do it? <laughs> oh, wow. Adam Wrigley. If you win, that'll help pay for the robot, huh? There we go. All right. <laughs> uh, I want to give a, a round of applause to Bots FC and Emulsifier taking home second place here at the uh, Norwalk Havoc 2021 finals, going home with $5,000 in cash. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing Matt and his team in 2022. All right. Congratulations, Matt. Thank Matt, you. Matt, congratulations. All right, for like the 7,000th time this year, thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. For, so uh, it feels like, let's go ahead and get Jameson Go up here. <laughs> yeah, Jameson Go. Yeah. Uh, wow. Jameson, highs and lows all day long. Got to have the match that he's been waiting for for years in yeah. the three pound division and full on takes the 30s. I yeah. mean, that was very impressive. Comes back from behind in the loser's bracket. Taking home 40% uh, of the prize purse <laughs> across <laughs> two different weight classes today. James and Go, let's, uh, let's talk to you here. All right, uh, winner of the 30 pound finals, James and Go here and Megatron. Yeah. Oh, wow. Here we go. <laughs> Listen, uh, Austin McCord, that's his uh, you know, handwriting. You can bring that straight to the bank. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's the end of the show. Yeah, you get to flip that over. Oh, well, did I do that too soon? No. Oh, it's soon. Too <laughs> soon. All right, all right, all right. Too soon. I got this. I know how this works. I know how this works. <laughs> all right. Uh, James and Go, this has been the end of a very long day. You brought three robots here to the competition. You are consistently, uh, you know, you end at the top of these brackets. And I feel like we interview you like every other month, which I love. This is great. Um, you know, I'm really curious about, you know, your thoughts uh, in your final matches with Emulsifier. You know, what do you think was the defining factor in these two wins in a row? Well, I'll say the first one, I was definitely a little frazzled. I did not. Uh, the mini bots are, are definitely pretty intimidating. It'll, no matter how silly they look, they change the strategy just a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so I don't think I was fully focused at that on that uh, attacking the main robot like I should have. He got a bunch of really good hits, caused a lot of damage that was um, important for the functionality of the robot. And, um, you know, it all just went south pretty quickly. And that, that's how it can go sometimes when you're fighting Emulsifier. Yeah, Emulsifier is such a dangerous robot. If you find yourself in the wrong position just for a moment, it can get under you, it can knock you in the air, you know, it can cut something important. Emulsifier, just 
a very, very scary robot. Um, however, I will say, Megatron, incredible performance today. Yeah. Really incredible, like those those hits. They were those were like you know, Son of Wayachi style hits. I love that. You know, uh, I, I'm I'm just absolutely uh, amazed with the performance of your robot today. Oh, thank you. Well, it doesn't. It was a lot of work. It was a ton of work. Um, Where's the rest of Team Megatron? Where are yeah, they, where where are they is hiding? Megatron? While they come up here, why don't you hoist up this very heavy trophy? <laughs> oh, yeah. Am I, wait, am I allowed to touch it? Oh, to, like, yeah, no, you're all dude, good. Dude, it's yours. Like, you, can, you can do whatever you want with yeah, it. Yeah, they're going to engrave it for you, but you, you're taking the sucker. This is all good. This is like uh, Indiana Jones or something. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, something of equivalent weight. The weight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Look at one of those CRTs. Oh, here we go. This is... <laughs> <laughs> it's heavier than you think, j It's not going to work. <laughs> Nobody noticed. <laughs> All right, hoisted oh my God. high. This All is right. almost a 30-pounder. Yeah. <laughs> Jameson Go and Megatron, winner of the 30-pound finals here at Norwalk Havoc. <laughs> oh, where's Ginger? Where is Ginger? He's hiding. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, makes sense. Come on. The most important part is all the repairs and all the work that went into actually getting Megatron to recover between fights. And that could not have been done without my Team Megatron today of Aaron, Aaron, and Ginger, wherever she's hiding. But, okay, she's been named at least. Yeah. Let it be known that uh, we put on a marathon of uh, fixing, especially after the first emulsifier fight. It was a ton of work. Yeah. All right, I think it's time to pay Jameson Go. Total winner uh, today of $19,000 in cash across two different weight classes. <laughs> Jameson Don't bleed Go. On my check. Uh, <laughs> congratulations yet again for a very successful 2021 season at Norwalk Havoc. I want to thank all of you for tuning in this year. Thank you so much. You made the finals so incredibly fun. I'm really looking forward to us resetting the brackets and coming back in February. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, you know, tell a friend about this. If you're on the East Coast, come and see this event live. My name is Luke Stengel, Kyle Kroos, Chris DeSico here in the, the uh, broadcast booth. We've got, uh, you know, Kate Osborne here, uh, our fabulous pit reporter today, and Lindsay Bear. Oh, Kate, hello. My <laughs> goodness, you're standing inside of the box. That's not I safe. I will, after 15 hours here with you guys, I wasn't going to go without being able to get inside one of these boxes, cages, all the things that I've heard it be referenced to today. But a big thanks to you guys. You guys are rock stars. You guys have no idea you how great as a, as a team you guys are, those behind the camera, um, those who've been working their butts off. So yeah, what a cool donut. experience. Yeah, thank you so much for coming out, Kate. And we're looking forward to working with you again next year. OK. Yeah. All right. Uh, Everybody, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, on behalf of Norwalk Havoc and uh, organizer Austin McCord and the entire staff, thank you and good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you.